Oh, all right, chat. Well, uh, please say hello to the YouTube folks because this video is for them. We're going to be playing all 28 killers, beginning with Trapper and ending with the Dredge, which at the time of this recording is the latest killer. Uh, we're going to give some extremely basic build advice, you know, what to pick when you don't have a lot of perks unlocked. For more build advice, check my... Check my uh, playlist and stuff, we'll have better guides with more specific depth. And we'll play a game with each, doing the do's and don'ts and explaining anything from easy things to understand to more advanced tips uh, to hopefully give you something to start with. If you are strong with a killer, perhaps watching this video will help. And we're of course going to start with the Trapper. Uh, the Trapper is a killer that is unfortunately not among the highest tiers. He's a slow setup killer that requires intimate knowledge of the hitboxes, of his traps, of the pathing of survivors, of the maps themselves, and the grass, and where you can hide traps, and what places survivors are least likely to check. And as such, even though he's fairly simple, uh, over time, survivors will get better and better as you play the game, and they'll understand how to counter you more and more. And if they harass you, it can be difficult to do your plan. At the same time, he's also really, really good once you've caught a survivor at locking down places, like Shaq, and making it almost impossible to escape. So, uh, knowing that, if you want to uh, play him, uh, these are some of the perks that you can use uh, at the very, very start without having anything unlocked. Agitation makes you get the hooks quicker, makes it easier to get into the basement. Whispers will let you know when people are around you, which is your cue to maybe stop placing traps at the start. Also helps near the end. You know it also helps near the end? Insta down, they have to go find some totems, can give you a second win. And Jolt is a pretty decent perk to know when gents are on you or being done. If you don't know what to do in terms of add-ons as a beginner, the speed add-ons to put down traps faster are never a bad thing. Do avoid the meme padded jaws add-on. This add-on is only bad. And you could even run the makeshift wrap in case you step on your own trap so that there's no negative consequence to it, which is pretty helpful for beginners. We're going to put some blood point offering and start the game. Right, so Trapper is one of the killers that I've actually made a quick killer guide on that explains things in a lot more detail. If you honestly want to invest a lot of time into getting good at Trapper, I recommend you watch that guide. It's going to be a lot more in-depth with a lot more visual explanations of everything I'll say in this video. Um, but the general idea with Trapper is that you start with traps. Unless you have a particular add-on, the traps are scattered around the map. You need to pick them up as you go, which is a big investment of time. And you can set them down on the ground. Uh, there's three types of traps. The ones that you put in completely random spots that can catch survivors sometimes. I don't recommend you do those too many. The ones that are a little bit more obvious but hard to avoid at, say, windows. Um, and those are pretty effective but also predictable. Also, if you place them on a pallet, survivors can dead hard through them. And then the more effective ones that you probably want to do a lot more are the ones that are on the sides of loops that catch survivors while they are running around the loop thinking that it's safe. And these... Look, this would be an obvious trap, right? Right at the window. We can totally do it. It's, it will definitely still work. The least, the less, uh, the lesser obvious ones is the ones you place in places like this. And obviously, anytime you place a trap like this, you're gonna try to push survivors into this part of the map. Now, whispers is off, so we know that probably no one's looking for us right now, uh, or looking at us. Whispers is now on, so that means I need to pay a lot more attention. And. My general idea is to set up a trap or two at the start, maybe pick up one or two traps on the ground, and out of the get into a chase. When you have certain add-ons and perks to slow on the game a lot, you will be able to afford maybe setting down more traps, if you really know what you're doing. Now I'm just gonna get in chase, uh, and having a trap on yourself while you're in chase is a really, really useful uh, thing to do. Uh, because you can do things like this. Now this loop is a little bit harder to use, and it will probably force survivors to migrate. They might they might call it out and disarm it. And in fact, that's going to happen probably in the next two seconds. There it is. But it doesn't matter because you can reset it later if you need to. And it's really not too bad. Um, Honestly, I think they get this one down. The problem is, are we going to get it down afterwards? Ah! Alright, survivors are being smart. She dead harder for distance, even though I argue she probably didn't need to. And we're gonna set it here. Notice that I place my traps on the side of the pallet. If you place it under the pallet itself, like perfectly under the pallet, they can just drop the pallet and vault over it and be safe. You don't want that. I'm going, unfortunately, to lose a gen and now another gen very, very quickly. Uh, but 
worry not, when you become better at Trapper, you will probably unlock perks like Corrupt Intervention, Deadlock, and so on. So losing gens will happen less, and it will be definitely... I didn't see if Basin was here. It will be definitely harder for survivors to do that. Alright, so we're gonna hook here. When you hook a survivor on their second stage, their camera flicks, and they don't always see you place a trap. But I'm going to assume that that trap that I place down is gonna be called out. Unfortunately, you need to constantly, constantly think whether or not your survivors are seeing you, and if they are seeing you, how much they are looking uh, around you and calling out to other survivors. And that's just a sad fact of life. Survivor Friends is just really strong against Trapper. I think I'm gonna bait that. And he had life. Damn. That was a great play for him. He will need to give me this pallet, but he probably... Oh, he wants actually. Oh. So yeah, a, a really good rule of thumb to follow is to keep your traps close to themselves so that they have a bit more of a snowball effect. And don't bring, don't put traps around your survivors on the hook. Damn, good job, dude. This guy is actually running me extremely well. I think I got him here, though. Oh, he didn't go through. Very smart. Very smart. I need to... I, could, I should have broken this pallet when I had a chance, but... Very good. I'm, I'm gonna get nothing out of this. Well done, dude. Explain this perfectly. And we should have broken this a while ago. We just don't have a lot of time. Uh, it would be ideal if I had already placed this trap here before I hook someone here. So if you identify a place that has a hook, maybe a basement nearby, maybe a, a, a gen that no, no one's on right now, but you know someone will be on later. Any place of interest that you can identify, if you trap it ahead of time and then use agitation or just basic herding skills to bring survivors there, you will be in a very good spot potentially. No, this girl was greedy enough to just want to finish that. And I only have one hook on her. Hmm, not looking good, but I don't think she should have done that. They're in a really good spot. And I think that might have ruined it for them. Because if she dies, we, we might have a way to come back from this. Notice that I keep an eye on the traps on the ground and try to use them as I go. But this game is obviously very merciless. Uh, in terms of gen speed, so we're not going to have a lot of time to do much. Hmm... Do not be afraid to put traps, especially in the middle of the map, if you think survivors are smart enough to do them. Uh, to disarm them. That's okay. That's alright. Sometimes if they disarm them, if, if they're in the middle of the map, you can reset them quickly. And that can work out. The problem with traps is if they're in the edges of the map where you have no business going to. Uh, now, luckily, no, it's going to give us a bit of a second chance here. Which I really wish it didn't, but... Yeah, I'm gonna push this guy. Who I know is right here, outside. And if they don't have many unbreakables, we might be able to secure kills here. Alright, dude. He really wants to play hard. Okay. Understandable. Now, that lady is not moving. And she's standing still recovering. Makes me think she has unbreakable. I'm gonna sit... Perhaps on top of her until the seconds pass, and then we can use whispers to find the other survivor. There she is. Uh, we'll wait the eight seconds of... Uh... Okay. Yeah, she could have soul guard, so... I waited just, just a tiny bit longer, and it will have been a minute soon enough. Unfortunately, there was another unbreakable. So, yeah, I now need to pick up. That was a terrible play by her. And can I catch her with agitation? There's a chance. Again, agitation is very helpful to hit people who are thinking they're really smart. Um, it's also great to get to basement and to push survivors while you hold someone else uh, to... What are you doing with your life? Why aren't you crawling up? Uh, push survivors into traps. So sometimes... Agitation can just do that, or get to a hook that would otherwise be too far, which I think is going to be the case right now. Let's do it. Now, as I said, Whispers is mostly an early game perk. Some people don't like it. It's really not a good perk unless you have it at level 3, and it tells you more or less when people are around you. If it's level 1, it's way too big. She might have Deliverance. No Deliverance. 
It's a perk that allows you to escape on the hook on your first try, if you guys don't know. But now we can use it as an end game perk. I'm gonna go away from mech and see if Whisper turns off. It should turn off right now. It does. Uh, let's see if it turns on. I'm gonna go to the gate and see if uh, our friend Ace is trying to go there. Um, it seems like he's not at the exit gate at all, which means he's on one of the corners. Uh, if he was, Whisper should be lighting up. Uh, that girl might be trying to kill herself on hook so that the hatch spawns. Whisper's on, so he's in 32 meters. We're gonna stick to the right a bit. Is it still on? Yeah, indeed. Okay. So yeah, that was a bit of a quick one in terms of gems, so apologies for that. But yeah, just, just trapping a loop like this, putting it here and then making them drop the pallet and then pushing them into the trap, that's your bread of and butter of playing trapper. Um, Try to think of the places, like this window right here, if I were to trap it, it wouldn't be too bad because it's not too visible, right? If it was facing the edge of the map, it would be even better because it would be hard to see from afar. But don't forget that if you trap the edge of the map, survivors uh, don't always end up there. Um, if you trap the edge of the map, you could still have survivors with maps that can find traps or you could just be called out. So you have to look out for a lot of things. Let's see what our friends brought. Yeah, I really did a good job waiting because they did have Soul Guard. If I hit them right after they picked themselves up, they would have been just fine. That was really strange of them. Um, uh, at any rate. Um, a three motors to follow a trapper. Don't trap your hook survivors. Hook survivors near your traps. The only exception being basement shack. If you get someone into basement, especially around shack and similar structures, then you can trap every exit out of there, and it's really, really powerful. Um, keep your traps close to each other. Your traps can make a snowball happen, where suddenly your action escalates very violently. Someone steps on a trap, you go there. Maybe you don't get them. Maybe someone else comes for the help, they step on another trap, bam. Now you have two people down. Uh, all of those things are super, super helpful. Uh, so your traps are really strong when they are close to each other. But most importantly, they need to be close to you. If your traps are close to you, survivors cannot just go around disarming them. If they step on them, you will catch them, and they won't escape in time. Um, but other than that, you are a basic, normal M1 style killer. You're a basic killer with normal speed, normal abilities, normal everything. So you'll need a bit of perks to give you a second chance in endgame, like we did with Noed, or to slow on the game at the start. So check out the builds if you want to know how to play Trapper. Uh, he does have a few great add-ons as well that can speed up your setup of traps and so on. So learn about those two because they are helpful. They definitely help a lot. Uh, and don't forget that you can step through your own traps if you have this, but that's it. Now, chat, what did I forget about Trapper? What is what is one thing about Trapper that is really important? Survivors can use this perk, at least right now, called Dead Heart to go through your traps. So be careful. If you see that they're going to walk through your own trap and you don't have this add-on, you can just go around it or pick it up yourself. He's breathing. He's extremely hot. Yeah, he does have a very loud breathing. That's what I was going to use. <laughs> the main thing about placing traps way too close to the window. Oh, that's a great one. Yes. Uh, with windows, if you place them a little bit too close to the window, uh, a survivor's vaulting from the other side might go well over it. So make sure that you space it more or less what you saw me do in that shack. Give it like, give it like a little half trap worth of distance and that should catch everyone. Uh, one thing that you can do, if there is a trap on a window, survivors cannot go through it, ever. But you yourself can go through it without even stepping on it. So if the trap is on the same side of the window as you, you can actually approach from a diagonal angle and press space and you'll bloop, you'll start the animation without stepping on it. But survivors cannot do that. So if you ever have a window that you want to go through, you can do that as well. Uh, you would learn that from the trapper guide that we did some time ago. We'll go watch it because I think it's really, really worth it. Faking traps around loops, super, super important. Uh, yes, sometimes you can begin to set down a trap just a little bit and not actually set it up. Just just do the setup and the swarm will be like, oh, I need to run. And then you stop and you keep chasing them. And because you stopped early, you actually get to catch them. If you have these add-ons to set that traps down faster, it's not as necessary because you actually do set them down very fast. But that is a really, really good point. Bamboozle is not so good with Trapper, in my opinion, because you actually want survivors to stay in a loop instead of just running away. Uh, if you have Bamboozle and they run away from a loop, like, what happens to the trap you place there? I don't know. He, Trapper deals with Windows really well. Placing traps to pick up more traps. Yes, that is another great principle from chat. Thank you. It is better to place down a bad trap that you think will do nothing. Even in the middle of nowhere, 
even in just some minor grass patch, just a bad trap is better than no trap. So if you are full on capacity, it's better to put down a trap and then pick up something than just to leave an unarmed trap on the ground. So identifying immediately the start of the best three gen, I don't think that's I don't think that's super super important. But you are a territorial killer. You want to identify an area where you'll be comfy. Yes, I don't think you should think of like three gens right away. Not every match, personally, especially as a beginner. But yeah, do, do try to bunker down in an area. Don't place traps all around the map, because at any given point, you won't be covering all of them. <clears throat> you can go over the trap if it's disarming at the moment. Yes, that's true for survivors and for the killer. And I think that's probably more or less it. Yes, you can trap exit gates to give you a second chance in endgame. Uh, and yeah, uh, when a survivor steps on a trap, you can press space to grab them, as someone points out, but I recommend that you just whack them. It saves you time and it's easier... Um, it, it's basically easier to reset the trap after doing that or pick it up than to grab and then hook and then go back. So yeah, I recommend that 99 times out of 10, uh, unless your perks uh, want you to do something else, if a survivor steps on a trap and you're in front of them, just hit them. If you press space and at that exact moment they escape, you will instead pick up your own trap, which is really embarrassing. So I recommend you just whack them. Yes, that is a, a really good rule uh, of thumb to follow as well. And now we move on to the next killer. Okay, moving on to the Wraith. Um, it's a very simple killer to explain. He does not as he doesn't have a super effective, powerful chase tool which makes him a little bit less than ideal in some hard maps against really, 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 really strong survivors. And his own personal perks are kind of bad. Everything else about him, however, is pretty good. He has great mobility, easy to play, easy to learn, lots of tricks to master. Uh, his add-ons are pretty good. He uses perks from other killers and common perks fairly well. He doesn't have maps that are super horrible. Um, overall, he is a great killer to start with or, or pick up if you are... Uh, out of the equip with a few good teachables. So, considering that his own perks are not so good, we're only going to be using the perks that are common to all killers. So we're going to be using Sloppy Butcher. This perk is great, makes healing take longer, and on a killer that can um, sneak up on unsuspecting killers for hours is great. Bitter Murmur uh, will give us a bit of information to try to do some, uh, make some decisions during the mid-game, and at the end of the game it tells me where everyone is, and it goes really well with no aid. Another common perk that is really, really powerful. And I'm also going to be using Jolt, which is a common perk to regress generators around me. Uh, Nurse's Calling uh, would go really well with Sloppy Butcher. And any info and overall regression perk just work fine on him. Um, beginner add-ons. If you don't know what to do, you can never go wrong with Speed when cloaked, the Winston family of add-ons, and Speed to uncloak. Uh, you cannot go wrong with this. There's like three different levels to each. And the higher that you go, the, the more you'll fill them. But yeah, if you really don't know what you're what you're doing, you don't want to complicate anything at all. Uh, I think these are are simple, uh, simple enough. So we're gonna do that, and we'll talk about the wraith once we find a game for him. Right, <laughs> so we have a few friends here. So our heroes have medkits, uh, which are tough against wraith because they can heal themselves quicker without grouping together, and a flashlight, which which can burn us. So for, don't forget that if you see multiple flashlights, you need to play a bit more carefully. And the add-ons to uncloak faster would be very helpful. So Wraith comes, uh, basically has two modes, uh, and he starts the game in his cloaked form. In his cloaked form, he is very, very fast. Uh, without any add-ons or, or anything on top, he moves at 150% movement speed, which is 50% faster than, than the survivor's normal 100% running speed, which is great. Um, he's also invisible from afar, and from up close, you only see a little shimmer and hear a little growl. You don't see him very well, so it's very easy to sneak up to survivors, especially with your speed. Uh, you need to look out for spine chill and other, uh, mostly spine chill, um, that can give you away. Um, but the catch is that while you are in this cloak mode, you cannot attack survivors. You need to uncloak. You can damage generators, you can break walls, you can break pallets, you can do a lot of things. Um, but if you need to pick up a survivor, or if you need to damage a survivor, uh, you will need to uncloak. So, your basic idea is to immediately do a sweep while in cloaked form of the far away gent. I did pick a bit of a strange place to spawn in, it seems. And then you approach a little bit from behind, and if possible, you block their way like this. Notice that I'm so fast that I can actually, during cloak mode, Get in, uh, get ahead of survivors. 
All right. Get ahead of survivors and body block uh, a potentially troublesome area for me, be it a window or a pallet. Uh, you do not necessarily want to engage in a very long chase with each individual survivor because that's not what your strength is. Your strength is to go in, get a hit, move on, or catch them very shortly. So, I'm going to see if I can catch someone else and then maybe work my way back to Steve. I think they're being healed right here. Wow, well done by him, actually. He just came here by himself. Bit of rumor told me that multiple survivors came out of that gen. I don't know exactly how they did that. I don't know how they got past me, but okay. We're gonna hook him, uh, cloak right away. Don't forget that survivors often have kindred. This is an event thing, let me do it real quick. So they might see which direction you're going towards. If they had kindred, they might have seen that I'm going this way. Um, if you know for a fact that a survivor is in a gen, sometimes it takes a, a few extra seconds, but it can be totally worth it to approach, not from the first easiest angle, but rather from uh, behind. Here, it completely really blew on our face. But I'm gonna do this, which is to corner a survivor a little bit. Oh, never mind, I messed that up entirely. Uh, if you find a survivor in a corner, uh, you can often take a position uh, as you uncloak that allows you to box them in. If not completely, like this case, at least enough for you to uncloak and catch them. It is not a horrible idea to sometimes cloak to catch up to a survivor. But don't forget that if you cloak, you lose blood loss and windows will never be blocked. So if there was a window here, she could vault it in, uh, infinitely because this loses the chase technically. Unfortunately, we are playing a horrible map for us. I'm going to body block ahead of her. Much easier to do with the add-ons uh, that increase your speed. Um, I can sometimes tap M2 to make it look like I'm attacking. And sometimes survivors, if they have dead heart or some other perk, they might make a mistake. Uh, hopefully dead heart gets reworked and you don't ever have to do that. Okay, so I think Shaq is gonna be done by David and and Steve. Um, I would like to approach from a place where they don't get to drop the pallet or the window. I'm gonna keep the... I'm not even gonna look at the gen in case I have spine chill. And I'm just going to begin to uncloak from out of cover slightly. And unfortunately they got it in front of me as well. This is Bitter Murmur. And there's Bitter Murmur as well. Let's go for him. Uh, well... Gen speed. Uh, let's see if we can creep up to him. Looking away from a generator like I just did like that can fool a spine chill, which is kind of useful. Uh, but maybe at one point it will be reworked. So you don't have to. Because it's one of the perks that's getting reworked. Alright. Does he have a pallet here? He might, actually. Very lucky. Uh, there's nothing I can do. If I were to cloak right now, he would burn me. So I'm just going to list... Oh, what? He sounded right in front of me, too. So unlucky. Yeah, he didn't make it to the window. That's good. He's on his second hook, which is great. And don't forget, we have Noid, which is a big endgame perk. We could put him in basement. We're not a very good basement defender. We don't have uh, weapons to hit twice, multiple times, or whatever. But, you know, since he's done on hook, I think it might be worth it. It will be hard for him to escape us. Alright. We cloak up. We know that no one else has a flashlight. We're not afraid to be burned. Um... Hey. We hooked him once and then Nia, right? Oh, wow. That's very impressive. Let's see. I wanna hit David and try to body block him a bit. No, he wasn't body blocked at all. He got a really nice fastball on him. It would be really good for us to kill Steve, but it's probably gonna be a bit tricky with their perks. Um, there we go. Just make sure he doesn't leave that corner. He wants to go for the flashy save, I understand. Alright, this is a falling wall. Let's get rid of it. I didn't see where he went at all. Well, I do now. Let's try to catch up. I think that if we kill the Steve, we can be in a good spot. Uh, it looks like it's not going to be possible, though. Ah! Nice, he fell for that. Okay. We'll hook the David first before he gets picked up. What? That girl that's injured just did that? That's hard to believe. Uh, unfortunately, now I need to pick you first before you get to a pallet or get recovered. So we're gonna kill him. Should be relatively easy and then see what we can do afterwards. 
Oh, can we do it? We can definitely do it. Uh, I like this girl because I've hooked her once already, haven't I? I would prefer her over David if I could. But I'll take David. Anytime you have a chance to get a free hit, just just take it. It's so it's so it's so valuable to have everybody injured. Because then you will cloak up, you will disappear, and they'll never know where you'll stack from. But yes, uh, getting in front of a survivor to body block uh, is super, super important. And you don't need to body block very well. If you take out like a tiny space in front of a window, that can be enough for them to not be able to vault or for them to get stuck and you begin to uncloak fast enough. Mm, all right, if we had nurses now, we could try to catch some healing. We're, look, we're gonna look for blood, there we go. Some add-ons can make the blood brighter for this killer if you struggle with that. We know this girl has spring burst, so we don't need to wait for any other exhaustion perk. And I'm gonna cloak just to be faster and follow the blood like a ravenous beast. And I don't know if she's gonna beat us to that uncloak. Again, we're gonna try to body block if possible. Get ahead of her? Uh, it looks difficult. All right, it will be a trade then. Um, it will be her second. And I don't think you can escape on your second hook, so let's do this. And this is the best part about Wraith, just being able to actually catch up the survivors a little bit. Even in maps that are really big like this. This is not a good map for a Wraith, though. I'm gonna begin to unclog past her. There you go, she's got Spring Burst. I'm gonna... I'm just gonna keep running. Oh, she made a mistake there, she could have taken the window. Uh, and I could leave it on the ground for a bit and try to find the David. But yeah, uh, everything that you need to do with normal killers, uh, keeping an eye on hook stages, uh, seeing who's dead, keeping people injured so that going for the rescue is difficult, you need to do with this killer uh, a lot. So that's why I think it's a great killer to start learning with. <laughs> there will be times when you don't necessarily want to cloak after hitting a survivor. If they have a flashlight and they're in the open, if you cloak, you're setting yourself up to, to be burned. So try not to do that. And it's very important to use the speed boost, as you can see, to actually hit survivors. I'm gonna go to the basement. Um, this Nia is dead on hook. And I can body block this window if I have to. Okay, I don't need to. Oof. She's body blocking me after all. Oh, okay, 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 okay. I think I catch you. But yeah, in this situation, doesn't matter, but you can use the uncloak speed to get a big lunge around some loops. And basically you slow yourself down as part of the, as part of the trade-off when you come out of cloak. Hmm. The add-on won't do that one? Oh yeah, for sure, for sure, these add-ons. Even, even the yellow add-ons are really, really good, so... It's a big step up from having no add-ons. Should be dead. And if they somehow pull through the last gen, that would be very impressive. Isn't this tunneling? No, she was hooked, then I hooked someone else, and she was hooked, then I hooked someone else, then she unhooked that person because she had to, and then I hooked her. Uh, being smart and remembering who you've hooked is not tunneling. Um, you know, it's the same way they did gens really fast because I wasn't there and I didn't have perks to stop them. I wouldn't say that's gen rushing. Even though they were a bit fast. Does she have some burst? No. I would have stopped and ca caught up. She might have adrenaline though. Oh, well, that jump's not getting finished just yet. Uh, David's over there. Did we lose this hook over here? We did not. But... So, yeah, don't don't think too tw don't think twice about that or else you, you think we could win this game if we start to play nice? Definitely not. Uh, okay. Well, I don't know what David will try to do. We know the other two gens seem to be at nothing, so... Oh, he's just hiding here. I wouldn't be surprised if we find him up here. Let's find, let's search. I'll find, I'll find him up here. Or potentially. We could have always let her be on the ground, but our time's run a little, right? We don't need to. Oh, there he is. Okay, uh, as a wraith, since I'm... Uh, if you if you get stunned or burned while in cloak, your stun is much longer. So you want to avoid being stunned if possible. That's a, an important tip. And he trying to hide or am I crazy? No, he's just run. 
Um, in, in a situation like this, it might be better not to hit them if they are if they are healthy, and instead just your 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 better speed, your higher speed to just go ahead of them and see if you find the hatch ahead of them. Maybe if I had done that and I didn't get stunned, I could have caught him. But yeah, very impressive. They jump so quick, these fellows. Oh, GG Swablet. Now, Chad, please tell me, what did I forget about uh, Wraith that is very, very important? Um, hmm. Does Enduring help when getting stunned by... Yes, it does. If you have Enduring, it can be a nice perk that you get from the Hillbilly to learn. If you get stunned while in Cloak, it will be a longer stun, but it will be half of it because of Enduring. Hmm. Maybe the add-ons that change his bell? You can you can bother watching the add-ons video, but yeah, his bell can become silent or become muffled or his attacks can inflict status effects or he can be faster at cloaking, faster at uncloaking, faster during movement. He can, yeah, there's, there's a few add-ons that are all um, decent uh, on Wraith, I would say, and a few of them that are not so good, but all of them are interesting, so uh, check that out. If you have some decent perks to defend gens, um, I, I think, I think Wraith is a pretty great pick for a beginner. If you're playing against Circle of Healing, don't hit and run too much. Yes, you need to, you need to adapt to what survivors do. If you hit a survivor and then go for another, hit a survivor, go for another, hit a survivor. That can work, especially with Sloppy Butcher, but if they have five medkits, not so much. If they say a Circle of Healing, not so much. You need to be smart. That can buy you time, and sometimes it's a good idea to hit a survivor, pretend to go away, then catch them off guard. And if time is on your side, in this match, eh, time wasn't really on our side. If time is on your side, sometimes it's a good idea to invest a bit of time uh, going on the edges of the map as you move. Uh, when you're right about to approach a gen so that they don't see you coming. Uh, but don't forget that they don't see you from very far. You're invisible from afar. So when, when once you're about to get to an area where you think a survivor is doing a gen or doing something, you can try to take an unexpected angle. And especially with the add-ons to muffle or silence your cloak, that is super, super effective as a strategy. And now moving on to the next killer. Uh, okay, uh, we've moved on to Hillbilly. And out of the three initial killers, he's by far the highest skill cap and the hardest one to master. His kit is not extremely complex. Uh, he basically has a chainsaw that he revs up. Once the chainsaw begins, uh, you now move very fast and you down survivors if you collide with them. You also break pallets or breakable walls. And you don't need to let go of the chainsaw. This will happen automatically when you bump into them. Uh, alternatively, you might also bump into a wall or an obstacle and that will slow you down significantly. You can take this into very, very uh, fun directions and use a lot of different things about him, but um, he is certainly harder than the other two. But he does come with some great perks, and he's not a terrible killer to start if, you are if you're willing to go the extra mile to learn him a little bit. Um, his Chenzo, yes, does overheat, uh, which means that if you use it too much, it will need to go on cooldown. If you're a beginner that's afraid of that, you could totally use some of the add-ons to help with the overheat. I personally don't think you'll have to very much. And you could also even use the add-ons to help with the bumping, uh, so that if you bump into something, your penalty is a bit smaller. These are add-ons that are pretty safe for beginners, so if you want to go with something that is beginner-friendly, you cannot go wrong with these. Uh, other add-ons, though, are... Uh, they vary greatly from uh, in utility, so yeah. We're gonna use Tinkerer to know when a gen is about to get done. If the gen gets done, Claustrophobia will block the windows around the gen, which might be helpful to catch someone with a chainsaw. And then Enduring will help us deal with pallets, we don't need to be afraid of them at all. And Fearmonger might help us catch people on gens and not let them use their strong exhaustion perks. Uh, but honestly, you could use any other perk you'd like. I'm actually a pretty big fan of Whispers on Hillbilly. If we have Whispers, we can just use our chainsaw at the start to find people. But since we have Tinkerer, we'll probably have a pretty good time finding people. Um, uh, Hillbilly is also one of the few, maybe the only killer, whose uh, sensitivity in their power actually changes quite a bit. From your settings. Uh, I don't know if they've patched this, but I think it's a good idea to go to killer controls, controller, and put your sensitivity to a hundred. If they haven't changed that, this still makes uh, his chainsaw move uh, a little bit tighter when you when you initially uh, started. They haven't changed it, have they? Mm. Even if you're playing on PC, the, the controller sensitivity used to give you a bit of an advantage. It needs to be at least 80. It's still a thing. Okay, that's very good to know. Let's find out in the match and get into the basics of Hailbilly. Okay, 
So outside of using his Chenso, which as we said, speeds him up very considerably, uh, the Hillbilly is a normal killer. He has normal speed, normal launch, normal vault speed. Everything about him is kind of normal. So if you come to him from Trapper or Hill uh, or, or Wraith, he'll feel the same outside of using his Chenso. Um, but the Chenso is where the magic happens. You don't need to use it all the time. You don't need to use it obsessively as you're learning, but you'll want to use it more and more as you get better. Uh, when you begin to charge your Chenso, you go from moving at 115, which is faster than survivors, like most killers, to you, you drop down to 92%, if I recall correctly. You drop down very significantly. So that means that if you're chasing a survivor while you charge your Chenso, you will lose a bit of distance. And this is very critical. The general idea, especially as a beginner, is that if you're going to use your Chenso to down a survivor, you want to back rep. You want to get right behind them and use it right at their butt. And I'm going to tell you the, the method that I use to help me. Now, typically at the start of the match, I use my Chenso just to go across until I find someone. But the spawns in this map are very strange and unique. I don't know if it's going to work out for us. Um, we'll find out. They could all be in the main building. Let's go there. Notice the overheating uh, next to my power icon. We're going to try not to fill that up at a bad time. And okay. This girl has a really strong window here. And it's going to be really difficult. You guys are with more chance. So we're going to try. And if it looks like it's going to be troublesome, we'll give up and move on to someone else. Uh, we don't really need to be uh, worried about pallets whatsoever because of the perk enduring. Mm, I could use my chance to try to catch up, but I think I'll I think I'll stop myself from doing that. Okay. Mm, all right. Let's see if we can do a back rub. I'm gonna just do this and see if she drops it. No, she did not. I'm gonna now try to keep my chin so by holding back and forth and see if I can pressure her. But it's looking difficult. Hello, man. Ooh, it didn't work out. Alright, so let's try to practice a back rip if this mech is willing. Although I think she's playing this smart. Uh, Tinker is going off, which lets me know. Oh, did she actually run away and I didn't catch it at all? Yeah, Tinker is letting me know that this gen's being done. But they're smart enough to do. Can I body block this during the cooldown? I can't. So now she'll need to give me the pallet. Let's break it. You recover faster than during. Very good. Let's see, let's see if we can listen to this Tinker. Mm, that was almost close. And we didn't body block him at all. Very bad stuff. Mm. Oh, okay, this window's gonna get blocked soon. There you go. Ah, uh, so unlucky. We'll break the pallet by fully revving the Chenso. And he'll have a window here, but it is blocked thanks to our perk. So we're just gonna get really close to him. And when we're super, super, super close, use the Chenso. And here's the thing, right? Good survivors are going to try to do that. They're going to try to do crazy flips. Uh, this one, she was kind of boxed in, so she didn't really have a chance to do that. Wow, that's really impressive. Oh, uh, well, we're going to lose two, three gems, just like that. Uh, but they're always going to try to move side to side, or sometimes just the... the... What? Just uh, sometimes just the uh, the heat of the moment will make you. How are they doing this? The heat of the moment will make you miss your chenso. I'm gonna tell you what I think is the best way to avoid that once you're really really close. What I do is I stare at the chenso bar. That was really good. And I simply. Wait until the survivor jukes back into the center of my screen. Which they often do. And I do that with my peripheral. See? So I keep the I keep the chin so charged to like 90, 95, 99%. Uh, then I keep walking forward and eventually move my mouse very, very little. And eventually the survivor is right in front of you. And at that point you just commit to holding the mouse through. And you get them. Now I'm gonna use it just to catch up a little bit. These guys are extremely aggressive. So, okay. We don't have really anything here, but we're gonna kick it. See if we can hold on to this gen. 
If you decide to sit by a hook and just have your chance already, needless to say, you insta down, so survivors will need to respect that insta down and probably not be able to get the unhook. But I'd really rather not right now. Uh, it's also very common for Billish to run the perk Bamboozle because it helps a lot to deal with windows. Right now, we don't have that help, so we're just going to be ready to M1 if we have to. I'm going to do a tiny mining game here. It worked. M1. It would be better to get the M2 and get a chainsaw. They did that gen really fast. Hold on. But you can't have it all. He's got another window here. And I don't love this one already. A uh, Seraphon, thank you for the Brahim. Okay. Does he have a powerful window here? He kind of does, yeah. Hold on. Wow. That was good. This pallet. Now for the more critical parts of using the Chenso and what makes Hillbilly really, really tricky. Aw, oh, you're kidding me. Alright, thank goodness. <laughs> the Chenso, after a little while, becomes uh, very rigid in its movement. And without certain add-ons, it's actually really hard to control. Let me show you. Like, this is all you can do, right? Like, you use your mouse re uh, left to right, left to right. And it's really hard to control it. I really don't have that much room. Look. I couldn't really hit her, even though she was right in front of me. Uh, but that's not always like that. Let me show you. Oh, she all played the heck out of me there. Uh, for the first, I think, 0 0.7 seconds, that window is blocked. Oh, you're kidding. She's so good. Uh, sorry, Chad, I'm struggling as it is. Should have this now. Good job. For the first 0 0.7 seconds, I believe, you can actually have a massive turn. And there's a way for me um, to actually turn more than just a few degrees like that. And for me, the easier way to do this, at least on PC, is to set uh, a specific uh, keybind on your controls. Um, where you go to input binding and go turn right and turn left and make it Q and E. And now if I press E, I look right. If I press Q, I look left. So I can use this just to navigate around. Look, I'm gonna press Q. I'm gonna press E, Q, E, Q, E, Q. And it's really nice just to navigate around the map in general. But it's also really nice to do curves. So let's say someone's trying to play around this loop. What I can do is I can prepare my chainsaw. And then right at the very start, I press E. And I go right. And I could also do Q to do the opposite. Uh, well, don't do that around hooks, but you can do that. Right? Uh, I don't know if this is going to be a good example. You need to be somewhat close. It's not extremely easy. But, yeah. That's the idea. That's the idea, more or less. That's how you curve. Uh, uh, some people do it with mouse, and they just have e excellent timing. And I personally use it with... I, I use QED. If you're on controller, unfortunately, you don't have... You don't have such a, a luxury of, of, of being able to choose. Here, I think it's kind of hopeless, though. Yeah, I don't know how these people are healing so fast. They are insane. They did three gens, or tinker three gens, in a matter of seconds. But that's not what we're doing today. Ooh, does this girl get out, actually? Oh, I didn't notice at all. I think she does. Hold up. I'm gonna try to cut her off. I'm gonna try to cut her off. Uh, these guys need to leave right now. Um, if it wasn't for my cooldown, I could have maybe gotten them. Uh, I don't know where this gate went. Well done by her. Uh, that's really strange, though. Uh, I guess she can never. She can always run to another side. So, yeah, uh, Meg was here and she's gone. Well done. Uh, believe it or not, it's easy to turn flick. I personally have a hard time using the same mouse for for my camera movement than for my chainsaw movement. So I personally kind of appreciate 
leaving my mouse like right now I'm not touching my mouse I'm, it's completely still and I only use Q and E and to me it's very easy to just learn like this and then you do this start the chainsaw and chain. there you go and that's a very basic turn that you can do to get rid of a pallet to try to catch a survivor around the corner uh, to get rid of a breakable wall um, to try to sometimes just get ahead of the survivor see if you can during your recovery body block the window and I, I have no idea how this dude this gen so fast, man. I understand that I don't have a lot of gen slowdown, but oh my god, GG's. So yeah, I, I do recommend you try that at least and then make up your own mind as to which method you prefer. Uh now chat, what 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 did I forget? Uh what did I forget uh, about Hillbilly that is really really critical? Uh, some add-ons will make each chainsaw take longer to charge, but then make you go faster. They are the engravings. I recommend you only try them out once you know what you're doing. Anything that gives you... A, any add-on that gives you a downside, and there's at least three or four of them, I'd recommend you stay away from until you really know what you're doing, and you understand the add-on. <clears throat> and... Was an answer one with Unbreakable? I don't know, chat. I don't know. I'm not going to overthink this match. They did good. Um, letting go of right click not to bump into stuff. Yes, uh, it's preferable for you. If you know that you're about to collide into something, it's preferable for you to let go of M2 and the chainsaw and you have a short cooldown. If you bump into that, uh, let, let it be a tree, a wall, whatever. The cooldown is significantly longer and you don't have any mobility whatsoever. You're like stuck in place. Uh, as I said, some add-ons can help you with that, but you it's really not ideal. You don't want to do that. Uh, some places have very strange collisions. You'll see that in some maps, some tiny branches can stop your chainsaw. And some maps have walls that are made of butter and you can slide past them. The really good hillbillies learn every map and learn every little bit of collision. Uh, for their to 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 avoid it and also to use it to their advantage I'd say feathering is a very important thing to learn. That is actually a really good point that we completely uh, Overlooked not that we had too many chances, but what's gonna one of the things that you're gonna do a lot around pallets uh, Survivors might decide to just drop the pallet right right away altogether. They just drop it in which case If your chance is out of the charge break it with your chance So if your chance is at zero you can break it with your normal spacebar. It takes about the same time uh, Again, if it's not fully charged already um, and another thing that you can do is just see if they keep running around the pallet. If they keep running around the pallet and your chainsaw is fully uh, ready, you can sometimes curve past the pallet and hit them. Or do what's called a feathering. Feathering is when you tap the chainsaw for a little bit, enough to scare the survivor into thinking that you're going to use your chainsaw. And then they keep running, and then you stop using your chainsaw. And you, keep conti you continue going on, and then you hit them with a normal attack, or you hit them with a the chainsaw after they do a big loop and you actually catch up to them. So yeah, that's a really, really good point. And now we move on to the next killer, guys. Right, um, so now we talk about the nurse. Uh, arguably the strongest killer in the game, with some of the strongest add-ons, and makes use of the perks uh, that are available almost better than anyone else. She's very, very, very strong, but also very unique. She is nothing like the previous three killers that we covered. She is, in fact, nothing like any other killer that we'll cover later. Um, so the problem with playing Nurse is that, yes, you'll be playing a very, very strong character, but n almost none of your abilities will translate into her. When you start, she will be very rough, and if you ever spend a lot of time playing her and only her, other killers will feel impossibly difficult afterwards. Play her with caution, but do play her because she is fun. She is the only killer to actually move slower than survivors. Her base speed is actually below the running speed of a survivor. So if you just move around, um, the nurse does not catch up to survivors. You need to use her power, Spencer's Last Breath, which allows you to teleport forward and through obstacles to then immediately hit a survivor if you're right on top of them. Uh, her personal perks are decent, all of them. Uh, we're going to use Thana to slow down Jens a little bit for the more, uh, the more people we have injured. Uh, mostly. Uh, sloppy Butcher, common perk to make healing uh, harder. Nurse's Colin, her own perk to catch people healing near us. And we'll also have Joel to regress gems because we do need a bit of help. If you don't know what to do with add-ons, uh, stay away from the add-ons that increase or decrease the amount of blinks. Stay away from the add-ons that, uh, that mess, uh, with, that have difficult properties or that mess with, um, with her movement speed. 
Uh, you can just go with recharge add-ons. These add-ons will let you use your blinks more liberally, but they're also a bit of a bad habit because it means that if you are constantly blinking, 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 you don't always get punishment for bad decisions. And whenever you take them off, you will feel it. So a safer approach, if you don't know what add-ons uh, you want to run and you want to learn her base kit, is to go for the add-ons that simply decrease extra fatigue. Uh, the boy treasure and the wooden horse are excellent. If you hit and miss, you don't have any extra fatigue. And if you do extra blinks, you don't have any extra fatigue at all. Some people also favor the plate flannel as a beginner add-on. If you put this add-on on, you will see a visual indicator of where your blink will land. And that can be useful. I wonder if I should use it for this uh, match chat. Do you think I should use it so people can see uh, where we're going to land? I think we could. I think we could. It might throw me off a little bit. You definitely... You definitely want to take it off eventually, but I guess we could use it on this one match. Let's put on some blood point offerings. And bam. Uh, we go and find the match. Right, so one of the issues with Nurse is that you do not have the same movement speed as other killers. And when you use your power, you emit a loud noise that survivors hear across the map. So knowing this, it's kind of easy for survivors to hide. And sometimes even effective for survivors to hide. You will want to immediately get to the middle of the map and start looking around really, really well, or have perks like, I don't know, Discordance, Whispers, Lethal Pursuer, perks that let you know where to go and where to find survivors early. Uh, when you develop a better sense of where survivors go, I guess you won't really need perks too much. Uh, but yeah, uh, when she teleports and hits, that still counts as a basic attack. So all of the insta-down perks are good on her. All of the anti-healing perks are pretty much good on her. Uh, hexes are powerful on her in general. Because she can defend them so well and they go really well with her. Yeah, uh, you almost cannot go wrong with Nurse. And you can get pretty creative in her builds. And she has a few gimmicky add-ons that you can eventually indulge with. But right now we're going to learn just a very, very basic. When you charge your power, you immediately start sending forward a little landing point. And since we have the add-on that shows us where that landing point is... Uh, we'll actually have a very visual way of understanding how it works. The longer that you hold it, the longer that it goes, with a maximum of, I believe, 20 meters. So that means that if you hold your power, uh, eventually the nurse will clench her fist. That lets you know that it's fully charged. You don't need to charge it anymore. Uh, and then you can release it and you go forward. If you want to, you can look to the ground to not go too far out. But if you've already charged a long blink, you will still take a long time to land so let's let's begin by doing a long long charge oh look uh the fist is clenched i do that and now i go through a fatigue and oh my power you see that i recover the charges now i'm gonna do the same but i'm actually gonna aim at the ground oh you see you can actually control where you go so I'm, i don't want to go that far i want to go here okay do i see someone else i do all right are they in a bad spot? Can I hit them normally? No, they're too far. I'm gonna do one blink. And now I can charge up another blink for a very short duration. So you can do up to two blinks by default. All right, let's get close. One. Ooh, and then we hit them. And now we go through fatigue. Unfortunately, you are forced to look at the ground. And as you can see, it's a bit disorienting. I kind of lost them. I'm gonna go through here, see if I catch them up. Oh, I found someone else. Why not? Okay, fatigue. We try to listen. We do not want to constantly blink unless we know where we're headed. If the survivors make a mistake and they are close enough that you don't need to blink, don't blink. Because then you save the charges and you can just hit them normally and then have two blinks ready to go. Once we pick up, we have the same speed as every other killer. So don't worry, when you carry a survivor, you move at the same speed as every other killer. All right, so that's one. We're gonna go up. Uh, I look up slightly high to make sure I'm going as far as possible. Make sure you don't like let go of the blink now. You wanna look straight or even a little bit higher to make sure. And as you can see, depending on your mouse, you can actually decide where to go. Upstairs, downstairs, basement. Let's not go basement. Um, so yeah, you can actually have a little bit of control, uh, but do remember... Oh, I'm gonna tell you what happened there and what the mistake I just did was. You cannot go through the, ex, uh, through, through the edges of the map. 
So some maps have walls near the edges that you cannot teleport through. Even if you think that you can get back into the map, you really cannot. Very good. What did the Subaru do? They did uh, a turnaround. They did what some people call a... What would you call it? A U-turn? I don't know. I don't know how you would call it. Uh, but every Subaru has a bit of a style and they try to mix it up. So if, they, if they've done it on you and it worked once, don't let it work twice. A double back. Yeah, thank you. That's that's what people call it most commonly. A double back. Uh, a really good idea if you lose track of a survivor is to teleport to the last place you saw them. Uh, as you saw with that Nia, I actually teleported through a wall completely blind. And if she did a double back or some crazy juke, I wouldn't I would have seen. So I'm just going to teleport to the last spot I saw her. Oh, never mind. I have nurses. But here's an important thing that is also not very intuitive. You cannot teleport on top of a survivor. And I think that that's why I missed one of the blinks. And this is a bit of a... It's a bit difficult to, to, to explain. But once you understand it, you're going to save yourself so much frustration. I had thousands of hours in this game. I'm probably hundreds of hours on Nurse, and I did not understand this. So what I'm about to tell you right now will save you a lot of headaches and will make you understand why some of your blinks fail. Right. So I want you to look at my blink indicator, all right? Okay. Do you see how it jumps? You see how it jumps? I cannot be inside of a survivor. So sometimes a survivor will drop a pallet on the other side of the loop and you'll want to go past it and you'll be like, Wait, what? Where am I? Why didn't I go on the other side? That's probably because you landed right on top of the survivor and the game detected that that was no good. So, in little loops like this... Oh, hello. Alright. Good dead heart. Alright, in little loops like this, you don't necessarily want to teleport... Um, on top of the survivor. Like, let's say he's looping me around some... I don't know. Uh, I mean, he's not doing anything right now, I guess, but... But let's say that he's on the other side of this window, right on the other side. Don't try to teleport super shortly on top of him, because it will not work. You'll be stuck on your side. Instead, you want to teleport right to the side, or wait until he's a bit further, or go a bit further and then do a little change of direction. It's totally possible to do a quick blink and then turn and hit backwards. But an even more efficient way to do that sometimes is to turn while you travel. So notice that I'm going to do a big blink, and while I travel, I'm going to look behind me. You can totally do this. So if you can already tell mid, mid blink that a survivor is going the other way, you can switch directions as you go. Which I think will help you if you're on console, because on console you don't have the ability to do crazy flicks, because your... unfortunately your your sensitivity is more fixed. I'm gonna see. Okay, I see her. Alright, I'm gonna charge one blink. Let go. And charge. I'm not, uh, I didn't have enough time. I charged for too long. Uh, I need to be careful and find her, not him. Oh, well, that's unlucky. He's got that heart. Okay, you see what I mean, right? I teleported. I knew that he was animation locked. So I immediately looked back. Uh, we might eat at decisive here and it would be completely deserved. Oh, uh, we'll not. Okay. And yes, uh, if you attack mid uh, at the end of the blink, you can also grab. So if that survivor was doing a slow bolt and I did that, it's possible that I could have grabbed him. So that works too. Uh, you can grab them out of totems, you can grab them out of lockers, you can grab them out of anything that you can grab survivors at. Uh, Exegates, you get it. Um, did a survivor leave out? Was it multiple? Okay. Okay, that actually kind of worked to delay it and then do a short blink. Don't forget that they see where you're aiming and they will often try to play around it. But if you're not very sure about your second blink, I'm not very sure about my second blink, there's no shame whatsoever in just waiting. And as you can see, waiting sometimes is a perfectly good decision. Especially if the survivor is cornered, right? Let's, let's try to come up with some made up example. Let's say that I chase Leon, who is now dead on Let's say I chase him to this tree, and he's behind this tree. I don't see him. I can do two things. I can wait, and then, okay, I go around, I see him, one blink, bam, dead. Or I can be stupid and be like, okay, I'm gonna get you. Oh, oh, oh I miss. 
Oh, fatigue. Oh, no. Now he's out of there. Don't forget that the more blinks you do, and if you swing at the end, that all of that makes your fatigue longer. With that little pine cone that we have right now, the extra fatigue from extra blinks is gone. And with the little wooden horse, the extra fatigue from miss attacks is gone. But we don't have that one add-on right now, so swinging unnecessarily is bad. All right, let's go. I don't see them. I think they're just waiting here. Are they just waiting here? I actually can't tell. I have iron well. Are they just hiding? Well, excellent job. That's about as far as you can go with two blinks. And seems like no one's getting this lady. So she's gonna die. Alright. We aim a bit up. See if we can land... Oh! Oh, what do you know? Uh, do you see my mistake there? I didn't get my two blinks, so I only have one blink. I wasn't patient there. Okay. Now I will be patient. Wait for the two blinks. One. That was a dead heart. Which is a perk that allows you to dash forward. Uh, maybe by the time you watch this, this perk has been reworked. So I'm just gonna be patient there. Um, we could hook a basement, sure. Would you say the nurse needs a buff or nerf? Uh, nurse is balanced because the bad nurses are really bad and the good nurses are really good. So she's kind of comfy in between. But yeah, with some of the stronger perks and strongest add-ons, she's really strong. And as you can see, you can totally, totally go in and out of basement. As long as you charge your blink at the right angle. Uh, so if I wanted to, I could probably, as I did before, teleport. Uh, there you go, right back. You do not, once you take this add-on off, you will need to guess. But don't worry, you will develop a good sense of, uh, let's wait. You will develop a good sense of, like, um, timing. And it will become second nature, it will be muscle memory. That was really good for me. Unfortunately, it's a very open map. I think they have a hard time escaping here. Okay, let's get our second blink back. There's no need to rush it. He's got that heart, doesn't he? Well. Yeah, sometimes they just zone themselves out and you don't even need to do much. It, it really pays off to be patient with Nurse. Uh, worst, things, worst thing that you could do is just never blink and just walk everywhere. But almost as bad as that is just blinking everywhere and constantly being in fatigue and constantly doing nothing. Hmm, nice. Okay, this pallet's gone. Since I'm recovering, I might as well break it. Notice that most pallets as a nurse you can just ignore. But you can also just break them and get points, I suppose. I really can't tell what she was trying to do. Very impressive. Okay, that was a bit of guessing, so please don't be surprised if you try that and it doesn't work. And try to guess as little as possible. You're still up in the boat? Oh, lady. Good job. That was a good misdirection, though. If you begin to look around and they see you past the corner, never drop down against the nurse. That is the worst thing you can do. When you drop down, if you don't have balance landing, you are literally sitting ducks in that spot for like one second before you actually get your speed back. So if they ever drop against the window, be very patient. You don't need to like predict it. You don't need to pre-blink. Literally chase them into the vault and if they drop, uh, let's say this is a window, right? This window right here. Let's say I'm cheating someone. Wait, 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 they drop? Well, close enough. <laughs> yeah, if there's no basement, that should be easier. <laughs> yeah, no, you, you definitely can wait. You definitely can wait. Wait, did I hear the hatch? Oh, I sure did. Um, I said that you cannot go through the exit gates, uh, through the exit, um, through like the edge of the map. And that is true, you cannot. But one thing that you can do, finally enough, is go through the exit gates. There's not gonna be anyone here, obviously. And you could camp this with insidious or something funny if you wanna do some memes, but yeah. As you can see, into the map, good. Out of the map, bad. And anytime that you can use a hill or any elevated position near the start or near the middle of the game while you find survivors, it's not a bad thing. Because elevation for Nurse is really good. She can get up there and see everyone. If survivors go up there and they don't have balance landing, they always will have to slow themselves down dropping. So, yeah. We can let them have it, I guess. GG man, I am crying. Oh, please don't cry. 
Go on, go, go on, go to the gate. All right. You can mention clenching off first as imply a full blink you haven't already. Yes, yes. Uh, not only that, you'll notice that on my fist right now, there's two little orbs. Those two orbs means that I have two blinks. And you'll notice now that I have one orb. One blink. So if you have add-ons to make it three, then it becomes three. I think most people will not look at that. They'll just look at the number, but that's also another thing. Mm -hmm. And I think that's it about Nurse. Chad, what, what, did we, what did we forget about Nurse? What's something critical? Uh, around pallets, you want to be careful. If you get stunned, uh, I mean, they actually might make distance. If you just play carefully, you can just... You can just move and, and make sure that they never get off. As I said, the most important thing is that if you lose sight of a survivor around the corner, teleport to the place where you last saw the survivor. If at that point the survivor runs back, easy hit. If they keep running, now you see them. The problem is when you try to guess too much and try to appear too much through walls and through obstacles. And at that point, you're, you're playing a difficult, risky 50-50. Um, but other than that, I think we covered it. Looking out about blinks on maps with the second floor, not to accidentally go to a lower floor, listen to Survivor. That's a good one. But it's a good way to counter Survivors that are good at breaking line of sight. Teleport to the last place you saw them at. And a, a bit of an advanced tip. Um, when a Survivor is on a corner, you will flick your camera pretending that you're trying to predict where they are. So let's say that I see a Survivor right in front of me, right? I will, when they go past the corner, I'm going to do this. I'm going to go whoop. And then the survivor will probably be right at the corner looking. And they're going to be like, ha -ha, this silly nurse is going to try to go through the wall. I'm going to, I'm going to run back where I came from. And then you stop, undo the flick and then teleport right where they are. And you're going to hit them nine times out of ten. Uh, the smart survivors, they, they do those tricks and they fall for them because they don't expect it. So yeah, that's pretty good. You cannot cancel blinks. The only thing you can do is look at the ground to try to blink in place. But a blink is uncancelable, so yeah. You can not stun a nurse mid-blink, but you can stun her when she lands. And if you aim a flashlight at her, it prevents her from charging up the blink. But that's a bit more advanced, you know, you can learn about that some other time. Let's move on to the next color. Next up, we're going to talk about the Huntress. She's one of the most unique killers uh, in Dead by Daylight. She's really fun and stands out from the other original cast quite a bit. She's also extremely popular. Uh, unfortunately, uh, this has positives and negatives. Positives, she's really fun to play, as we'll see. Negatives, she's a bit different. She has a lullaby that I believe extends 40 meters. So around her, 40 meters, survivors will always hear a little song that begins to play. So they'll have an idea that you're approaching. She is not a good stealth killer, and no matter what perks or add-ons you put on her, this lullaby will always, always, always be there. She is also a 110% movement speed killer. If you press F1, you'll see that she moves on 4.4 instead of 4.6. Um, and that means that even though she basically moves like a normal killer, she's a tiny bit slower. In some loops, if you do not use your power, or if you have already run out of her throwable hatchets, you're just better than Trap. You're just worse than Trapper and Hillbilly and Wraith. But you need to be a bit mindful of that. You will not catch up the survivors quite as quick as the other killers will. But other than that, uh, she's pretty fun. She has a very simple power. You hold uh, M2, the attack power. You hold up a tiny little hatchet. And if you release it, you throw it. The more you hold it, the, the, the straighter the arc and the faster it travels. So sometimes it's a good idea to hold it a bit longer just so that it has a more... Uh, straight path and it hits the objective quicker. Uh, if you toss it right away, that's fine, but it will fly um, with less strength and it will fly a little bit lower. And it's all about knowing when to use your power and when not to use your power. And even for some experienced people uh, like myself, it, it's still a bit tricky. As for the build that we'll be using, uh, we're going to use our own perk Hunter's Lullaby. We're going to pair it with a common perk Throw the Hunt. It might slow them down uh, looking for each of these. And then we'll have two tracking perks, Spice from the Shadows and Bitter Murmur uh, to let us know when survivors are around us and to let us know where survivors are when they finish ends and near the end, which can be helpful. This can also be a great perk to practice snipes across the map since you can see survivors from any distance and it can, it can sometimes uh, help you line up shots. As for add-ons, uh, she's got many, many strong add-ons, some of them very transformative. 
Um, I, if you want to stay away from add-ons that change her muscle memory too much, I would advise against the mana braid and the babushka flower thingy. Uh, these two make her pull up her hatchet faster, which is awesome, but it will definitely mess with your sense uh, of, of timing if you take them off. Uh, if you want to go absolutely safe and have something that doesn't really mess with your sense uh, of power, you could always go with add-ons that increase the amount of hatchets that you carry. So you need to still be a bit mindful of when you use them. And just the add-ons that give a slowdown to survivors when you hit them. And you cannot go wrong with these, uh, honestly. The ones that reduce the cooldown are also pretty good. But we're going to stay away from those right now. So we're going to put some blood point offering and hop into a match. Let's go, chat. Uh, right, so as we mentioned, we are a bit slower than other killers. Uh, we emit a loud sound that survivors hear. It's not directional, so they can't tell exactly where we are just by hearing it. But they'll know that we're around. So against this killer, stealth is powerful and a bit tricky to get around. We're going to really hope our perks help us and our general sense of where survivors spawn gives us a good early start. Uh, from that point on, you need to be very, very careful. When you hold up your hatchet, yes, you can release it pretty quickly, but it still takes a little bit of time to hold it release it and for the hatchet to actually travel and hit the survivor in that time the survivor can just get behind a, uh, an obstacle which would make our power worthless it cannot go around obstacles and if we miss or even if we decide to cancel the power because you can press uh, the normal attack button to cancel it you lose distance so if you're constantly tr uh, putting up your hatchet and putting it down or constantly throwing hatchets you will lose distance and you will make it very easy for survivors to keep going around the same structures over and over and over and over and over uh, forever. So you definitely want to avoid that at all costs. Now, another thing that is worth mentioning about hatchets is that you recover from throwing them much quicker than a normal basic attack. So sometimes you'll see me get very close to a survivor and instead of doing a normal attack, which they would get a lot of distance and I would recover very slowly, I will throw a hatchet from like melee range. And it might not make a lot of sense because like, why? You're just going to do the same damage, right? It actually does make a lot of sense because you recover so quick that sometimes that melee hatchet turns into another hatchet right away. Or you do a melee hatchet into a normal attack very shortly after. Especially if the survivors are a bit panicky and they can get away from you. Mm -mm. Oh really, Marcel? How was it? Welcome. Alright, uh, don't know what map it is, but it must have a lot of pallets because it's taking a little while to load. Oh... Uh, oof, well, we have a really tough map, so... Uh, by the way, some people will use uh, crosshairs. There's no built-in in-game crosshair, but if your monitor has a crosshair, I think it's useful. You could you could turn it on or draw a little dot on your screen. If you know where the center of your screen is, it does help a little bit to just, just know more or less where you're throwing. Especially in long-range hatches. I see scratch marks, so I'm already gonna go chase someone. And find them here, hopefully. They're on the gen, alright. She dropped right away? Oh, I hadn't seen her. Alright, I could begin to use my power right now, but I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna catch up a little bit first. And right here I have a decision. I'm gonna charge my... She, of course, doesn't want to take the narrow path. I'm just gonna wait. And release it. Just be very patient. Notice that she's in a really bad spot. And we're just... patient like a saint. We could have held our M2 again, but at that point it doesn't matter. If she goes down on the ground, I don't need to be faster. I can I can actually use just a basic attack. Alright, so somebody misses kill check? Maybe because of lullaby? No, it couldn't be. I'm gonna try to do this, but it's just tricky. Mm, no, just hold it. Just hold it. Just hold it. Just hold it. Be patient. Uh, unlucky. Yeah, I think the cars in this map are not very friendly. Ah? Uh? Alright, I could M2 right here, or I could also... M oh! Very smart, I'm gonna do this. Ah, that was um, a bad compromise. Okay, well that bird told me someone's there. Oh, that was just a bad aim on my part. I'm gonna tell you the general idea that you want to follow when playing as a skiller. You want to hold your hatchet in the middle of your screen and wait for them to run into it, right? As you can see, even that is difficult sometimes. Uh, this girl's gonna have a hard time getting rescued, but... Hey! 
Are we okay? Is she gonna hit stage two? Oh, she will. That's a that's a big one for us. All right, let's reload. Every time you run out of hatchets or you're close to running out of hatchets, you will want to reload. Typically, when you end the chase by downing a survivor, if there's a locker nearby, go and do it right there and then. Uh, the only times when you don't want to reload is if you're out of the at max capacity, or if you are very confident that you have enough hatchets for the next chase. You have three or four, and you're like, okay, I want to actually just get down to business. In that case, you don't need to reload. In almost every other situation, reloading is a fine choice, and it ensures that your next chase or two will be uh, done. Uh, that hard's gonna happen, I think. Okay, I was a bit patient here. Patience definitely pays off. And unfortunately, this person uh, doesn't agree with that virtue. Anyway, uh, we're just gonna take it easy, give these guys a chance to still play the game and just talk through all the things we need to do. Uh, anyway, uh, let's say that someone went around the corner and I've really realized that it's a really bad idea to hold my hatchet. Do I need to release it? No, if I do the attack, normal attack button, it puts away the hatchet. But as you can notice, this still slows me down for a little bit. So you don't want to gratuitously uh, put up your hatchets. That's Bitter Murmur, the perk that shows me auras of people. Um, damn, that was pretty good. But at that distance, unfortunately, they can they can, they can still kind of react a little bit. Nice. All right, you shouldn't be doing this. Hmm, I guess I didn't want those well points. I don't know. That guy healed really quick. I thought they were doing pretty good. It's a pretty good map for them. I really don't know. I'm going to catch up a little bit. Um, I could do a basic attack now. Uh, I don't think I'll be able to. All right, as you can see, the hitboxes of the survivors are very generous, and so are the ones from your hatchets. So, aim more or less oh, at them, and you're probably gonna hit them. All right, so now will be a perfect time to reload. Let's not get into the next chase. You very rarely want to chase people without hatchets, because even the most basic pallet and the most basic loop and the most basic window as a killer that is a little bit slower is really hard to wrap up and even if you wrap it up what, what happens if that person then gets rescued and you need to chase someone else you want to you want to accept the fact that this killer comes in little waves and that they have uh downtime and you need to manage this downtime very effectively so are you gonna drop down oh you already did now this is one of these places that is a bit of a what would you call it a a bottleneck and in such places, survivors cannot really have much chance to, to dodge. If you identify that a survivor is in a place where they physically cannot dodge out of the way, then you, you are more than free to release it as soon as you possibly can. Okay. Ooh, that bush did not help out. Notice that the survivor dropped the pallet while I was recovering. Very patient. Very patient. Okay. Uh, okay. Tricky one. I don't know what Nancy's doing. Just by holding your hatchet at a doorway and being very patient and just having charging it up, it just prevents survivors from doing it, uh, from going through it. Now I have three hatchets and these people are injured, so I'm, I'm pretty happy to not reload and just try to catch one of them. Because I'm pretty sure that with one or two, we'll catch someone. But sometimes that confidence can cost you. So do be careful. Oh, oh. I'm talking about confidence. Okay. You just come out of a locker. Hmm. While a swabber is dropping a pallet, they are... Whoa! Yeah, those hitboxes are terrible. Alright. I, I almost want to leave Nancy, dude. Wow. Yeah. Oof. Uh, fortunately for you, most hitboxes in DVD are somewhat intuitive. Most of them. So if it looks like you can throw over them, for the most part, you can. If you get a bit too close, I found that it's much easier to have them fail you. So if you want to throw over this fence, maybe, maybe like throw it for like an inch out of the way. Oh, she might uh, escape. No, we're good. Uh, it, needless to say, basement is a really strong idea for hunters. If you, if you have a basement between gens that you actually can defend, or if it comes to endgame, Cook somewhere in the basement, reload in the already provided hooks, and if they ever need to come out of this, especially with add-ons to help you throw faster, it is very difficult. You can just wait up here, and if they come out, you just hit them with a hatchet, when they come out, you just whack them.
and it's very difficult. Uh, even in tournaments, survivors will often just uh, accept and concede the fact that one of them is going to die in basement if a uh, good hunter catches them and puts them there earlier. They'll try to avoid that situation very desperately. Now, as we said, you can charge your hatchets. Bling! When you hear that noise, it's as straight as it's going to be. And look at that. It took so long to hit the ground. Now, I'm, I'm going to keep my mouse still and not charge it. Doesn't make it quite as far. And it doesn't... It, it, the, the hatchet flies almost twice as fast when it's fully charged. Sometimes, it's actually a good idea not to charge it so that you can lob it over something. So, if there's like a somewhat tall building... I and mean, you shouldn't be trying something crazy like this, but if you want to try uh, to throw over a building, you want to just partially charge it a little bit. That is a bit exaggerated, but it can actually kind of help if an obstacle is like slightly taller than this car and you want to hit over it. Like, say, say there was a... Yeah, say that doorway was a survivor. You could do this. And as you can see, you would more or less hit. Whereas if you fully charge it, you're not gonna get that arc. So that's something to think about. Thank you, Burn R4H, for the tier 3. Is there anything else I forgot in chat? Hmm. Her ping is map wide. Oh yeah, that doesn't mean a lot for you as a killer, but... That sound can be heard from very far away. Uh, apparently map wide, according to our friend here. Did you mention that if you're right behind a survivor, the recovery time her hatchet is much faster? Yes, that's one of the first things we explain. Hmm. What else? What else? Okay, here's a really important one, okay? Let's talk about pallets. In a pallet like this, should you ever kick the pallet in chase? Let's say this pallet was dropped. No, this pallet is horrible for survivors. No matter where they are, the only thing they can do is hide behind this little tree. In a situation like this, try to be careful, don't get stunned, and just play around there, just burp, 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 and eventually, boom. Just be very patient, they'll, they'll give you an opening. But there are other pallets where your power doesn't help at all. Uh, I'm gonna pretend that we find one. Yeah, I, I think this map is pretty good for hunters in terms of height. It's just the buildings that can be rough. Now, let, let's imagine that this car was a solid block of ice where survivors could see me through, but I could never really hit them. And no matter what I do, if I keep going like this, since they see me perfectly, they just keep running. They just keep running. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, oh. they kept running. Damn. Okay, again. Uh, oh, I'm almost there, almost there, almost there. Oh, he kept running. Damn it. Oh, mind game, mind game, mind game, mind game. It doesn't work. In these, very simply, just hold forward. Just hold forward. Go forward, go forward. The survivors, if they're greedy, they'll keep running, then you hit them. Or better yet, they drop the pallet and you break it and now it's gone and now it's on to other bad pallets like the one we mentioned earlier. And that would be better. Be patient there. <clears throat> it was worth a try. Oh, yo, Nancy, what's up? I don't recommend you th I don't recommend you throw hatches while you're falling. I try that and I never <laughs> succeed. But yeah, yeah, you totally can if you want to. Hmm. You can use a hatchet like a reference to aim when you lift. With hatchet bottom is exactly the horizontal line of the shot. Really? So you're basically telling me that right now, if I aim at the car, it's gonna hit the car? Yeah, that's that's not too far off, I guess. Why are the hooks highlighted in yellow and not red? It's the event, chat. It's the event. It, it makes it colorful. But yeah, uh, as I said, uh, a crosshair can help you to line up shots that would otherwise be a bit difficult. So here, for example, my crosshair is like a couple meters above the exit gate switch so that by the time it reaches there, it's right on the exit switch. If I were closer, I wouldn't need to aim. I, I could just aim right at it. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, you need to understand Subaru's hitboxes a little bit and how generous they can be and understand some of the loops where you actually have a chance. A really good rule of thumb that I learned uh, from someone that's given us a lot of tips about Hunters is that if you're in Shack, right? Let's say that this was Shack. And you know how Shack works, right? This is the window, let's say. I follow around the window and I see the entrance of Shack. If you see this, by the time you come around the corner of Shack, if you see a survivor go into the door and you're seeing them at the door, you can ready up your hatchet right as you go. And as long as you were that close, by the time you ready up your hatchet and you're here, you're going to hit them at the window. That's if they take the window. If they don't take the window, they're going to die. 
so yeah when you already understand structures really really well let's say let's say that for example this is one of these uh bottlenecks i can already pre-aim my shot and and ready it up to let it go around the corner i'm losing it a bit quicker and that's really nice well that's not really nice but yeah let's say gg's well played uh chat tell me what did, what did we forget about hunters what is your one number tip number one thing because of the hitboxes on loop, the killer should aim higher than the chest. Actually, I'm gonna give you a tip. If a survivor is... Uh, obviously, if a survivor is behind an obstacle, um, you will want to aim at their head or whatever you can you can hit, right? But if a survivor is in the... Um, uh, if a survivor is in the open, I actually suggest that you aim at their legs. Because a survivor, right, when they're injured and they're running, they lean forward. They lean forward like this. If you, if they're actually turning around, look, their head moves really wildly. Even though their body is actually standing still, right? Uh, I don't know how to, I don't know how to explain it. Uh, imagine this uh, water bottle, for example. The, the hitbox is this silver part right here. But if the survivor turns around too much, it looks like if you're following the top, it's actually visually difficult to follow it. But their legs and their butt and their thighs and like generally their bottom half is easier to track and is actually more accurately representative of their hitbox. So yeah, don't try to aim for their head, unlike in Call of Duty. <laughs> anyway, moving on to the next killer, I guess. Okay, so we're back with the next killer, uh, The Shape, aka Michael Myers. Uh, Myers is a fairly straightforward killer. He shares most characteristics with the other killers in general. He moves at the normal 115%, um, has normal launch, but then he starts to have different qualities that change throughout the game. At the start of the game, he's undetectable, has a zero meter terror radius. Unless you see him or hear his breathing from up close, he is kind of sneaky and that's his whole gimmick. Um, but he has a very sh uh, short launch and he's also very slow. So you want to get out of that as soon as possible. Then he gets to tier two, and then he's mostly a normal killer. But he has two advantages over normal killers. He's slightly faster at vaulting windows, which is nice. Not super noticeable, but nice. And his stereo radius is 60 meters, which is half of a normal killer. That is pretty good. And you can change this with perks and add-ons to make him really, really hard to hear coming. So by the time a swabber hears your terror radius, you can be very, very close in tier two, which is the normal state of Myers. When he gets to tier 3, which is his powered up, uh, holding the knife up uh, state, his steroids is normal, 32 meters, and then he vaults windows even faster, and he has a bigger launch than normal, uh, which is pretty awesome. Um, and that's what gives him a little bit of an oomph in chase, on top of being able to insta down. And then when that has happened for 60 seconds or so, he goes back to tier 2 and rinse and repeat. So basically with Myers, you start... Sneaky in tier 1, become normal with smaller terror radius in tier 2, and then occasionally go into insta-downing survivors for a minute at a time um, by looking at them and stalking at them. So yeah, open maps mean that it's a little bit harder for him to stealth. Indoor maps can be really, really strong and confusing for survivors. And overall, he's a decent pick, if not super, super strong, even though he has some pretty uh, nutty add-ons. We're not going to do anything crazy with the add-ons. We are simply going to pick... The brown add-on that lets us stalk a little bit faster. And the other add-on that lets us stalk a little bit faster. Where is it? Yeah, add-ons to stalk faster. They are really helpful and you cannot go wrong with them. So I recommend you do these until you are familiar with them. And after that, feel free to mess around with these more complex add-ons. Some of which uh, require a bit of an explanation. Uh, Search, uh, aka Jolt, is going to help us to slow down gens around us. When we down someone, we don't need to kick gens. They'll just go down by themselves. And we're also going to use the other common perk, Whispers, to know where more or less survivors are around us, but you could switch this up. And I'm actually going to use these two teachable perks, Say the Best for Last and Play Food. Play Food encourages you to leave the obsession, and then you become faster, super useful. And Say the Best for Last encourages you, encourages you to harass and hit non-obsessions. So with, do, with these two perks, we will basically try to keep an eye on who the obsession is and try to give them less attention than the others. And that will make uh, this killer work out a lot better. But definitely can can use many other perks once you've unlocked them. Let's find a game together. Right. Um, so you'll notice that in this uh, lobby we have two toolboxes. 
And that is a bit of a bad old man. Uh, Meyer starts out very slow. In the ideal best case scenario, you walk up to a survivor who's completely oblivious, they're working on a generator and you grab them right out. And then you get out of tier one later. In the real world, survivors are paying at least a little bit of attention. The maps, uh, as you can see, will be very open and bright. They're gonna see you, they're gonna hear you coming, or they're gonna call you out to their friends. And it's really risky to go for a grab or, an, or even an attack. Because then if you hit them, they run away and you're still in tier one. Being in tier one means that you have no launch, basically. You are very slow. You're very loopable. So our first idea is to get out of tier one as soon as possible. Uh, some perks can make it a little bit easier. Right now we're running Whispers, which is going to light up when we are walking um, close to a survivor, 32 meters, somewhat close. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to immediately go uh, towards Jens, and whenever I see Whispers go off, I'm going to start to see if I can find an angle to try to maybe possibly get a good look at survivors without them noticing right away. And sometimes you can be creative and get on top of a hay bale, uh, on top of a harvester, on top of a building, from a balcony. Sometimes you can get a little bit creative if you have a good idea where survivors are. But we're going to try to minimize risk because they did send us to a very bright map. And once you're out of tier one, uh, you need to make your decision. Uh, the general idea is chase survivors, hit them, chase survivors, hit them. If you ever find them in the open and they don't have much to do, stalk and power up tier three. And then you leave tier 3 99% or close to 99%. And when, when survivors are healthy and around you, you can do that 1% final. Uh, pop it and then be sure... Okay, I'm going to go through the building actually. And then try to catch them. Mm, whispers off, so we know don't be afraid. Whispers off. Off, off, off. On. Okay. Are they on this end? Yes, they are. Can we get an angle on them? They are, you know. There's a survivor there. The further they are, the slower you stalk them. Oh! They haven't noticed me. Oh, now they did. They set up a boon. Okay, oh, I got a bit of stalk out of them, but they got away. I'm on a really good spot now, though. Okay. Come on, come on. Can I beat tier 2 already? Horn's a bit difficult. There's Michaela, my best friend. Okay, that's tier two. Ball faster. I want to break that totem, but I'm not in a huge rush. I'm just going to use my faster stalk. Okay, that's a hit. She's not my obsession, which is great. My obsession is Hattie, so we're going to remember that. Oh, she's a bit in the open. Can I get a bit of stalk on her? Yo. Okay, notice my... Okay, tap, tap, tap. Now I have tier 299. Let's go for someone else. Oh, excellent. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave her and get that speed boost. Uh, Play with your food will now give me a speed boost. And I'm gonna go for the other person that I know is on a gen. And now I'm moving much faster than normal, so... Ah, uh, is it enough, though? Oof. Oh, extremely unlucky there. Pretend to break it? Maybe she runs away? She did. Ooh, lucky, lucky, lucky. <laughs> Surge hits that gen and that gen. Uh, Jolt, sorry. The bottom park. And because it's not the obsession, we keep building up, say, the best for last stacks, which is gonna make every hit recover faster. In tier 3, it doesn't matter too much, they insta down, but when you need to hit them and then catch up quickly, it is pretty good. Are they gonna be greedy for this gen? At least to a degree, yeah. Am I gonna get a play with your food? Yeah, I am. I'm gonna keep it. See if they're too scared to come back. I'm gonna get a play with your from Hattie, Hattie, and then I'm gonna go back and use it on this lady, who's gonna have to give me this pallet or die. Die. Get rid of this. Kick that. Pull faster. Pick up. And now we're just gonna lose it. We're probably not gonna get value unless some hero comes and takes a slap. Uh, basement though. Hmm. Basement next. If I, if I can defend the gems on the entrance. That could be really powerful. Let's hook there. Just hurry up, get out. Whisper's not doing much for us right now, but all the other perks have done a little bit at least. And we're gonna defend that, because we have a gen, two gens right next to basement. They touched, they didn't touch it actually, it's been regressing. We can actually play a bit defensive here. And if they run into me, I just look at them, I guess. 
We have a small turret right here, so maybe they'll run a bit into us before they realize we're actually just being very territorial. Whispers is on, but it's probably the person in the basement. And perhaps no one else. Yeah, I did the gents far away. That's really smart. But I also think we're getting something out of this. We got rid of their boon as well. If they're extra smart, they're doing that gen as well now. Hello, is anyone coming? Honestly, dude, if they just leave that person in basement for a long time, I don't know if I have an answer to that. But I don't want to leave because the gens are just too done. Uh, tough, 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 tough. Okay, they got in there. They got there in time somehow. Very impressive. Okay, okay, okay. Mm, that's really sad. Okay. Bloody food. That's a shame that it's the obsession. I'm gonna mm, let them go. Can we get another bloody food stack? Yes, we can. Uh, I recommend that when you're close to a survivor, you stare at their feet slightly. When you stare at their feet, um, the minimum distance to stalk is a little bit nicer. Uh, if a survivor is too close to you, you actually don't get to stalk them. But by looking at their feet, you artificially inflate the distance. I, I, I have no hooks and somehow these people just have this rescue. That's insane. That's so crazy. That is so lucky for them. I am speechless, my guys. I have... I guess it's because it's basement there. So unlucky. So yeah, when you're about to stalk, if they're like... Running into you, you definitely want to do that. I don't get her, unfortunately. I'm gonna try a little mind game here, see if it works. I did. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Trust me, I lunched there, dudes. Trust me, I lunched. Oh my god, the game was like, nah, nah, you didn't. Nah, you just, you just want to hit right now, dude. You want to hit right now. And now we have the worst pilot in the game. What is this loop, dude? What is this loop? And she challenges it like an absolute champion. Pfft. I am speechless. My perks have been useless and our early game has backfired. We camped someone for 59 seconds and now I'm trying to get stuck out of her, but it's pretty bad. As you can see. Alright, we're 99. We'll go for someone else. Absolute insanity, dude. So unlucky. Um, that gen said nothing. They... Yeah, they went back to Shag eventually. That's really unlucky, my guys. But what can we do? Okay. Uh, don't... I actually have to hook in basement. Like, this this Nancy literally will... Un will do... I don't know what's going on, man. Like, they're... Look at the hooks I have. Look at the hooks I have. There's like a quarter of the map with zero hooks. Uh, the reason I need to go basement is because you cannot, uh, uh, you, you can always rely on basement. It's never, it's never sabotage, sabotageable, sabotageable. It's not susceptible to being sabotage. But this sucks. This sucks. I'm very, I'm, I'm very upset. I'm trying to get used out of the tier three, so I'm not even going to bother kicking the whispers off. There's no one here. I'm not even going to bother kicking the, um, the boon. Whispers on. And that's not basement. That's someone else. Whispers off. Whispers on. Someone's by the stream, maybe. Very well done. That's very unlucky. I see them. That sucks. Okay. That person hit stage two. There's arena. Can we get another player with your foot? Anytime you go away from a survivor, if you keep stalking, by the way, the the obsession chase ends. So if I keep stalking right this. This ends the chase eventually. Alright, this is good too. Uh, they now cannot go for that rescue or else the obsession will go down. Oh, that was a mistake. Alright, I'm not gonna hit a wall again. Alright, there you see. Uh, we lost gens, we lost almost everything. But now we have two people in basement, which is rough. And one of them will die soon, and we're still in tier 3, so... Nancy cannot just roll up here and save the situation. She did pick up the other girl, though. Uh, that was really good of them. Right. Uh, if I were Nancy, I would just be hiding around here. Honestly, and just wait for my time to get the rescue. Uh, but I guess I'm not her. Uh, let's see if I can find just people away with Whispers. We have a few seconds. Whispers off. 
Yeah, whispers off here. That girl's killing herself in the basement, which is kind of sad. Wait, did I just see them? No, that's an invitation for the event thing. All right, let's go away. We know this channel was a zero, but we go and check it. Whispers turns on. No, it doesn't. Let's go back. You just tell them not to worry if they lose a gem before a hook with Myers. Yeah, it's it's Myers is not quite as setup heavy as Trapper, but he's a killer that starts off really weak. Maybe he gets really lucky, but as I said, starts off weak. Oof. And definitely powers up later. So yeah, it would be completely expected for you not to do amazingly uh, hot in the first couple minutes. But luckily, these add-ons make stalking so nice. Look. Uh, we need to wrap this up, though. Uh, did I read you correctly at all? I don't think so. <laughs> I can't tell what she wants. Okay, that's better. Uh, we'll save one... Eventually, when a survivor becomes almost fully red, you cannot stalk them anymore. So you need to be a bit careful. If a survivor has been the sole focus of all of your stocks, they're gonna turn red. And that is kind of bad, because if they turn fully red, then you cannot use them later to strategically pop tier 3. If that Nancy was fully red, even if I already had a 99 tier 3, it would be quite bad, wouldn't it? I wanna do something so stupid. Uh, play with your food. Don't know how it worked here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave. Hold up. No, play with your food needs a cooldown, actually. Uh, it's gonna feel really silly, chat. Oh, wait! I'm losing chase! Make chase! Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> oh. Alright. Wait, wait, wait. How did she end up on the same side as you, though? Well, that was a huge waste of time, then. I could have done her for sure. Nah, I know it will fail. Shame. That's a JC tag, yeah, exactly. Very nice. Hey, no, 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 please don't do that. Yeah, don't do that. All right, well, I got greedy, clearly. I could have picked up immediately and just pressured. Uh, I wanted more. But yeah, no, I was trying to use bloody food to, I don't know, grab, somehow make her go down without dropping that pallet, but that would have been difficult. Catch my shear, though. Hello. What do we have here? Tia Wall with another boon? This girl really loves her boons. I don't know what she's thinking. Okay, faster recovery. With four stacks, it's 20% quicker. Noticeable. Uh, that girl is recovered, but no gates open. And she should go for that pallet, if you ask me. She took the most wide route available to go to that pallet. If she went there in a straight line, she would have been completely fine. What are these? Oh, I was gonna say. What are these hooks, man? There's one right here. <laughs> uh, I noticed the complaint here. <sighs> Alright. Uh, I don't think we can secure multiple kills here. We could go out of our way and try to harass that door. I think I'll just go back. They can have their two kills or two escapes. If they play as well. That's Hattie. Turning that. Uh, don't forget, every time they drop a pallet, great chance to stalk them. Not anymore, because this, this lady is completely dry. <laughs> but I can I can stalk, and this should lose the... Even if you're looking at them, if you stalk, it loses the chase. Uh, this is used to... There you go. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, I think that if she just runs the other way, we probably can't catch her. Uh, now we will, though. She wastes time from that. We recover. Whoa! 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 That wasn't normal. That was a. I think that was a big, big, huge life. We do have played your food that we got meat chase, which is kind of crazy. Did we catch her? Maybe barely. Yeah, I think barely. Mind the flashy from this lady. Who's this lady? Chat. I'm gonna kill Nancy. <laughs> I, I get to kill one of them. I don't get to kill both. 
I get to kill only one of them. I'm gonna make it Nancy. <laughs> I just want her to feel a bit silly, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I'm just gonna stare at her. <laughs> uh, that's what you get from sabotaging my <laughs> But yeah, basically you do a bit of left, right, play with your food occasionally, save the bus for us occasionally. Uh, whispers helping you occasionally, search slash Joel helping you occasionally. And eventually you unlock better perks uh, to make Myers a bit stronger. Okay, dudes. Okay, these people are mean, man. They are mean. Oh, we still did okay. Uh, notice that we are pretty strong around uh, playing around hook people. So... <laughs> so yeah, that's something to remember. Like, one of the worst things you can do with Myers is accidentally go to tier 3, stalking your survivor that is like 30 meters away. You don't want to stalk people that are really far. If people are grouped up together and you stalk multiple, you evenly split up from the pool of both, but you don't stalk any faster. So in my opinion, if multiple survivors are together, it's better to hit one of them and then stalk the other or something like that. Do not try to stalk groups of survivors and then watch them all go away. Try to create pressure by downing or injuring one of them or quickly pop in tier three and then downing one of them or whatever. And that's, I think, most there is about Myers. Chat, why did I forget that is super important? We already talked about his uh, greater bolt speed in tier 3, his greater launch in tier 3. Mm, yeah. Don't play Myers. Don't play him. He's a basic killer. He's a basic killer. But if you... Here's the thing, right? If you play Myers and you're doing good at Myers... It's not because he's busted, it's because you're doing well. So once you learn Myers, you will be good at half the killers automatically, pretty much. So, yeah. <laughs> Did you mention the hitbox while stalking? Yeah, you need to see at least a little bit of the survivor. You can stalk them from very far, but it's a bad idea because it's very slow. So unless... Unless you think you're gonna get out of tier 1 by stalking someone from like 20 meters off or... Uh, like, just just be reasonable. Do not stalk a guy across the map just to get like 2% of your power, you know? Be reasonable. And get as close as possible. And try to stalk while they drop a pallet, while they vault the window and you're not gonna hit them anyway. While they are doing mundane things. You find a swabber in the open and like, oh! You stalk them for half a second and, uh, and before they get away, bam, hit them. Anytime you have to stalk and get close to that 99 tier 3, it's, uh, it's typically a good idea. And yeah, he's got very intense atoms, but people will have time to learn all about those. Let's move on to the next one. Oh yeah, 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 we did forget that one. That's what people meant. Uh, when Myers is stalking, he's not meant to be able to body block survivors. So his hitbox disappears. If you ever have a survivor um, that is running into you and you stalk him, he's literally going to go right through you. Be careful. That's why you want to look down. And also, you can use this to your advantage. If a survivor is trying to be really smart and they're trying to body block you, you can stalk for a little bit and walk right through them, which is really, really smart and really, really funny if you pull it off. But after that, I think that's pretty much all there is about Myers. Okay, we have now moved on to Hag. She's a really cute killer. I really, really love her. She is, much like Nurse, a very unique killer. And this has its ups and its downs. Uh, it's ups. Uh, she's powerful and unique, and most survivors don't even know how to play against her that well because you cannot do the normal things you do against other killers, and you need to play against her very differently. With other killers, it's totally okay to just spread out, do gens, and just try to win by doing gens fast. Against Hag, you actually need to be very careful and even harass her a little bit, uh, or else if she, set up, if she sets up too much, it can be really difficult to, to ever come back from even a tiny mistake. Um, the downs, she's hard to learn. Uh, she's frustrating in your first few matches. Uh, she's a set-up territorial killer. She's not a killer that just goes around the map chasing people like some people like. Uh, and if you learn her, you don't necessarily get much better at other killers. And if you learn other killers and you're very good at Myers and basic style killers, you're not necessarily good at her. So, keeping that in mind, do you want to play her? I think you still should. She's really fun. Um, her power is basically the black and catalyst. You press M2 and you draw a little triangle on the ground. This triangle has a, tri a trigger radius. And if survivors do anything other than crouch or stand still, if they walk, run, uh, do anything like that next to this radius, the trap springs and you can teleport and immediately hit them. 
which basically translates to you set up a bunch of traps, they trigger them, you teleport, you hit them. And traps seem to be really, really smart. And you can do this up to 10 times, and the traps keep refreshing. So if you place 11 traps, then your first one will disappear and be replaced. And you want to constantly keep placing those traps down. You can teleport to traps from up to 40 meters, more with add-ons, and that is a big, big distance. Her add-ons are also incredible. If you want add-ons that don't really mess with you too much, uh, honestly, you, you really can't go wrong with, like, most of them. I would say stay away from the iridescents. They are weird. Stay away from stay away from all of the purples. They are unique. Uh, and everything that's uh, green, yellow, and brown is good, except for the ones that extend the trigger range. Avoid these three add-ons. The bloody at mud, the bloody at water, and the bog water. You want to avoid these. These make your trigger radius bigger. So if the swapper triggers them, you're, they're actually going to be further and you might not actually be able to hit them right away. So it's kind of bad. Uh, but everything else is good. Um, uh, longer duration of the trap staying up is good. Longer teleport distance is insanely good. Faster placement is also good. So we're going to go with an add-on to teleport from a bit further and to set down the trap a little bit quicker. The hex perks are really disgustingly powerful. I'm going to use all hexes and sloppy butcher to keep survivors injured. If they're injured and they make one mistake, it's often over for them. So we're going to ready up with some blood point offerings and talk a little bit. Thank you, Major, so much about the general strategy. As a hack, you constantly want to have placed down five, six, seven, or eight, maybe all of your traps down. And then try to constantly corral survivors into them. You're going to try to play pinball with them, and you're going to try to bring them back to the area of the map that you've set up. At the very start of the game, set up a trap in the places that you think survivors will run around. Don't place them in, in corners that you know no one will get to. Place them in choke points and travel areas that you can identify survivors will want to go at. You don't necessarily need to trap generators, but rather trap the areas around gens, around loops, around hooks uh, for uh, for the best result. Uh, mind you, survivors with a flashlight can disarm your trap by uh, aiming at it with a flashlight. So you'll need to be, we'll need to be a bit careful with that uh, in this lobby. Uh, a really good rule of thumb to know when a trap is a really, really strong one is if you notice many elements converge. So let's say that the map has a bottleneck that goes through a very thin area. And on that area, there is a hook, and there is a gen, and there is a window, and there is a pallet right there. Well, if you put a trap right there, you're going to catch people that are doing multiple things, uh, going around the map, trying to loop you, trying to do a gen. So anytime you see multiple things converge on one point, placing a trap there can be super useful, because that trap can be recycled. Uh, maybe you bring someone to that hook and then use it later. So, yep. The, when they destroy your traps with a flashlight, there is a loud noise notification for it. Yes, you hear a now. I think they've changed that recently. And survivors now hear a uh, notification as well, like a loud sound. But yeah, it will not be the same notification as when they trigger it, because you won't be able to teleport to it. But yeah, knowing that, we're going to head into this game, uh, place uh, traps at the start, and be very ready to press left control to teleport to them. And it's going to take us another five years because people, people keep leaving our lobby. <laughs> Let's skip it. Okay, so um, it's very important with this killer, more so than with others, to have a sense of which map you're in, which will take time if you're new to the game, and where exactly in the map are you, right? So I'm going to try to walk you and tell you which traps I'm placing down uh, and, and why they work. Sometimes, though, it's better to place down even a bad trap than to just walk around with 10 traps on you. So I'm in the Disturbed Boy. This is a huge, huge map. The main building is in the center. So I'm out of the... There's... There's two loops here. Uh, I'm gonna trap one and trust of the other one behind me. No one will go there, or if they go there, we'll trap them. This shack is very popular and people come here from other places. So I'm gonna place a trap right here in case they loop around the shack or they come to it. The shack itself, we could trap in the middle and it would be pretty good. I'm just gonna trap right outside for a similar effect. Here, again, if they go into the deeper loop, which is a bit of a corner. Oh, they are there. All right, let's trap up here then. Let's put a trap. I think they're going to finish that gen right in front of my face. Let's trap here. And now we try to somehow push them towards... Very important. Try to push them towards the place. Uh, Bill seems smart. I don't think he'll walk in that. I'm still going to be ready to teleport, though. Alright, we're going to do a shot. There you go. 
Oh, wow, he just gave us a huge... I'm gonna reset the trap that we just did. Sometimes it's a good idea to reset them later. But I'm gonna do it right now. And I'm gonna place him in basement. And I'm gonna place him in the back just to be extra annoying. And guess what? Hello. I could have placed a trap at the bottom as well. If you want to be extra mean, you can do that. In the meantime, knowing that I'm probably going to down people going out, I'm going to place one here for anyone coming through. And also for anyone that I hook there, one here for anyone coming out of this. Someone trigger the trap. If multiple people trigger a trap, by the way, you will teleport to the one that you're looking at. Oh. And you cannot teleport while you're doing animation, so do be careful. So in that situation, I look at the right one. Oh, powerful. Okay. I'm just spamming my left control because I know that they're in very dangerous territory. And right now, if I... Quite honestly, if I just keep spamming some of these traps, they're going to be in such a horrible spot. All right, very well played. I'm going to leave. I need to be close to my traps or else I won't be able to teleport there. They did really good with that uh, trap. With that distraction, honestly. We do have Devour Hope, but it's not a perk that I'm going to try to do hard to get value from. And now we've only got five traps down, which is not ideal. I'm just going to place this here. Mm -hmm. I think... I think... Uh, I think our old man is still down there, by the way. Yeah, what's up? Uh, if you don't want to pick up right away, you can just leave him on the ground or whatever, but it's a bill. I know bills have unbreakable, so... I might... I might just pick him up, even if it's a bit mean. I just didn't see him come out, so I figured... Oh? He's crawling out. So smart. Yeah, I'm gonna guess... He doesn't have Unbreakable, man. But... Uh, I'm gonna be super, super nice and not hook him in the basement. I'm just gonna hook him here. Notice that I've already got a trap on this hook. That is excellent. Because if this guy is in a, in a call with his friends, they're gonna be like... Eh, Jimmy, did he trap around you? No, no, he didn't. Don't worry, bro. It's totally safe. And that's how you get them. When they think they are safe. I'm gonna place a trap right here. They're gonna see me place many of these, which makes them less effective. It's better if they don't see you at all. Hi. Uh oh, Bill. That's, that's death. That's death, Bill. That's you dying right now, Bill. Uh, three hooks on all of them on Bill. That's kind of mean. That is kind of mean. Oof. How do I feel about that? Do I want to be a little angel and let him be? Uh, one hack main gave me a tip one time that I think is really useful. If you have a building with multiple floors and you don't have time to trap, you know, every single corner out of every single uh, opening, it's typically better to trap the bottom floor. Because survivors on the top floor they will need to go down to the bottom at some point. And to get to the top floor, typically you have to start at the bottom. So it's very likely that you actually trap the top and they never get there. So better to trap the bottom. It also takes less time. This guy's just been doing gents, so yeah, I guess, I guess they're ready for this. Tunnel? Yeah, I'm very sorry about that, but unfortunately you don't always get to peek and choose. Uh, that's a trap that they triggered from too far. Will I be able to teleport to it? They have a boon. It's kind of powerful, honestly. I'm gonna place a... That's Steve. He, he 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 did that trap knowing fully well that I just said it. So he probably triggered it on purpose. That is a good one. Yeah, if you set up a trap, like, don't be surprised if they just mess with it. And you teleport and they're too far because they trigger it on purpose. And that's... Ooh, what's going on? There you go. So yeah, uh, don't be spam don't don't be spamming left control when you know that you set up a trap that is very likely to not work. This is a hill, which is awesome, but I see that someone tried to take hits, so I'm I'm scared now. Hills are great because hills often only have one uh, entrance going up. So if I put someone on a hill, I can see someone getting close, and I can just put. I'll try to demonstrate. Hold on. You see this hill, right? This is a normal hill. Uh, most hills are like this; they only have one entrance. You put a trap right here. And survivors cannot really get through. To avoid a trap from going off, they need to crouch. And a trap has a, meter, a diameter that is very large of like 3 meters. They just disarmed with a flashlight, didn't they? Yeah, they did. And 3 meters is a lot. Let me show you uh, what it looks like visually. Uh, 
Uh, I need to catch a break though before I can do that, perhaps. Oh, you're here. Uh oh, that's really good from there though. They're in a good spot now. Are right, they? Let's set up a trap. I think they're up here. I hear the gen. There's actually this is not visible for the killer. Uh, sorry, for the survivors, it's only visible for the killer. But there's actually a visual indicator of how wide a trap is. Look. You you see that little heat-like effect? That basically tells you... Hello. I have the bar of hope now, so I insta down. That basically tells you... Um, where the trap reaches. So let's say that I put a trap here, right? And they crouch through it and they don't disarm it. It's still good, because it's still there for the next person I hook, and it's still there for that boon totem that they tried to set up. So, yeah. Don't, don't be discouraged from setting up traps. Even if you don't catch them with it, it will still slow them down. It will still be there for later. Uh, flashlights do hurt a little bit, admittedly. If I swap this onto a trap with a flashy, do you get a notification? Mm, I, think they, I think you do now. I think you do now, yeah. Uh, also, putting traps around buildings and around big walls that survivors have to go around, typically a great idea. Really? Wow, really? I think that might be the end of them then. You don't make that window. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. uh -oh. uh, do you also notice that the hack uh, phantasm trap looks at the direction the survivor that triggered the in? Look. You see? She's looking at her. So when you teleport, you will always be facing at the direction of the survivor that triggered it. Oh, uh, no? Oh, uh, yeah. Your general idea as a hag when you spawn is set up a few traps in the one or two critical spots near the middle. Before you get spotted, try to fill in... Let's say I spawn right here in the middle of this building, right? I don't want to go to the other edge of the map. I would put a trap here, put a trap there in the other entrance. Then maybe set up a little... Think of yourself like a little spider. Begin to... You, you set up the perimeter of the... Of the web. And then you start to fill it in. And then you try to push everything you can desperately into that perimeter. Into that web, if you will. And don't forget to set up, you know... Traps. You don't need to put six million traps next to them each other. If you put traps too close to themselves, they trigger one, you teleport, you hit them or you miss, and they trigger the other one and you can't teleport in time because you're recovering. You want to space out your traps so that ideally they trigger one, you hit them, you recover, they trigger the next, you hit them, and they're like about 15 or so meters apart or 10 or 12 meters apart. With some exceptions, obviously. Sometimes you'll just want to play it safe. And don't forget that Sometimes it's not about um, trapping the gens or the gates. It's about trapping the paths that you know survivors will eventually take to get there. And those are the ones they see coming the least. Worst thing you could do is put a trap down and start chasing people around. And, and then they constantly have an eye on you. They constantly harass you. They constantly trigger a trap. You teleport to it, miss. Repeat, repeat, repeat. And you get nothing done, essentially. Is it worth to trap under a pallet? I think it's more effective to trap on uh, around the pallet so that people that are not even on the loop, sometimes going by the loop, trigger it. But if you trap on the pallet itself, it can work, yeah. You teleport immediately, and the moment you teleport, you body block and you can hit them. But be careful, because they can trigger it, and then you teleport, and then they drop it, and then they stun you. So, careful. Careful with that. Binding scroll wheel action to faster DP. I'm not going to say that, because I know some people are on console and stuff, but yes. If you want to teleport super fast, you could bind a convenient key to teleport and spam it super quick, like mouse, mouse wheel down. I've done that in the past, it's really effective, yeah, it's really, really good. And chat, what did I forget about the hack? What, what else did we forget to mention? Uh, flashbangs and flashlights can be used to disarm the trap. Um, she, yeah, she's very short, she has a smaller tower radius, she's a bit uh, slower much like Huntress, so you cannot chase with her the same way you can with Wraith or Hillbilly. She's slow. You need to set up. You only chase when you know you're gonna get a down or get a pallet or, or just brute force the final chase of the game. But yeah, you don't commit to long chases, especially early. You always want to have a f just a few traps on your hand and many traps down. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and oh, another thing uh, that I forgot to mention altogether. When a survivor triggers a trap, their camera automatically snaps onto the trap itself. Now, if the trap is in front of them, this doesn't have a big effect. You, you just go, oh. But if you place traps covering a doorway and you place them at a 90 degree angle from the doorway, a survivor going through the doorway is going to immediately go, what? This is very effective around hooks. Put a trap maybe one or two near the hooks. Uh, you don't need to place them right on top. And if this happens, a survivor running to something critical can sometimes have their camera mess with them. And this is something that you can take advantage of as well. <clears throat> that's right. Yeah, that's very, very important. This will be going on YouTube. That's right. <laughs> Okay. Hacks Mori is the best Mori in the game. Yes. Go eat some liver. It is good for you. Okay. So it is now time to see the doctor. Uh, the doctor is great. He's a normal killer in most aspects. Normal terror radius. Uh, normal movement speed. Normal launch. Normal everything. So if you played one of the basic killers like Trapper or Myers or Wraith, you will transition very, very easily into playing this killer. On top of that, he has some abilities that basically do three things. They allow you to find survivors quicker, which is awesome. They allow you to annoy and confuse and hinder survivors passively, with, especially with add-ons, which against beginner survivors is super good. Against more experienced survivors, it's not so strong. And third, and maybe most importantly, it actually allows you to counter survivors at loops and cut them off from doing certain actions that allow you to catch up and bring them uh, some treatment. So yeah, knowing that, how do we navigate the Doctor? Uh, I recommend you bring Sloppy and or Jolt to slow down healing and gens. Overcharge, his own perk, is pretty cute. I also would advise Noid. Noid's very strong on, on this type of killer. And Whispers is a really nice perk to start with. If you have it at tier 3, if this perk is on, that means that someone is within 32 meters, which is exactly your terror radius. And that will allow you to know for a fact that if you use your blast, you're going to hit at least one survivor. And if you don't, that means they're hiding in a locker. Um, so yeah, you have two abilities. The blast, which is a, a big nuke around your terror radius that makes every survivor get mad and scream and reveal their location. And then the shock, which is a short close, uh, close range ability that brings up their madness. And on top of that, prevents them from doing certain actions for two and a half seconds. The add-ons on Doctor are extremely complex and I highly... Highly recommend that you watch the video where I talk about them at great lengths. If you don't know where to start, you can bring just a very humble brown range add-on, which just makes his range a little bit bigger. You could also use the Maple Knight, which will highlight the place where you shock. I don't think it's even necessary, even for beginners. Uh, so we're going to skip that because it's very simple and we're simply going to uh, bring Order. Order is very simple. It just makes me have my power back earlier and Subaru see fake pallets, which I also see uh, indirectly. So, yeah, very simple add-ons, we're just gonna bring that, even though his add-ons get... Uh, pretty complex. And we're gonna put on some blood point offerings, uh, this, and we're gonna find a match. Right, so we've explained that he has two abilities. The pressing left control, boom, big blast that sh uh, shows you where survivors are near you, and brings up their madness. And then the short distance shock to bring up, the, bring up their madness too, half as much as a blast and also prevent them from dropping pallets, vaulting windows, and doing any action for a little, little short while. But what does Madness do? Uh, there's three Madnesses. Madness 1, which is the base one, it just gives them slightly harder skill checks. Madness 2, slightly harder skill checks still, and every now and then they'll see Doctor Illusions, like random Doctor will show up. And then in Madness 3, the Doctors are actually visible for you as well. So Survivors in Madness Tier 3, they have random doctors appear near them called uh, Doctor Illusions, and you can see them as well in Tier 3. And they also hear a constant noise that is really annoying. And they also cannot use items um, while they're in Madness Tier 3, or heal themselves or heal others. They can only unhook, open gates, uh, do chase things, but they can't do gens, so it's a nice slowdown. And then there's a lot of add-ons that make all levels of Madness do extra things. But yeah, let's let's get to it. What's the interaction between the Ascending Blast and that devotion? If you have your terror radius elsewhere in the map, it will still work uh, there. But it's not a crazy cool idea. Hmm. 
So, okay. Uh, since we are running the perk Whispers, the moment that it turns on, we'll know that we'll have at least one or two survivors. And that's when we'll begin to use our Blast. Every time we have a chance to use our Blast, we'll typically do it right away. Maybe not during Chase, because you don't really get anything out of it. But to make sure that survivors around us are constantly mad and mad and they need to snap out of it. When they reach Madness Tier 3, they need to snap out of it and then they go back to Madness Tier 1. We are have a fantastic map for us. Right, so we're going to walk away from where we spawn, as we typically do. Okay, that way. The gens are all far. And when Whispers is on, we're going to wait just a little bit, get a little bit deeper in. Alright, this is probably a good idea now. Uh, it would have been really convenient if there was someone hiding in the edge of the map, but it wasn't the case. They're just in this main room. Let's go and find them. Alright, we found a person here. You don't want to shock them just for the sake of it. Okay, I thought that I could beat her to that pallet if we shocked her, but she didn't go, so that's a big hit. Um, and I'm pretty sure I can... Oh! She's dead, chat. Uh, the Dwight did a really good job body blocking, actually, but she did not help her case at all. I might get a free hit, so I'm gonna get a bit greedy here. Might be a free pallet. Nah, he doesn't want to drop that pallet. Alright, we go right back. Notice that my blast is now on a long cooldown. You can see by the red uh, bar thingy. Oh. And he's gonna get back in a few seconds. People on the ground and people on hooks are not affected by it, but everyone around them will, so... I'm gonna get here, and I'm gonna blast just to bring everyone to Manus and find where everyone may be. Alright, looks like I only hit one of them. I'm gonna hit the Gen with Overcharge. The next time they touch it, they get a difficult skill check. It's not super worth it to kick Gens that are like at 1%. Don't do that. I'm just doing that as an excuse to talk about the perk. But yeah, typically a Gen that's like 1%, just leave it. What are they gonna do? Anyway, looks like we have a friend here, and it's an injured friend. Ooh. If I had been a bit faster, I might have been able to stop that. If you know that someone is going to do a critical action in front of you, like open a gate, finish a gen that's 99%, do a rescue, vault the pallet, you can just shock them like this. And if they are within that range, for the next two and a half seconds, they are useless. They cannot do anything. Um, okay, I understand this is called that. I want to find whoever finishes gen and whoever is headed for this rescue, if I can. Maybe, maybe Kate or whoever's not there is doing something else. All right, it's time to blast, I guess. Okay, the blast doesn't have the same effect. It doesn't actually stop uh, survivors from doing things. So you cannot blast someone to prevent an unhook. Uh, that doesn't work. But you can blast them just to build up the madness, which is what which is what we're interested in. So does she have a pallet here that she can get to? Yes. Shocker. In her screen. She had out of the press space, so she dropped it. But it doesn't matter, because we shocked her anyway, we go around it, and now she can't vault back for the next two and a half seconds. So sometimes it's about preventing the vault, sometimes it's about understanding that it's gonna happen, and just locking them into the position that they're that they're in afterwards. Um, so say that this survivor right now has a pallet drop right here, right? Let's say that Dwight is right there and this pallet drop. I shock him, he vaults, but after he bolts, look, he's locked in. Easy hit. So you you th you think in those terms sometimes. You think in when I shock him, what are they gonna where are they gonna be and what can they do? Hello, okay. Bye bye, okay. Let's do this and hit multiple of them. Okay, notice uh, that Dwight is in minus tier one. Very little static. Notice that Claudette and Ace are in tier two. Very big vertical static. And notice that the Kate is in tier three. Complete static. And that she, she needs to snap out. She will go back to tier 1 in approximately 2 seconds. When she snaps out. And you'll see that she looks exactly the same as Dwight afterwards. And if they have no static, that means that they're in mana 0. You've never hit them with your power ever yet. So that's an easy way to know. If a survivor has a medkit and they're in mana tier 3, you don't need to worry too much. They cannot use it right away. Let's say that there's a survivor around you with a flashlight and they're gonna be pestering you. Pretending, you know, to go for the rescue, blah blah blah. I thought he might want to go into a locker. Going into a locker allows survivors to <coughs> dodge the blast, which is kind of helpful if they know you're going to do it. You see that white uh, pallet? That's a fake pallet that survivors in Madness uh, 
see, but no one else does. Do you wear around here, huh? Alright, let's find him. He's running, I can hear him breathing, kinda. Got him off. He's going back. No, he's here. He doesn't hear my terror radius very well in minus tier 3, I suppose, so. That's nice. Okay, I could she could he could have dropped that pallet to be very safe here. He cannot drop that pallet. He can not fall that window! Okay, so the two and a half seconds, he, he spammed the spacebar, but the two and a half seconds hadn't passed yet. So by the time he could actually vault it, he was so close that he couldn't get the fastball anymore. That was cute. Uh, thank you, Oyer. Thank you for the tier 3. It means a lot. Alright, Madness... Uh, I mean, Blast cooldown is about to come back. Can we stop gems at all? Not this one, no. Okay, the gems are all there, so we're gonna focus on that area. Let's see if we can find someone nearby. Okay, someone's getting the rescue in like two seconds. I'm not even gonna bother. And Dwight, where are you? Dwight. Dwighty boy. You see that illusory doctor? That means someone in tier three is there. But you know, that's Ace, we know that. So thanks, game. Well, I wanted to defend the gens around there, but I might- Yeah, they're all here resetting and rehealing, so... Yeah, cool. Okay. Uh, I generally don't want to tunnel the A's or anything, but I, I do need- I don't know if that shock was good. Yeah, no, I'm going for you, Dwight. Mm. Are you waiting at the pal- Ugh! Alright, I'm gonna go back to my three gens, which I'm probably gonna have to defend last. And see if I can blast and find Claudette or someone. Because I don't want to chase these people. There she is. Alright, if she's very smart, she takes me away from all these gens, which she seems to be planning on. Alright, well, if we're good, maybe we catch her before she can do that. Look at all of these doorways lined up, that's crazy. I think this girl understands that her taking a hit for a teammate is a good thing. But we have Sloppy Butcher. It will take her a little while to heal, so... Alright, we're gonna see whether or not it's worth it to shock them. I think they have a pallet right there, so... What? It was a window. Well, it's okay, she should be dead. There's nothing here. Uh, there's another window! This is an Indozoid pallet. She didn't know. And Surge slash Jolt hit that gen a bit. So, we're good. We're thriving. Uh, any skill check related perk is typically very useful on Doctor compared to other killers because he naturally makes survivors in tier 1, 2, and especially 3 have harder skill checks. So I would never kick this gen. In fact, I'm not even going to because I'm so close. Uh, hold up. You see the problem? He can vault this, this pallet is dropped and he's one of the strongest pallets in the game. But he can he cannot drop it. This one he can. He cannot vault it. Oh that sucks. They did finish that gen after all. Shame. I mean we need we do need to kill them. Good job, Dwight, good job. That could have perhaps worked if we were a bit luckier. They have a very strong pallet in that room if he reaches it. But the extra range from the brown add-on is so helpful. He'll use that hard, I think. I don't even understand. I, didn't, I actually don't even understand how he pulled that off. Well done. But yeah, they can, that, they can use that hard right now through your shocks. Don't be alarmed. It's totally normal. Okay, these two boyos are like, yep, he's focusing on him. Let's just do this gen ourselves. Don't let them. I don't think I get that. I'm lucky. Let's kick this. With overcharge, it might be worth it. Okay, this lady is injured. I think I'm gonna try to cut her off. Hide my red light. There's a dead heart. There's an invitation. I think I already have all of them. Alright, this isn't great. If they are smart and they hit skill checks, they finish that in my face. If I could put them in minus tier 3 to prevent them from doing this gen right now. Oh, it's not that progress. I think we're, we're actually chilling. Kick it again. Overcharge. And if I really wanted to be a bit of an ass, I could just sh keep shocking the kids so that they don't have a good chance to get a rescue. Make it really difficult. Notice that Ace is in tier 2, which means he's gonna be in tier 3 in 5 seconds. And Dwight is injured, so he can't come for the rescue either. Let's do it. Let's do it. 
That's perfect. Another surge. And that goes in tier 3 as well. And now it's an exchange. Second hook for him too, I think so. And notice that I have one gen here, one gen there, one gen there, so I can constantly keep shocking all of them at once. This is really good. I'll do this too. For the info, you know, if someone comes here, I don't know. And now they're in a... What? That ace is already healed? Damn, dude. How did they do that? So my kids, I guess. Oh, hello. Are you guys healing? No, nope, that, that guy missed the skill check, so he should be coming in a straight line from here, maybe? Uh, Dwight is dying on the hook. And I think our, our play here is just to camp him to death. If they want to do a rescue, well, we'll take what they give us. Don't forget hard, that hard. I think that was it. Another surge. You see why three gens are so strong? This is a very good map, though, for them. Truth be told. Alright, let's find the last survivor if we can. Okay, that means he's out of range or in a locker. Um, okay. We cannot recite. We cannot score <laughs> Kate and Dwight on the same hook, so we we'll have to do this. Okay. Now we just look for the hatch. By the way, if a survivor is about to beat you to the hatch, you can actually shock them and close it in front of them. So say a survivor is right in front of me and the hatch is in front, I could shock them. And when they get to the hatch, they cannot go into it for two and a half seconds. And in that time, you just go and close it. Fun little thing. Whispers is on. Oh, that's really important. I need to shock right now to find him. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. Sexton, thank you for the gifted service. Whispers off. Whispers is back on. All right, let's see. If he doesn't... Yeah, it would be weird for him to be in a locker right now. All right, we're going to try to cut him off. Oh, never mind. Well done. Hmm. Clarify that search is jolt. Yeah, sorry guys. I keep calling it search, but it's it's, it's called jolt. Uh, these days. Uh, well on, well on to all of them. Uh, we'll play it, everybody. Um, now. Uh, unfortunately, the add-ons on Doctor are ridiculous. They are absolutely crazy hard to explain. So go to the add-on video and watch the 30 minutes of add-on explanation if you want to understand them. But you can always you can always go with your intuition. You really there's none of them that are just straight up bad except for maybe one. So yeah, you be okay. Iron Maiden can work on Doctor. Yes, if they go into lockers, you know. Um, they'll learn quickly not to. You have barbecue and Iron Maiden, and they'll never really be able to dodge you from far away or up close. Thank you, Sexton, for the so many gift of subs, man. But, you know, it's more of an interesting off-meta perk. He's got stronger perks, for sure. Uh, GG's to these to this fellows. <clears throat> uh, thank you, Interrobanks. If you want to share that with us, I'll be sure to place it in the video somewhere or whatever. Thank you so much. Uh, whispers does work on people on the hook, so yeah, don't don't camp someone with whispers. It works on every survivor unless they are dead, disconnected, or escaped. So if they're on the floor, on in a locker, in a hook, whispers picks it up. You need to use this information carefully. All right, all right, chat. We have finally reached the cannibal. Uh, the cannibal, much like trapper, wraith, doctor, is a basic killer with basic. Mobility, basic lunges, basic terror radios, everything is normal about him. Um, so if you come from another killer like him, he will feel pretty natural to play normally. And on top of that, he has a chin, so it works a little bit like the hillbilly. If you hit a subaru with it, you insta down them, and in fact, it keeps swinging, so you can hit multiple subarus at a time. Uh, if you hit a pallet, you immediately break it with a short animation afterwards. Same with breakable walls. But if you bump into an object, much like Kill Billy, you go into a long animation. And with Cannibal, that animation is even longer. He starts swinging in tantrum. And you actually can down survivors during this animation if they are careless. So you need to be a bit careful. His Chenzo uh, doesn't make you move extremely fast from the get-go, like Kill Billy, which is bad. You, you cannot use his Chenzo for mobility. But it also gives you full control while you move it. And as I said, you can hit multiple targets. So even though you don't have the mobility, you have 
a much higher lethality and a much higher freedom to go around obstacles and it's much easier to down two hours in the open. The Cannibal is amazing at down two hours in the open. He's amazing at securing kills because you could just camp with the chainsaw. But I really hope that you take him further than that. He's so much more than that. He can be so, so fun to play. Uh, with the ability to shred through pallets super fast, if you can play it on Windows well, he's such a menace. We're going to use his own perk, Barbecue and Chili. Gives us info. Awesome. Gives us point. Even better. Claustrophobia is cute. If a gen gets thrown near us, the gen, the, the windows will be blocked. And maybe that gives us a down. With Fearmonger, we will prevent people from quickly running away from us with Spring Burst and other exhaustion perks if they're near gens. Not too bad. And I guess we'll bring Whispers just to make sure that we find people quickly. If Whispers is on, we know that we're getting close to someone. If it's off, it probably means no one's there. We should go search elsewhere. Add-ons. Watch out. Some of these add-ons are either complicated or have weird effects or have ups and downs on the downs are hard to play around. Anything that increases the charge time, I recommend you stay away from as a beginner. That includes the depth gauge rake, uh, especially, uh, but also the beast marks and the knife scratches. I recommend you stay away from those. Um, the add-ons that reduce the tantrum time, I think are great for a beginner, because you will be, you know, if you really want to learn this character, you will be making some mistakes. So reducing tantrum time is a good idea, and you cannot go wrong with this as a beginner. And also the add-ons that increase the time for you to recharge your chainsaw fuel tokens, they're also good. It's the primer bulb and the spark plug. So I guess I'm gonna just run the brown add-ons of these two. Get my chainsaw back a little bit quicker, uh, recover a little bit faster if I bump into something. The chilies are really, really good add-ons that extend your chainsaw with no downsides, but they also make it very long. Um, so I just want to show you the base kit cannibal, and eventually you can just use the better add-ons. You can also go for the chain add-ons that that give a debuff to survivors as well. Uh, you really can't go wrong with some of these. Uh, but let's do that, get some DP offerings, and find the mass and talk about everything related to the cannibal. Right, so we have a killer that has normal mobility, normal terror radius, normal everything, but on top of that, he can use his chainsaw to down people immediately. How is he not the most OP killer in the game? What really makes him work, but also makes him fail? The chainsaw cannot go through pallets. It has to break them first, which it does pretty quickly. And it most critically cannot go through windows. So anytime you try to use your chainsaw, survivors are strategically going to run to their nearest pallet, or better yet, their nearest window. It is very, very useful to bring perks like Crowd Control, or better yet, Bamboozle from the Clown, to block windows yourself. If you block windows, there are so many loops that become quickly, quickly death traps for survivors. Um, in lack of that, we're going to have to be a bit smart and understand that sometimes, you know, if a survivor is just hugging a window back and forth, we're just going to have to hit them with our mallet and just move on. Um, so we're going to try to be smart. Now, the way you win with Cannibal is you down a person fast, and you put them next to a gen, and you make it really difficult for them to unhook quickly, and then you go for someone else in a bad spot, and you keep this going. The way you lose with Cannibal, and hopefully we won't, is you chase a guy for five generators, he runs you through every window, you down them, you down them, and you hook them super far away from all the gens, you ignore all the people on the gens, you never catch anyone in the open, and that would be tragic. Let's try not to do that. Whispers is off. I'm not even gonna find, I'm not even gonna search behind that gen or anything because I know Whispers is off, no one's nearby. Whispers is now on, so someone is nearby. Let's see what building we have here. It's a TL. Okay, maybe a bit too early. Does he have Springboard? Uh, you know, right now, he would probably be expecting a uh, bamboozle. Right, I'm just going to straight up hit him there. You should be making distance, dude. Oh, man. I'll use my chainsaw. Right, so notice that my Chenso has a few charges, right? I think we got him. Ah, that's so close. Very nice, I think we got him still. Notice that my Chenso has three charges, right? When you use your Chenso, the cannibal will start swinging. I think it's two seconds. He will start swinging forward and gain speed. He slows himself down a bit during the Chenso, watch out. But he'll start to go forward and sweep for two seconds. And then it's over. But if at any point you press the power button again, you can extend it by another two seconds. I'm gonna wait a bit. And then you use another charge. And you can chain these together. Uh, let me try to show you how. Right? That was just a single one, right? 
Uh, I guess a hooker and I'll just use a chainsaw and show you. Um, basically, uh, there's multiple ways to count it. Some people count it by swings. I personally just look at the HUD. Notice the red bar, okay? I'm gonna use my power. When it hits the number, boom. When it hits the number, boom. And now I'm at zero. And it's over. And if I had bumped this in into this properly, I would be... And now I need to get my charges back. So, all right. We should just drop from here. All right. Hello, Kate, number two. So, this is a TL wall. Yup, she can run through these windows quite well. It's gonna be a bit tricky. We're gonna try to do a little mind game here. It did not work at all. Could be quiet if I saw that right. Maybe she thinks I would bamboozle this. Ah. Uh... Ah, it would have been really nice if I could have body blocked that chat. It would have been really nice. Now he's, she's got another win. Oh, wait a minute. I'm gonna use this. One. I'm gonna wait a bit. I, I know that if I follow normally, I'm gonna get stunned. So I'm just gonna get... That's another pre-drop, me thinks. No. Get three. Well, not by her. If you're out of the unapolod, you might as well just break it with your... With your normal space bar. Let's go away. Um, but if your chances are already going, then just bump into it and you you break it. You open the chest just now. What do you go after? You come this way? Damn. I think she went right by me. Chat. That's really tragic, dude. Did this chest just open magically as a bug? No, you're here. Uh, this happens if you bump. Look, I'm very slow. Uh, I'm swinging, but yeah. If I, if you bump into something and a survivor is not already under your nose, you lose them. So try not to do that. But as you can see, if a survivor is silly enough to go into a corner, you can just body block them and instantly chainsaw them. That also works with Hellbilly. I'm sure you figure it out. Even with trappers sometimes, if they're in a bad corner, you can just put a trap at their feet before they escape out of it. Uh, yeah, also, yeah, that's true. You lose all charges. If you enter a tantrum, you need to wait the whole... Uh, what is it? 12 seconds? I think 4 seconds per charge. Alright, let's try this. One. Five. I think I might have been able to hit her with just one go, but this... You know, there's, there's no reason not to play it safe sometimes. Alright. Okay, so that was a great example of a survivor caught in the open. You can see, 5 seconds is awesome. Most survivors are gonna be smarter. They're gonna drop pallets like that smart Kate did. Um, we don't have a lot to the crash chance. I'm gonna kick it just in case no one finds this. Okay. Uh, and it's also a very convenient way to get rid of breakable walls. Um, in maps like Saloon, you can just... Vroom. Okay, I think this person's going for the rescue now. Are you just... Yeah, you're just going for the rescue. You have Springbirds. You do not. What is this? <laughs> Okay, in that critical situation, what you typically do... I used two charges. Got it. Ooh, I did bump. It doesn't matter. I mean, I got the down. Better to bump than not to get the down, but I could have done that cleaner, I think. Uh, you saw what I tried to do there with the, with the window, right? This window's not extremely, extremely safe, so I kind of mind gamed it a little bit, and he fell for it. Cool. And when you're in front of a pallet... Oh, I see. When you're in front of a pallet, what you want to do is wait a little bit ahead. They drop it, you break it. They don't drop it. If you have enough charges, you go around and catch them. Which is really good. Uh-huh. 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 Yeah, I get it. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Where the hell? Oh, I see. Damn, that's not good. Sorry, Claudette. You're just kind of vulnerable here. Is there a pallet here? <laughs> That was just bad. I'm just gonna end it. That was bad. I don't know what I was thinking. Okay. Remember, if they're playing around Windows well, no shame in just hitting them. And even just leaving them and going for someone else. You almost always want to bother someone out of a gen. That guy is literally going to die. Literally going to die. Oh, they saved him last second. I could use my chin so from a bit of a distance, but I think I'm, a, I'm slightly too far, dudes. If they both group up, I try to mow through both of them, by the way. Ah, oh, damn. Is that good enough? I just beat up, man.
Um, I feel like I missed a dialogue option or something in this dating simulator game. Oh, she just gave me a down, thanks. You're the best, Kate. Oh, it was her final hook too! Oh, wow. What a nice survivor. Alright, we know that this person of the Shen will be blind and uh, exhausted, so we're just gonna try to get them quick. Oh, this girl we haven't hooked at all. You see how I have three stacks of barbecue? I've hooked three different survivors. This is the one girl that I haven't hooked. In my opinion, with good judgment, because she seems to be the best. Um, let's try. She might be the best, but she still, <laughs> she still fell for that. Uh, oh, the vault was blocked? Oh, I didn't see it! Oh, she didn't give us anything, Chad. We literally just use our claustrophobia perk to not give her the down. Uh, not give her the vault. That's so funny. And here I thought survivors just had turned nice. <laughs> but yeah, sometimes as you can see, it's a battle of... I know that she's gonna vault, so I'm gonna go to the other side. But I know that she knows that I'm gonna go to the other side, so I go back. But I know that she knows that I'm gonna go back, so I go back to the original side. Bam. That's it. Like, well, it's... It's kind of silly, but it works. Also, use your chainsaw from afar. You can see that it's very effective. If survivors go into a locker... Uh, I made a video covering it uh, and explaining it, but I'll tell you what to do. There's a few situations, right? Uh, let's, say, let's say I'm chasing this Claudette and she goes into a locker. If I'm charging my chainsaw, I just stop charging it and just open it. If I'm about to end my swing, I just end it and grab her. I do this. End it, and then when she comes out, boop, you do this and you grab them. And if you cannot do that, then what you need to do is bump into it. And then, if they are very, very lucky and they've seen my video, they will still get caught. Because you have the brown add-on to reduce the tantrum, so it's going to throw them off. Uh, the other day I was playing with a, a survivor with 10,000 hours. And a Bubba bumped into the locker and he's like, no, don't worry guys, I got this. But he had this add-on, so he didn't time it well. It's really, really hard. And you can't possibly know that the killer has it, so... Yeah, if you have this add-on, they're 99.9 they're .9 dead unless they are super lucky. Because, because even if they know the timing, the timing is different with this add-on, so... Yeah, that's funny. Okay. Well, there's two of these beautiful people. Uh, I'm gonna kick this because Whispers is off. But honestly, with the last gen, Whispers off, just, just keep moving between gens and... Hold on a second. Wait. They're in the main building, come on. Or at least around it, let's go. But yeah, um... Yeah, bump into lockers, I guess. Did I just see someone, or...? Oh, yeah, they're trying to fight for this, maybe. No, it's still regressing. What are you doing, Wraith? Yeah, we're playing in order, my guys. Today we're gonna do half the killers, then we'll do the other half, and eventually we'll ditch it together. I don't even know what I'm doing. That's why Whispers is helpful, I guess. Had a survivor today that was thrown out by add-ons the first time, and then the second time did it perfectly. Okay, dude. Like, okay. Like, can you- if you play against a survivor that is genuinely, like, so good that he can read into which add-ons you have and then pull it off. Or he's lucky enough, you have to respect that. <laughs> Half a second is really not that much, but hey. <laughs> Whispers is on. This two hours should be here somewhere. Um, one more. I think they might be in the main building, dude. No matter where I go, it's still on. Oh. Okay, do you want to get it? You are a really good player. You want to come and get it? I can give it. Uh, right. Sometimes a pallet will be dropped and you will bump next to it. Try to try to uh, break it with your bump. So say this pallet is dropped and I bump. I will try to go uh, 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 and boom. You can break it during the tantrum. That's useful. Um, don't forget that you can hit multiple survivors. So if you see multiple... Let's say a survivor, survivors are coming out of the basement, right? And I'm coming here and I don't know where they are. I can try to like... Like, body block them and be like, uh, 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 and then one, then two, then, uh, three, or something. Um, what else? Um, 
There you go. Hey, gay, uh, girl. On the hatch, if you want to have it. I don't think I can get away with that add on here. Okay, see this situation. She didn't draw the pallet, she's gonna die. That's. Oh, that's such a. Oh, okay, you're so good. This situation, with add ons, it would be even more guaranteed. If they drop it, you wait a little bit, a little bit, not too much. If they drop it, you break it automatically. If they run, you do that. If you wait long, then you don't catch them. If you wait like the like the perfect middle ground, like I think we just did, then you have the chance to still catch them. Can head on count? Yeah, with head on you can counter uh, tantrum. You just wait until the last second, and when you come out with head on, they can't grab you. you just, they just get stunned. Hmm. Right, and thanks. Cute Kate. Uh, don't forget, if the survivors are ever toxic, you can always click this button and never see whatever they have to say ever again. Uh, do we forget anything important? Not sure if you mentioned, but maybe the fact that you keep getting movement speed. Okay, yes. So, Cannibal moves at normal movement speed. When you rev up your chainsaw, you don't want to do it gratuitously for no reason. When you rev up your chainsaw, you slow yourself down a little bit. Similar to Billy, not as much, I think. But then when the chainsaw begins, you, you accelerate. And eventually, you are much faster than normal, and definitely much faster than survivors. Uh, walking backwards? Yeah, sometimes, I think you saw me do it near the shack at one point in our second chase this match. You will see, sometimes if a survivor is trying to be a really smart cookie and go around a tree or go around a small structure, sometimes you rev your chainsaw, go the other way, and they you, they immediately face plant you. And that's a good idea, I suppose. And in more in some loops, you can do some crazy flicks, especially with add-ons, but that's, that's definitely more advanced. Hmm. Is swinging side to side hard to deal with? Hi, Bimes. I think survivors have a pretty normal and pretty average counterplay to this killer. It's just that, you know, you can really, really get good at it. <clears throat> Phantom duration based on charges used? That is true. Uh, wrong, Bubba slowed down more than Billy. Okay, it's true, but he has a shorter charge than Billy. Billy is two and a half and Bubba is two. So maybe that's why I'm saying that. <laughs> uh, Zeta, thank you for the Prime. But yeah, that's it. That's it for Bubba. I think we covered about everything that was important about him. Hopefully. Okay, we're going to continue with the tips for every killer and it's the term of the Nightmare, aka Freddy Krueger. Uh, Freddy is a mid-tier-ish killer and his strengths really spike up and down depending on the survivors that you go against. His main power that never changes is the ability to teleport to unfinished generators. That's the most important part of his kit. You press the control ability, whatever, and you teleport and then appear on a gen that you pick in the distance. Um, survivors also passively fall asleep. And the more survivors that are asleep, the faster you recharge your ability to teleport. You can also cancel it and get it back shortly after. Once survivors are fully asleep, they also become um, afflicted by your secondary ability. And your secondary ability can be one of two. They can be the blood snares, or Dream Snares, which is a little blood puddle that you put in the ground and it slows down survivors. Or, if you use one of three add-ons, the Dream Pallets. The Dream Pallets are pallets that you place in areas that should have pallets in the map. And if survivors are asleep, they see these pallets. And if they're not, they don't until they fall asleep. The pallets are just a visual trickery tomfoolery. If they try to drop them, they just evaporate. So basically, it's a way to trick survivors. In my opinion, the pallets are much worse than the snares at a higher level, but when you start playing Freddy, you can use them both and even start with the pallets. They are pretty fun and they are definitely, they're definitely funny. Um, even though I recommend that you stay away from the pallets later on. There's also an add-on called the Kid's Drawing, which gives you extra blood points but makes your power weaker. I also recommend you stay away from that. If you don't know what to go for, you can never go wrong with uh, add-ons to teleport faster or add-ons to give some small debuffs to survivors. You can never you can never go wrong with any of these. So I guess I'll, I'll use some of these for now. Um, as for perks, perks on Freddy are extremely important. They are one of the two most important things on him. Uh, when Freddy uh, downs survivors, 
he can teleport to gems and thus he can use many strong sub, uh, killer perks to regress gems and keep, keep them uh, from being repaired, which is super, super huge. Uh, the problem is that you need some of these perks to really shine with Freddy. And sometimes survivors are really hard to catch with your normal powers. And if you don't get your first down quickly, it can be hard to really slow down the gems. Uh, luckily, we have some decent perks. We have Sloppy Butcher to slow down healing, uh, Jolt to at least control the gems around us. Maybe we can then teleport to the far away ones. Bitter Murmur to see everyone at the end of the game. And Blood Warden to maybe make a play at the end of the game. It's a bit predictable on him, but pretty funny perk uh, nonetheless. So yeah, we're going to learn how to use the snares uh, this time around. And we're going to queue up for a game and see if we are lucky enough to have a, a good match that we have a lot of chances to show all of his perks with. Right, so as we head into our game, uh, someone in the chat asked a really interesting question. Can you teleport to a gem that is blocked by the entity or is already completed? And the answer is no. At the start of the game, survivors start awake and fall asleep passively. They also fall asleep if you hit them. So hit them as much as you can. Uh, and near the end of the game, all generators are blocked and you cannot teleport anywhere. So at the start, Freddy is a little bit weak. And near the end, Freddy can be a little bit weak as well. It's in the middle game when Freddy truly shines a little bit. So our first idea is to look at the huts. You're going to see clocks begin to... Actually, they, they see the clocks themselves, you don't see them. But you'll see them fall asleep uh, one by one soon enough. And we're going to place some snares and loops as we go around. I see someone going up. Uh, you can only place a, a maximum amount of snares, so don't spam them or anything. But if you go by the middle of the map, it doesn't hurt to place one or two if you know what you're doing. And we'll explain how to do that. My snares, unfortunately, do nothing for these survivors right now, because the survivors are awake. But the moment that one minute elapses, or I hit them, they'll begin to glow blue. And you'll see in the HUD that they have this little mist. And that's how you know that they're asleep. And once they're asleep, you can begin to use your power uh, a lot more effectively. I'm gonna put... Uh, I'm gonna pretend I didn't see that. Alright, so search, uh, sorry, Jolt, my red perk, went off, which means that a gen near me is progress. Let's see which one that could be. Uh, it's very common for Freddy to run perks, like, uh, I'm gonna fake teleporting here, see if they run into me. To run perks, yeah, they run, they did run into me, look. Uh, it's very common for perks to have perks like Barbecue, Thrilling Tremors, uh, Tinkerer, all of these perks are great on him. Because they let you know when to teleport and when to take advantage of your teleport and where to go. Um, unfortunately, a gen was on the distance and we didn't stop it, but that's okay. When you teleport to a gen, you see a little silhouette of you coming out of it. Survivors can see it too, so they'll react to it and try to get away from it. You can use it in chase a little bit like this. That was kind of nice of the cloud. They don't fall for this very often. But it's good for you to try. It's good for you to try. If you cancel it and don't use it, as you can see, you get your power back very quickly. If you use it completely, then you'll see that it takes me a good minute to get it back. But the more people that are asleep, the quicker I get it back. Hello, survivors. Where are you all? Uh-huh. It's also not a terrible idea to put snares and choke points near the middle of the map, where if survivors go by, they'll scream and just give you random information. Um, and then we'll explain how to use them in loops. Again, only if they're asleep. If they're awake... Uh, watch out, it doesn't work. Unless you're about to put them to sleep. Don't bother. Hi, Claudette. Hope you don't mind. I could teleport to a gen now to try to catch up. Uh, if not, I, I can just fake it. It doesn't slow me down to do this, so I can just fake it. Maybe spook someone up. Oh, that's really good. Will I actually catch her thanks to that slowdown? I think I will, actually. Yep, I think I will. Oh, she used that card there. Nice. I still catch her. Good. Okay, search uh, slash jolt work again. I'm gonna break this right now. And I could put a snare right here, so if anyone ever comes here, they have to deal with it. You wanna make sure- you only have a few snares, so you can't spam them too much, or else the previous ones will begin to disappear. But you wanna make sure that you at least place one or two. You mostly use them in chase. Okay? And when I have a minute, I'll explain the general uh, idea behind placing them. I think they heal under the hook. They certainly- now they're waking each other up. Survivors that are awake can wake each other up, but then it gets slower and slower, so they don't do that very much. They typically go to a clock that spawns around the map, and that allows them to wake themselves up. If you hit them while they glow gold in the HUD, you don't put them to sleep immediately. Uh, you might see one of them turn gold if they ever touch a clock. That's, you know, you don't need to worry super, uh, super much about that. That's 
their game. Okay, I see with Bitter Murmur that someone's coming. I'm gonna teleport to that gen. Immediately lock onto the hook, so I know where I am. When you teleport, you always appear from the same direction. It never changes mid-game, but it's very random. You don't always know which side it is, unless you really uh, understand how the gens are programmed, I guess. And it's not always the same even from time to time. So I recommend highly that you, the moment you appear from a teleport, you try to look for something that gives you a, a point of reference. Right? So for me, my point of reference was the yellow hook. So I immediately look at the hook to know exactly where I was. Uh, for you, it might be something else depending on where you're teleporting. And if you've already teleported to that place before, then you already know. You maybe don't even need a point of reference. Uh, okay. It's very important to just randomly test people and just randomly pretend to teleport. If you're not doing anything with your power. Just to just to get people off gen, sometimes they miss a skill check. Uh, uh, that's a good reminder. If survivors miss a skill check, they wake up from the dream world, by the way. But it's typically not a horrible thing, because that means they're wasting time and they lose progress on the gen or the heal or whatever. So, that's not a horrible thing. Whoa, wow, I just got played super hard here. Okay. Um... Well, I want to show you the general gist of how to play snares. Uh, how to place pallets is super simple. Just spam them near the middle of the map. Uh, it's particularly effective to use the pallets once you've already gotten rid of a few of them. That way survivors don't know which ones are true, which ones are not. Come on, press your E. Huh? Okay. Uh, I hope you're not dead. Uh, but with snares, it's a little bit complicated. You, you want to think about it a bit more. Uh, Ruin Surveillance is amazing on Freddy. You can teleport to a gen, and if they let go, you immediately see the change of color. So yeah, Ruin Surveillance will be really good. Now, as we learned today in patch notes, Ruin is gonna get nerfed, but it will still be decent. Hello, ladies. What's up? Floppy Boots, you're making heals a little bit slower. Very nice. Maybe I'll do a quick hit on you, because you're going for the unhook. Mm, life, maybe? Ooh, strong life. If she was asleep, she would have been... Affected, but don't forget every time you hook a survivor they automatically wake up See see that Claudette right off the hook she's freshly unhooked and she's awake uh, The moment you hook her so yeah keep that in mind uh -huh. I'm gonna pretend to teleport there maybe Ah, actually teleport for real Hey, there you go. What's up Claudette that tea bagged me a second ago. You want to come and take a look? The BM? I think she's just trying to get um, uh, my attention over her teammates, because her teammates are in a bad spot. But it's okay, I'm, I have lots of attention, I can give it all. Right, so we're in a loop right now. She did the right thing to do against Freddy, she pre-dropped. I'm gonna put it in the middle part of the loop, and now she has to take a 50-50. Ooh, powerful. Notice that she just straight up leaves the loop, because if she goes the other way, the snare probably will slow her down enough for me to get the hit. So that was really smart from that Claudette, and we can learn from that. I see another Claudette here, though. That snare will stay there, for it, by the way. Very important to remember if the person that you're chasing is blue or not. If they are not blue, that means they're awake and maybe you cannot use their powers. And they will not see... They will not... See? These, these are the choke point slowdowns. It doesn't matter. She's gonna drop this. I'm just gonna go around. Ooh, that's pretty good. I'm gonna place a snare on the edge... On the furthest edge from the hook. From the pallet, sorry. And see what I can do. A bit risky, this one. All right. Either she takes the 50-50 with the pallet, or she goes the other way and slows herself down and I catch her. So I guess that was her... That was her idea. Sometimes, you know, survivors will just not play into that game at all. They'll just run to the next loop, like that other Claudette, or they'll do something else that's smarter than that. But hey, I mean, she delayed me long enough, I guess. Um, I'm gonna pretend to teleport to one gen, and then check on the other. Yeah, yeah, we did the right thing. I could have maybe even teleported here. Ooh, unlucky. Oh, this is Bitter Murmur, will let us see us. They're probably gonna pre drop that pallet and take no chances whatsoever. Well, they should have done that, maybe. And I don't know about the other chance, honestly. I think they could be worked on right now. I'm gonna teleport to one of them. Uh, this one's quiet. I'll put a snare there. You can sometimes use snares as little decoys. But don't forget, awake survivors will not trigger them, so... Oh yeah, this is perfect. If we kill this Claudette, we're in a really good spot. Oh... Wait. Can I even go through that gap? I'm scared, dude. <laughs> can I... Dude, can I even go through that? Oh... Uh... Alright. Thanks for the hits, I guess. 
Uh, unfortunately, there's not a lot of gems for me to teleport to, but I can try to do this. Who knows? Maybe she comes from here. Oh. Uh, one very important thing that is very uh, hard to understand until you play Survivor. When a Survivor is asleep, they don't actually hear your terror radius. Instead, they have a 32 meter uh, lullaby that goes na 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 na. It's like a little song, but they don't actually hear a heartbeat. And it's not directional. So this girl, even though she might guess that I'm near, she doesn't know exactly where I am, and if she doesn't use her brain, I might catch her off guard, which is kind of what happened. Um, anyway, that gen has been unattended for a while. Let's go and check it. The other two are fine. They're not popping anytime soon. Oh, this one, though. That's good progress. Anyone near? Okay, let's kick it. Hi, Mr. Odds. Ah, hi. Yeah, okay. Don't worry. We'll talk more about that. We'll talk more about that. Uh-huh. Uh, now, chat, uh, what, what are some things I'm forgetting about Freddy? Hmm. So I feel like uh, I might be forgetting some. Oh, is this a hit? I think close. Nope. Good life, too. Nicely done. That's a great rescue. All right, let's hit the Claudette. And if we keep her close to... Oh. There you go. That's the snare we placed such a long time ago. That's going to help a lot. When a survivor hits it, they get slowed down by 15%. That's no joke. And you don't get slowed down at all if you're not placing them. If you place them, though, you do get slowed down a bit, so don't constantly spam them. Be smart about it. Uh, let's teleport to that, maybe? Oh, she was dead? I didn't remember that. Uh, I'm gonna cancel that. Oh, well, I shouldn't. They finished that gen instead, but Bitter Murmur shows me the auto of everyone. And Sloppy Butcher is very slow, so... But... Damn, she must have by the bullet because she was very quiet. I'm gonna hook her right here and I know where the other girl is. So I go for it. I cannot teleport to anything now because the gems are all done. So yeah, your endgame as a Freddy, if you're not already winning, can be a bit rough. But 20 seconds, will that be enough for her to open that? Yeah, very possible. Uh, very well deserved. I could have just left the girl on the ground, I guess. With blood water, then it might have been the play. Uh, come on, come on, come on. Oh! Oh, 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 that's not touched. I think they might be going for the rescue then. Interesting. Definitely the other gate. We saw her with Bitter Murmur. We know for a fact that the other gate, she would have never reached that. Right? Let's listen in and keep an eye. Other gate at zero as well. Ooh, 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 this changes things. All right, keep an eye. If you have the perk Remember Me from Freddy, one of his teachables, you can slow down gates too. Oh yeah, that's a very niche thing, but yeah. What? Never in my wildest dreams I expected that to happen. That is a major blunder. You just randomly walk through one of these. There she is. Uh, okay. Well, I can... If I'm gonna be a bit of an ass, I can just follow her and just see what happens. Oh, well. Your teammate died. That's what happened. No! I hate survivors the body block, dude. They are the worst. Especially the ones that are on the hook. I'm so dumb. She's gonna get the hatch 500% now. 100% she's gonna beat me, chat! Oh, why can't I teleport to lockers? It's so unfair! Comp body block? That's so funny. I'm gonna place this here and see what I can do. I, I just wanna... If she, if, if we're gonna drop Shag, I don't want her to immediately... Now she has to go... Yeah, 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 that's better. Okay. I got you, buddy. I got you, buddy. You don't want to spam snares like that all the time unless you really, really need it down. Well, I did go. I did get her, actually. Oh, uh, GG. Okay. So, as a general rule of how to trap loops, the loops typically have a longer and a shorter side, right? The shorter side is very unsafe because if you ever stay on the shorter side, you can do a little mind game and catch them. The longer side is the good one, because that's where they run you before they drop the pallet. You're gonna put your snare at the furthest tip of the side. That way, when you chase them this way, they'll step on it. You can also put it a little bit closer to one side, push them from one side, let them step on it, and then immediately do a 180. And it's a very similar concept as the killer clown, which we'll cover in a minute. Uh, you do all of that, and your snares are actually fairly decent. And they also are pretty useful when you have someone in basement, you put one snare at the top, they go rescue, you hit them at the basement, they go up, ah, oh, now they're asleep because you hit them, so they get slowed down. You can use all of those things, and it's pretty useful. 
Uh, <laughs> hi, Crunch. Yeah, I'll, I'll do that later. You still, um, do you still think people... Uh, Chad, I'm, not, I'm, 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 only go I'm only gonna discuss Freddy things right now. Do you think there's anything I forgot about it? Uh, Freddy's perks are not super good right now. Uh, Fire Up is a very, very minor buff that is hardly noticeable. Don't recommend it a lot. Uh, Remember Me is okay, but No Way Out is a much better perk. It's okay if you're starting out. Bull Warden is not super strong, but occasionally it is fun and can turn a game around. So that one's the most fun. Yo. Uh, um, I do, uh, as, as I explained earlier, I think the snares should be the, uh, are the most skillful thing. Good survivors can die to snares. Good survivors, they are in comms, they can see pallets uh, that are that don't make sense, you know. They, they they will play around your pallets a lot better. So, yeah. I, I recommend that you play them both for the fun uh, f uh, factor of it, but you ultimately practice snares a bit more. Oh. Alright, uh, let's move on to the next one. Right, and we have reached the pig. A really fun killer that has a lot of... Uh, of different parts through their power. They are not the strongest in chase, but they they do mix a bit of stealth, a bit of slowdown, a bit of chase potential, and they're part of the Saw series, so if any of that tickles your fancy, you'll probably enjoy them quite a bit. They've also recently had a change to their RNG, which makes them a bit more consistent. I'm a big fan of that. So, uh, the general gist of the pig is that on top of being a normal killer, normal Terror radius, normal movement speed, so, you know, you can transition into this character and out of this character very easily. Um, she has two powers, or three powers, in a way. Uh, the first one allows her to crouch. When you crouch, you move slower than survivors, which is bad, but you slowly, over the course of a few seconds, remove your terror radius and become undetectable, which means that you're not seen by perks or, or you heard by the terror radius, which is nice. This is very powerful if you have perks to tell you where to go so that you can maybe sneak up to a survivor and even grab them out of a gen, which you can occasionally do with pig, which is awesome. When you are in crouch mode, you can just stand up to be a normal killer again, or you can charge your attack to do a lunge. This lunge is not considered a basic attack, so it doesn't apply things like sloppy butcher or know it, it's its own thing. Um, body will still injure and even down survivors. And it has a bit of a speed boost to it, so you can use it in loops to get hits in places that would otherwise be very difficult. Survivors typically have to drop the pallet early or leave the loop to avoid some of these hits, which is pretty nice. Uh, but you need to know when to use it because it's not that easy to pull off. Uh, and then, once a survivor is downed, you also have the ability to press the power button next to their uh, down body, and you will place a reverse bird trap, which is a contraption that goes on their head, and they need to remove it. If they don't remove it and they do incomplete and they complete a generator, then it turns on. And if it turns on, they can't escape the game with it unless they find uh, the hatch. Or if they try, it will explode. And it also has a timer that goes down two and a half minutes. And if it goes down completely, it will it will spring open and kill them. So in practice, this is not going to kill most of your survivors, only a few careless ones. Uh, but in but in reality, this is fine. As long as it slows them down a little bit, this is already very good. You have four of these, and you can make them a bit meaner and have debuffs and so on, and change all of this with add-ons. Uh, her own perks are pretty cute, and we're going to be using some of them. We're going to be using Surveillance to know when a gen is regressing. When we use a, a normal attack and hit someone, Jolt and Surveillance go really well together. We'll know when a gen is regressing, and it will turn yellow if someone touches it. And then we'll have Sloppy Butcher to slow on the heels. Never bad and make your choice to maybe keep one person on the edge of their seat so that they have to worry a little bit about maybe going down uh, and they don't have time to heal and all of this good stuff that we hope to accomplish. Unfortunately, we don't have a lot of perks on this slowdown to know where survivors are. We don't have barbecue, we don't have discordance, we don't have all of these cute perks. So I'm not going to be crouching a lot uh, and, and just going random places, that's a bad idea. But if I did, I would probably crouch more. As for add-ons, you cannot go wrong with the add-ons that just buff her searching uh, searching speed, like these, if you don't know what to do. Um, it's also never a bad idea, I suppose, to use combat straps and medical file. This just makes you crouch and move a little bit faster and crouch and uncrouch a little bit quicker. Uh, the shadow syringe is also pretty nice. It makes you miss, if you miss your attack, you have a shorter cooldown, very beginner friendly. And the workshop grease includes that and, oh, sorry, not the workshop grease. Um, what's it called, chat? Um, is it the workshop grease? 
Yes, uh, the worst increase includes that and a charge speed increase, which is kind of nice. So we could use this as well. I'm going to stick to the brown add-ons for now. Get some blood point offerings. Blech. And off we go. Let's find again. And thank you, Mastier. Right, so an important thing about the pig to think about is that you want to use all or most of your traps before the game is over. At the end of the game, when all of the generators are done, if you place a trap on someone, because they'll never activate it, because there's no gens left to do, that trap does nothing. So we want to place all of our traps as soon as possible, and maybe, maybe you can, you know, strategically save one for the end game, or put it on someone near the end game, and know they can't escape until they take it off. So it's a good idea to just get into a chase and catch someone as soon as possible. Again, if you have some perks or some good idea of... That was risky. If you have a good idea of where survivors are, you can try to sneak up to them by pressing left control and crouching. This Felix did me a huge favor by just giving me a free hit, so we're gonna take him out on his very generous offer. That's a dead heart. That's gonna fail, I think. But So, right off the this guy is almost on a pallet, right? I'm gonna try to press him too and drag him out of it. Whoop. Because there's vacuum, and then I'm going to step back a bit and drag him out a bit, Whoa. And maybe that could have saved me from a pallet save. So when you put down the trap, you vacuum them towards you, and you can then step down a plane a little, little bit, and vacuum them even more out of a pallet. Sometimes it can help you. Okay, so those white boxes that you see, don't freak out. You don't need to worry about them. They are just the things that they need to search to get out. They have four, they have five of them, and they're guaranteed to do it on the fourth search, but sometimes they can be first, second, third, fourth. All right. What? I guess it's one of these gens is just gonna pop right now. Yeah, I guess. Uh, make your choice, which is her own perk. It's gonna make whoever rescues that boy be insadonable. So that's cute. Oh. Well, I made a mistake. Sorry, that was really not good. What, what do you try to do? Okay, notice that the timer is now red, which is um, which means that it's working for... Which means that it's that gen's regressing now. You see? Okay, oh, so much to explain. Uh, the timer that is red means that it's ticking. And that means that that guy needs to be careful and get rid of it ASAP. If it's not red, it means it's either paused or not active yet. So Fox, this person that we just hooked, it's not active yet. When they do a gen, it will be. It also pauses if they're on the ground, if they're being chased, or if they're on a hook. For obvious reasons. Because otherwise, you would just chase a guy and kill him like that. So yeah, try not to chase people with traps on them unless you really think it's a good idea. Because those people, that guy's not doing gems right now. That guy's searching. So if I don't chase him, I might have one or two people doing nothing. And that's the best part about the pig. In a way. Alright. Uh-oh. I uh, also noticed that the generator in the main building, I hit it with search as uh, jolt. And it's regressing, so it turns up white because of the perk surveillance. If they ever touch it, it will turn yellow. They're searching here. That's a bad idea. Anytime you shouldn't chase people with a trap on their head, but if they do stupid things like this, you can definitely, definitely punish them. Just try not to be too mean, you know? All right, we're gonna do the same trick now. Yoink, bring them back, a little bit back, yoink. And even if there was a survivor to drop a pallet here, they wouldn't be able to. And I guess, I mean, I'm gonna pick you up. Hope you don't mind. Oh, hello. Well, they didn't mind chat. Okay. Oh, that was... I got outplayed hard there. <laughs> well done, well done. Well, we got rid of a pallet, and she has to come back to that box, because she didn't search it, so... Alright. Hey, hello! <laughs> okay, bro. Uh, press E, I guess. Uh, I'm very sorry. I really didn't want to tunnel these two guys off home, but I guess I am. Hmm. Hello. Yeah, just, just do the opposite of what I'm doing. <laughs> don't chase people with traps on their head. But also, you know, if they do stupid things, you don't you don't need to respect them. Uh, other than that, uh, pig is pretty basic. Uh, you will understand uh, the logic of the searches, and you'll have a better intuition and an idea of what to do at any given time uh, as you play her more and more, and as you play killer in general more and more. And what we need to explain now a bit more maybe is the crouching. Uh, part. This girl's injured. Oh, you don't get away from that. Okay. Hello. Can I get a free pallet out of you? Oh, yeah. Big one, too. 
Okay. Alright. I'm gonna place my last trap. If you place your last traps of four gems, you're doing amazing. Uh, but do remember that after that, you'll have... Uh, after the dust is settled, you'll have four hours doing gems. Once your power is done. But ideally, you've slowed them down a lot by then, or maybe one or two of them are die, are dead or about to die. So that's good. If you are ever in doubt and you have multiple people with traps and you don't know where to find them, never a bad idea to just patrol between your white boxes. If you think they're just ignoring gems, that's, you know, you shouldn't feel terrible for doing that. I think you're waiting behind this. Okay, this girl is uh, the target of make your choice. So she wants to be very careful because she could have been insta down right now. She wasn't careful. That's fair. Did he do nurse? Yeah, we've been doing them in order, my guys. Okay. I kind of want to show you an example on this pallet, but uh, uh, they're, they're smart. They're just running through. All right, this girl we haven't hooked at all yet, and they're doing great. Uh, we can just leave them and go for one of the people we've harassed a bit more. Uh, oh, that gen is yellow. Someone's on it. Um, pretend to chase her a little bit. Okay. Hey, that pretending actually kind of worked. And I also pretended not to go for the window there, and that's a hit on this guy for sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And maybe if he stays on this pallet, I can show you how her power works. Right, so he didn't drop the pallet, right? I'm now going to crouch, but then to go one way. Oh! Ah, there you go. So, normally, when you're just trying to sneak up to people on gems, the better, the better idea is to get really close to them, uncrouch quietly, and try to grab them. If they run away, you just hit them, and you're fine. And if they're very, very oblivious, you get the grab. Awesome. Uh, but when you're actually in chase, you can use this as a... Ooh, that's the sound that it plays when it's the wrong box. So this is one of the mm, boys or girls. And that box wasn't theirs. You cannot just camp one box to uh, to kill them. Because they can search multiple. And get rid of them through multiple. Uh, okay, dudes. Oh, they finished that gen. Maybe I have time to crouch now and catch them off guard. All right, your terrorist goes away slowly. Don't forget. Don't freak out. I think they're waiting around there and they should see me. Oh, they're right here. Hey, what's up? Okay, we definitely got the drop on this guy. I'm gonna try to block this ball. Oh, well, he dead hard. Well done. Wait, wait, yo, 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 you. You're dead on hook if I got you. Ah! Right, so make your choice lasts one minute and decisive strike lasts one minute. So I could just wait uh, 30 seconds here. Get rid of some stuff. Uh, once the pallet is dropped, as you can see, my power means nothing. If I do this, like, the loop is way too big. So don't do that. The The power works when the pallet is not dropped. Or if the pallet is one of those pallets that spawns against the wall. And then, yeah, it's kind of powerful. Wait, I'm just gonna harass him out. Okay, good enough. That guy's still on the ground. Make your choices about to end. Five, four, three, two... One... But, oh, you should be dead, I think. Oh, you shouldn't do that. I have, I have sloppy but you're too slow down healing. You really shouldn't give the hits for free. Break it? Yeah, you need to break those pallets. I'm only trying to show you what happened. I'm gonna break it. Poor Steve? Yeah, poor Steve. He's been searching for a long time. Uh, do you notice that he's... There's like a little blinking uh, light behind his head? If the, if the light is white... They are half- they are in the first half. If the light is yellow, like it is right now, or orange... You can't see it. It means that they are between 50 and 25. And if it's red, it means that it's under 25% of the total. So you can know how close someone is to dying. Let's say that I find that Steve in the next two seconds, and that he's red. I'm gonna be like, hmm, you're in trouble, aren't you? So what I would do is probably try to hook him away from all of the boxes and try to be a bit of an asshole, because then he might just die to the thing. But he didn't. He got rid of it, so we're gonna say congratulations, Steve, and now we kill him anyway. Uh-huh. I'm gonna try to crouch just to see if I can catch him off guard. This is not something you should do a lot, but... Hey, sometimes it works. Especially if you have certain add-ons and perks that let you show the uh, that shows you the auto survivors. Sometimes crouching a little bit like that is just a decent idea. Alright, she should have a strong window here, but we broke some of the walls, right? So, once I come through here, she shouldn't be too... Okay, this pallet she needs to absolutely drop right away. 
If she doesn't drop it, she's dead. So she dropped it. I'm gonna chase this guy because he's going for the rescue. You understand why she has to drop it, right? If she doesn't drop it, I go to the pallet. Um, I just use crouch. I crouch like this. And then I use my power. And no matter where she goes, I'm gonna be able to react to it. And sometimes survivors can use that hard through your attack. Sometimes they can run away, but you know. On a very small loop like that where you see them perfectly, it's super deadly. So knowing that, the survivors will pre-drop pallets. And you need to play accordingly, I suppose. You're making pink look like an S tier. This is a small map. They give me an early down and they messed up a little bit. So we were very, very lucky. And our perks, limited as they are, they actually were pretty helpful. So not every game is going to be like this. You're going to struggle to get your first down. They'll do three gems. You'll put out one trap. They'll do five gems. You won't even put out another. Uh, be prepared to have horrible games with this killer. Because even though her RNG has been semi-fixed and it's a little bit better, it's still a bit of RNG. Sometimes people get off their first search. Uh, at the worst possible time. I could swear I heard the step. Yeah, there you are. Well, that might have been a complete coincidence, by the way. I'm gonna be accused of cheating. <laughs> uh. Nicely done. There you go. Are you slower in crouch? Yes, you are even slower than survivors. Normal peak is 115, running survivor is 100, crouching peak is 92%, I think. So you crouch at loops to catch survivors, or if you have a very, very solid idea of where they're gonna be to catch them off guard. Because otherwise, I crouch for two minutes, I go to a corner, and because they have spine chill, at least right now, they know I'm coming, so they run away. So, yeah, no. Horrible idea to just crouch around the entire map. I did that my first time slowing pig. Did not go well. So, yeah, not, not a great idea. Not a great idea. Some perks and some add-ons do help in facilitating that, however. When the pig uses her power, she moves very fast. And sometimes you can do little little techs where you can fly over little holes and, and do little things. And that's really fun. And it's what the only thing, in my opinion, that makes the pig really exciting to play sometimes. Um, but, yeah. Uh, she's a bit of a, a bit of everything, a bit of stealth, a bit of slowdown. Uh, if you're into that, I think you'll enjoy the pick. And she doesn't need a lot of perks to do well. As you can see, her traps slow down the game quite a bit and can be a bit of a threat. So yeah, uh, play her if this seems like something exciting. Have you mentioned pick? Nah, I'm not going to mention specific perks too much. You'll have a video separately with the best builds and best practices uh, for that. Not to blow this video with more. Any tips on pig adept? The same for that. We'll have an adept video coming very, very soon uh, for people that are struggling with adepts. Uh, let's move on to the next one. <sighs> okay, we've arrived to the clown. Uh, one of the most beautiful, strikingly beautiful killers. So obviously you want to play him just for his looks, but there's more to him than that. Uh, he's a normal killer, normal movement speed, normal terror radius, normal lunge, normal recovery. Everything is normal. So it's a really good killer to start with. Uh, also has good perks, so that that's, that's a plus and a good killer to transition to and from when you're learning the game. So that's awesome. On top of that, he has bottles that he can toss, and they have basically opposite effects. He has purple bottles that if survivors walk into, they go, <coughs> they cough, they they slow themselves down, and if you hit them directly, it interrupts them doing actions. And I am stupid and forgot to change the text. Thank you, chat. <laughs> And also, he has yellow bottles that he can toss, and anyone that goes into that bottle speeds up. So, purple slow, yellow speed up. But there's a catch. If the survivors go into the yellow bottles, they'll be cured from the purples, and they'll also speed up. So, ideally, you want to use the purples, and then use the yellow bottles a bit more sparingly when it makes sense to do so. And I'll try to teach you how to do that. <laughs> uh, Mr. Puddles? Uh, yeah, okay, I can do that. I can do Mr. Puddles. Uh, his perks are great. Uh, Bamboozle blocks windows that you vault and survivors cannot use them for 16 seconds. It's not the best clown perk, but it's a good perk uh, in general and very good on some killers, especially the Chenso killers. Uh, so, uh, we're going to use Jolt and Whisper so that we know more or less where to go. If I had Tinkerer from the Hailbilly, I would run it so I could know where to use Pop Goes the Weasel, which is a perk that reduces the progress on, on generators. So that would be awesome. But we don't have that, so we're going to just run Whispers to make more or less sense of where survivors are. Add-ons. Um, none of these add-ons are tremendously OP or anything like that for the most part. Uh, I would say stay away from the add-on that changes the degree 
of the throw. This one's just weird. Uh, stay away from the meme add-ons that do nothing. Uh, and you cannot go wrong with the speed reload or the extra bottle add-ons. I mean, they might give you the bad, uh, the bad habit of throwing too many bottles without thinking. Um, so for me, I'm going to stay away from that. I'm just going to go for slightly faster uh, reload, which is the cork. Uh, maybe slightly faster cooldown, which is not a huge deal or anything. Actually, nah, we're going to go for the party bottles. Hey, this one's make a funny noise. And some uh, cakes. And off we go. Let's find a match. Uh, for the most part, the clown is a very basic killer. Uh, if you use his power really, really, really well, he can actually get rid of pallets extremely fast. And he is very, very good at shutting down loops, especially if survivors underestimate you. For that reason, because he's kind of consistent at doing this, he's definitely not the worst, but he's also not the strongest killer ever. So, let's see how this match goes for us. Right, so one of you guys was curious and asked, how do you aim the bottles? It's very simple. If you just tap the attack button, uh, you'll just throw a bottle whoop, like this. If you hold it, then you can actually aim it and then decide a bit better how you throw it. If you then attack while you hold it, Without releasing, you will cancel it, so you can cancel a bottle throw. Exactly the same as Huntress, uh, but there's a catch. Ex also exactly the same as Huntress. If you hold the bottle for longer, the clown tenses his muscles and throws it further. And the arc is a bit different. So if you want to throw something simple over a, a little obstacle, just do a little tap. If you want to throw it as far as possible, then you're going to hold it as much as you can. Very similar principle as Huntress. What?! Okay, this is a spicy group of survivors. Now, you might be tempted to just throw yellow bottles to speed yourself up everywhere. And in my opinion, that's a bad idea. The yellow bottles give you a 10% speed boost. The purples give a minus 15 slowdown. But this is generally not... It's not worth it to get around the map, okay? The yellow bottles are... The 10% is really good when it comes to loops. Now, if you know for a fact that you're going to reload and you still have a bottle, you can press left control, switch to yellow, throw it ahead of you, and then while you reload with left control, you get it, and then you come out a bit faster. You can do this every single time you reload. If you reload with zero, then you cannot. But if you have, let's say I have, let's say I have one bottle, right? And I need to reload, and I just hook this girl. Just throw it ahead of you. It activates after a second, the yellow ones. And then bam, and now you're a bit faster. So that's nice. Now I'm gonna switch back to the purple. You should always have purple by default. I'm gonna hold the bottle. And as you can see, it blinks. When it blinks, it means it's fully powered up. Like now. You don't need to power it up or anything. Okay, here I'm gonna show you the principle of playing clown. You get to the pallet, you aim the bottle at the furthest point, and then you go this way. You can use, you can also, you know, spice it up by going the other way. Very good. Very good. <sighs> You can also throw it just to catch up before they make it to a power like that. Um, okay. Well, I think these people are just like gen rushing with uh, resilience. Maybe. She might have the side set. Yep, she does. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, now I'm not going to bother to reload just yet. And while a survivor is under the influence of the bottles, they are significantly slower and they do not gain enough speed to actually drop... Hold up. I'm gonna hit the window frame. Oh, they were very smart. They ran away. All right. Right now, I would probably be... Yeah, I'm gonna lock her in a corner and I'm just gonna reload and I'm gonna place one right there and I'm gonna chase this way. And she's gonna take the window. And uh, now I got her. And if she didn't take the window, she will go down because she would have to go through there. Hello, person. Now, when a survivor is slowed down with the bottles, they cannot fastball windows, which is really nice. But they can always fastball pallets because pallets are special, I guess. So, pallets, it's pretty strong for survivors to pre drop them. But around TL walls like this, the bottles are really strong and you're going to catch up to them really, really quickly. What a strange group of survivors, huh? You can also drop a, sh a yellow bottle on a survivor on the ground to give you speed boost after you pick up. But these are very niche uses of the bottle. Don't, don't bother doing all of this, in my opinion. Who <laughs> rescued you, my guy? Uh, 
Okay. Oh, hold up. I'm gonna throw one. Okay, they didn't go for it. I'm gonna throw it right there and then come back. And if she runs back, she cannot go towards the window. She'll need to give me the pallet. Does she give me the pallet? Where the hell is she? I can't follow blood, so I'm a bit lost. Okay, then. Strange. But I can't slug this girl for too long because they'll pick themselves up. All right. Well, I've never seen anything like this, my guys. Only once in my life I've seen four. Oh, that is a crazy idea, my dude. This girl's dead on court. Oh, well. Very strange indeed. <laughs> and if we had two, we could also ball windows to block them. I'll show you what that looks like with bamboozle. Like this. And the windows block. Not at all. And we could also kick gems to slow them down with um, Pop Goes a Weasel. Alright. Uh, if a survivor is doing something that is really critical in front of you, like doing a totem or unhooking, you can also try to aim down a little bit with a fully charged bottle to hit them directly. Well, I hit a bird. And if you do that, it will interrupt them. So, uh, for some actions, interrupting is kind of it's kind of a big deal. Looks like we have a really nice street in around here. Uh, not really, actually. The far one is too far. Uh, but yeah, I haven't really shown you like the general idea of using yellow bottles at loops yet. Which is kind of bad. I'm gonna throw this just to know if they're there. Yeah, they are. I'll throw another one. Uh, this also impedes their vision a lot. I'm gonna pretend to be bad. Well, that almost worked, chat. That almost worked. Oh, okay. I'm gonna throw off her feet. And if she use Dead Heart, you don't see the animation, but they can still use it. But as you can see, it's not quite as effective if they slow down too much. All right, good stuff. Uh, let's hook here. Uh, I think I need to go away. Okay, I'm gonna do the reload trick that I told you. I need to reload anyway, so... Ideally, you shouldn't... Like, every chase, ideally, shouldn't take you, like, 20 bottles. You should be able to wrap up a chase with four bottles. Maybe a bit more sometimes, but yeah, that should be it. I don't trust you. I think both of you are here. Were both of you here? Actually, just a single person? Nah, you were both here, 100%. That was a terrible toss. Now, here's the deal. This girl's dead on hook. So, if I catch her and then go for the other, I'll get at least three kills, I think. Right. This might be the one time we're using a yellow bottle for distance is a good idea. Because I actually want to get ahead of myself as much as I can. Come on. Come on. And not lose them. Okay, I see them. Whispers off. Whispers on. Are they up there, maybe? I can't tell. I'm not gonna see blood, but I will hear them, maybe. There we go. Okay. Uh, oh, pfft. okay, I'm so good, chat. I'm not gonna ball that window, even with Bamboozle. I wanna actually lock her into a corner somewhere. So she doesn't escape into a gate or something. If I had a bottle right now, it would be so easy to throw it right there or right there and slow them down so much. But it's okay, Bamboozle, let's do it. It will reload when we have her a bit cornered. Oh, this is a great time. This is- Oh, dudes. This is a great time to show Yellow Bottle. Oh, but they're gonna escape. I think they got it. Yeah, nice. I should have not- I should have never uh, stopped at the pallet. Oh, this is a- Oh, this is a shame because I needed to show you that important thing. Oh, that's a shame. I really- I really wish they hadn't left. I really wish they hadn't left. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I totally. They all had resilience. They didn't have a single uh, toolbox though. They just did gens fast. I needed to. I needed to not care about that and just lock that person down away from the gate, and we would have killed her. Uh, but you know, uh, I'm gonna use the power of MS Paint to very quickly um, make my point here. I made a video on how to use yellow bottles with some visual examples, and I'll link it up there. How to use yellow bottles on clown. Uh, but the general idea goes a little bit like this, chat. So, if this is the loop... Um, let's say this is the bigger part of the loop. And the pallet is right here. You you want to be here yourself. You want... You're the clown. You're right here. You want the survivor to instead be on this side. 
they're not gonna play around this part because this is the short side and it's very unsafe. You put one purple bottle right here and if they play on the short side, they are completely dead. However, if you place it here, as I explained, that works pretty well. And one thing you can do is place a yellow bottle under your feet and then throw a purple bottle here. You'll speed yourself up. They'll slow themselves down and you will catch them. By the time they come here, you will be 10% faster, they'll be 15% slower. And you can use this at certain loops to shut them down completely. But the idea for the survivors is almost always to just pre-drop the pallet and then you break it and move on. Uh, with that in mind, that's mostly all there is to clown. And I can't believe we played against four no miters. That is crazy. <laughs> Sorry for asking two times. I'm sorry, guys. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna answer that when we take a little break from this. What happens if you throw a purple and a yellow bottle on top of each other? Great question. The yellow bottle is an antidote. So if you throw two bottles, the yellow bottle will eat up the purple. So you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. If you do that, the survivors running through will just get the speed boost. So be very careful. You throw the yellow bottles at the places where you're gonna be and where you're gonna place the survivors away from and push them away from. Don't give it to them for free. <laughs> And that, I, I think that's pretty much the basics with Clown. Let's move on. Right, so we've reached the Spirit. Uh, the Spirit is one of the few killers that has special slower speed and terror radius. She's very much like Huntress, Hag, um, and what other killers do this right now? This, we're starting to run out of them. <laughs> and I guess the Deathslinger? Yeah, they have... No, 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 I forgot the text again. I am the worst. Uh, idea I was doing something wrong. Yeah, she has a 24 meter turret radius, which is smaller than usual, as well as 110 movement speed, aka 4.4 meters per second. She's also a bit shorter than, than some of the other taller killers, which is something to consider. And her power makes up massively for this shortcomings. Um, it's called Yamaoka's Haunting. When you hold your power button, she begins to twist her, her arms, and when it's fully charged, you then move on a different plane of existence. Your body stays put, and if a survivor is looking at you, they just see you stand still. But while that power is happening, and you have about five seconds, you actually move very, very fast, and you can choose to reappear whatever you like. You're still bound to the same laws of, of physics. You cannot go through walls, you cannot go through windows or pallets. Uh, so you cannot quite do something like the nurse can, but you move very, very, very fast. And if you launch out of it, you keep some of this speed and uh, some of this extended launch. The catch, however, is that you do not see survivors. Just the same way they don't see you, you don't see them. All they can do is hear a little big whoosh that tells them more or less where you are. And you can not see them directly. But you can see their scratch marks. You can hear their footsteps and any other sound that they make from being injured or interacting with the environment. So basically, as a spirit, you try to get hits whatever you can, and when your power is ready, you bloop, 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 begin to use it, listen very carefully, try to appear on top of them, and hit them. That's it. Super simple. Uh, even though it's simple, listening carefully is difficult, and she is very unique. Her power is immensely powerful, uh, but also not anything like most other killers. So if you play the spirit and you dedicate a lot of time to her, she will maybe give you some bad habits with other killers. You will not be able to catch survivors nearly as fast with other killers. And likewise, if you played a lot of normal killers and you play the spirit, you might not be used to her normal to her lower than normal speed. So she's a bit of a special cookie, uh, but definitely, definitely powerful. Uh, the add-ons, honestly, uh, they start all the browns and yellow ones. You cannot go wrong with them. Uh, anything that gives you extended speed or duration is good. Recovery and duration is basically the same. I know it doesn't sound intuitive. And activation is also really good. So I'm gonna go with brown activation and brown movement speed. But you honestly cannot go wrong with any of the brown and yellows. And then some of the more powerful ones get really, really crazy. Some of them are kind of useless. You'll find a way to navigate around them. Uh, we're also gonna use some blood point offerings. Why not? Uh, as for perks, she does do basic attacks when coming out of her power, so things like Sloppy Butcher, Jolt, and Know It work out just fine. And we'll have Bitter Murmur to hear people... Um, uh, sorry, to see people at the end of the game and have a plan B if things don't go well by then. But yeah, uh, the main idea with playing Spirit, you don't really have a lot of a 
specific plan for spirit. You don't need to set up traps. You don't need to mine loops very much. You just need to get rid of things that are that seem powerful. Get rid of pallets that are strong. Get hits whenever you like. Try to identify which survivors have perks like Iron Will that makes them very quiet or completely quiet right now uh, because those are much harder to listen to. And then look for cues during chase, scratch marks, grass moving, dust kicking up to know where they are. And lots and lots of practice will be required, but you'll be very oppressive in chase. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Just play normal killer and use your amazing chasing power. Occasionally, if you don't mind bursting through all of your power and then going on a long cooldown of about 15 seconds, you can also use your power for mobility. Someone's about to do something that you really, really, really want them to stop. Uh, like finishing agenda single down, you can use your power just to get there really, really quick. And even though it has a bit of a startup, it's it's certainly worth it. And yeah, that's pretty much it. It's just about getting better at listening and, and choosing which chases are worth picking up. If a survivor is clearly very good and very good at juking you and, and so on, you might want to pick a different target. Hmm, what's a bit curious? I'm using the recolored uh, spirit skin that has the schoolgirl uniform. And that's pretty much it, chat. Do you know if the fire barrel sounds like footsteps intentionally? Uh, I don't think it's intentional, but it definitely 100% sounds like footsteps. Oh, yeah, don't mind that book. <laughs> As I said, the spirit doesn't really have a lot of macro management things. You don't have a lot of powers that you need to set up or pick up. Instead, you want to focus on each chase and really ask yourself if it's worth it. Uh, is this person easy to chase? Can I get a free hit? Should I go for someone else? Yeah, in this case, yeah, go for someone else. Uh, one important thing that you want to do is play with a slightly higher volume and tell if a survivor has Iron Will or not. This survivor doesn't have Iron Will, so I can hear them really well when they're injured. She also did something that I see comp players do. Okay, I'm gonna try. Uh, survivors can hear a little whoosh when you start using your power. So sometimes, and they can also directionally tell vaguely where you are. So it's sometimes a good idea to go in one way and then immediately switch back just to throw them off a bit. I think I think that's what got me to hit there. Wow, fast one. That must have been two guys. One of them is walking out. I see that with Iron with uh, Peter Murmur. You don't see Aras from perks when you use your power. But if you see them before, you can react to them like this and just use your power from mobility or react. I'll force this pallet out of him, maybe. Oh, even better. He, ch he changed direction? That hard? Dead. I could hear him very clearly because this guy doesn't have Iron Will. If they have the perk Iron Will, now they're completely quiet and in the future they'll be a bit quieter, so... It is a bit of a counter for spirit. We experienced that earlier. Uh, yeah, the passive facing. So when you are moving around, when you're using your power, it's your your body's completely immobile. They see what you see there. But when you're not using your power, the spirit has this quirk, this strange little unique aspect to her, where her body flickers on and off. It kind of like disappears briefly. It's very very subtle, and it's not. It's not, you don't see it, so you can't really play around it. But what it means is that sometimes if I go around the corner and show up, the survivors here see me a bit late. Okay. I don't need to, I don't need to be a nice guy. Sloppy Butch is gonna make that regress slower. Oh, I'm so sorry. I really didn't mean to go for Leon. Uh, I would rather go for this guy, this girl. I, I want to be nice actually. But they, you know, being nice doesn't mean you need to be stupid. Oh, I used my entire power there. And I still have no idea where she is. Be careful. Your idea, typically, unless you really, really know what you're doing, is not to use your power for too long. Unbreakable. You want to use your power in short bursts so that you get it back quicker. Now, if you're sure that a survivor is going into a dead zone like that, commit. But if you're gonna make quick guesses, I think it's better to do it in short bursts. All right. So since Leon has Unbreakable, I think it's likely that he'll have DS too. We'll remember that. And I think they're gonna be healing now, these two. I'm gonna use my power from ability a bit. But do I see them? Yeah, I do. Okay, one of them got healed, but the other didn't. So we go for the other. Hi, lady. 
Oh, fast. Pretend to use my power, maybe? Okay. That was a big play, and I might actually regret this. Oh, so lucky. Well, it's a good thing that you can do little mind games like this, or just get pallets out of the way whenever your power is recovering. As a general rule, for every second that you use your power, you need to wait three seconds to get it back. So I use one, two, and now I have to, you know, multiply that by uh, three, so six seconds. Uh, but sometimes with add-ons, you can make that sh significantly shorter, or you can go significantly further. So yeah, her add-ons are very powerful. Even the brown ones start to be pretty good. She took the vault and went left from the sound of it. No, it went right, okay. I follow the scratch marks. And when I'm closing off, I am completely lost. She has bite the bullet. Oh my god. Okay, so she has a perk that makes her completely silent when she heals. And she started healing right away. And it really threw me off for like one second. But then I'm like, okay, I don't see where she is. So I'm going to stop and see if she's crouching or what. So yeah, that's a good rule of thumb. If you chase a survivor and then suddenly all of the traces leading to them vanish, start thinking. Maybe they went into a boon area with the boon to with the boon perk, um, shadow step. Maybe they have iron will. Maybe they have bite the bullet. That's so rare. Wow. I uh, noticed that I tried to do a big lunge to catch him at the window, but when I didn't see him, I just looped around and got lucky. Uh, looking at the grass moving. Look at the grass move. You guys see that grass move? That is one of the best hints you can use to point out. To, to figure out exactly where the survivor is. But remember that, very important. Uh, as I said, the macro management is not a huge deal for her power, but you do need to macro manage where the survivors are. I know that Leon and Michaela are both dead on hook. So they are my primary targets right now if I don't want to lose this game. Let's follow the blood. I mean, not the blood. You don't see the blood. Ah, this girl is smart. This girl is smart. This girl did a thing at the shack at the very start of the match that told me that she's one of those comp-like players. She tried to... She pretended to drop a pallet by crouching and then dropped it to see uh, to see if she could delay me like that. And at this time... Oh, by the way, I was wrong. This goes to... And, and at that point, what she did was really smart. She dropped the pallet from the opposite side that I would expect and then vault back. Wait, did she actually do that? No, she went right back into me, did she? I might be right. I might be wrong, actually. She might have not uh, done anything like that. But expect things like that. You're going to see survivors trying to do things that are unexpected that sound a certain way. So they might drop a pallet, and they might actually be cheeky and be on the side that you don't expect. Hmm. She vaulted back to you. Yeah, then, then what happened then uh, wasn't anything like I said. She just vaulted it, heard me for long enough, and thought, I need to go back. But some survivors would do the opposite. They would drop it from your side, knowing for a fact that you can't see them, and it's really hard to tell. And then they would loop, uh, uh, they would vault back to try to fool you. But these things you'll see only uh, some survivors do as you start playing killer. More and more survivors do, and you'll also get better at dealing with them. Short, uh, short phase. It didn't really get me anywhere, unfortunately. Oh, never mind. I think we get a hit out of it then. How are they on your next? I know for a fact that there's no shack pallet, so... Oh, very patient, Leon. Well done. Don't forget they can more or less hear me, so... They're not operating on zero knowledge. Thank you, Spook Tour Twig. Well, that worked earlier and it worked now. Wow, damn. Let's break it up now. Let's kill him first. But yeah. Uh, don't forget that auto perks don't work during your power, but they do work before you use it. So you can kind of make your mind up a bit. Ah, okay. They opened this gate for me by completing this gen. Let's go find them. We. And if I go and look into this corner, or a locker, maybe I find her. Aya! <laughs> okay, she's not here. She's probably around somewhere, but... Oh, damn! Where is she, though? <gasps> Found you. Hello. How do you like? Spirit know it with bitter murmur. Now you know why I run this bird. Um, okay, not gonna lie. It would be really mean for me to catch this girl, too. Well, we probably can do it.
What? Oh, oh you dropped in the basement. I saw nothing. Nice one. Nice one, nice one, nice one. Uh, anyway, uh, hopefully you get an idea of what it's like. Don't forget that you can do a big swing coming out of um, facing. Uh, don't forget that anything visual you can still see other than blood and the survivors themselves and auras. You can still see Dawes, scratch marks, uh, grass being moved. Uh, on places that have metal ground, you can hear the clink, clink, clink. So it's really nice to chase there. The swamp maps, anything wet, it's very easy to hear. What's the deal with you? Well, <laughs> now she thinks we're besties. <laughs> now she thinks this is the dating simulator and she can just go on a date with me. Okay, I accept it. You're cute. Just healing herself. Look at that, she's completely silent. <laughs> Yeah, that's quite fun. Chat, uh, what did I forget about Spirit? Uh, please. Um, I'm sure I forgot something super critical. You can be stunned while... You can be blinded and you lose your power, but, you know, just look away. And you can also be stunned, which would also make you lose your power. Hmm. She still sees outlines, Rancor and Spice. Oh yeah, yeah, perks that don't show auras, but shows you the location of a survivor. Like, spies from the shadows, you can still see them during your power. That's good. Hi, Gutonius. I will make a video about playing against a dredge very soon, Pinky promise. But... Not yet. Uh, come on, buddy. Get out of here. You can open the gates, if you guys didn't know. If the timer hasn't started yet, and all the gens are done, you can open the gates. Go away! Go away, you witch. Why are you healed? I have no it. Only because you guys have cool hats, okay? Yeah, you're getting a slap too. <laughs> uh, can you survive or see your aura? No, they see your body like this. Like that. They, they only kind of hear, more or less, where you're coming from. But it's not very precise and it's really easy for you to fool them, so... Obviously, don't try to mind game something stupid where they can clearly tell where you're coming from. Uh, but at the same time, try to get close and mess with them a little bit. And if you're in doubt, keep the short... Uh, the short... Um, faces uh, as your main to, main go-to strategy. Don't, don't commit to long ones because then you have to recharge for a long time. Uh, lovely bunch of survivors. A lot easier than the previous game. <laughs> okay. Uh, a survivor stunning your husk, as far as I know, does absolutely nothing. So you cannot be blinded or, or bullied if they hit your husk that you leave behind now. <laughs> okay, chat, we've moved on to Legion. Uh, Legion is a group of four individual killers. And depending on the cosmetic, you'll be playing as either Frank, Julie, Joey, or Susie. But despite... Different voices from male to female legions. They play exactly the same and there's the same stats and same everything So don't be confused about that at all. I'm gonna play the male one because I'm more used to it uh, And the basic idea of legion is that they are a normal killer with normal terror radius normal uh, Launch normal everything very easy to get into and get out of when you play other som uh, somewhat normal killers with the average stats but on top of all of that they also have a psycho mode where they go fer call feral frenzy when they change the position of their knife they move very fast and they stab survivors to injure them very very easily not only do they move fast they can also vault pallets which no other killer can do and windows very quick almost as quick as survivors basically and this means that for legion it is very very easy to hit a survivor anywhere and make sure that you injure them and when you do that, their power, which works on a short cooldown or on a, on a short uh, timer, resets and you get another 10 seconds. And then you can hit one, hit another, hit another. And if survivors group up, you can hit them all repeatedly. Survivors that are hit by the lesion don't go down per se, but they are putting the deep wound status effect. When they're in deep wound, they begin to bleed out. 
And if you keep chasing them and they keep running, nothing happens. But if you let them be, they have to mend themselves, which takes a few seconds. So that's a lot of slowdown for free, which is awesome. And if you manage to hit four survivors in a row, you'll see that your screen will pulsate in red and the fifth hit will actually insta down a, uh, a survivor that you hit. So if you ever have the opportunity to go for that, go for it. But you cannot stab the same survivor multiple times because then you'll go on cooldown. You can also end your power anytime you want and it also ends if you get stunned by a pallet. So watch out for that unless you have a certain add-on. In general, Legion is a perfectly great killer to start with, one of the best ones to learn the game. I highly recommend them uh, because it puts a lot of pressure on survivors and it's a great killer to practice with. But once survivors are injured, you don't have a lot to end chases, so you need to have your mind games and overall game sense on point. We're going to use Discordance, their own perk, to find multiple survivors on gems. This is great synergy with his power to hit multiple survivors quick. Uh, also, Fearmonger to make them exhausted. Maybe they don't run away with Swimbers once we catch up to them. And Jolt, which is a common perk. We down a survivor, gens around them, bleh, explode. Uh, Boon Totems can be a bit annoying if we ever find them. So if you want to, you can use Shatter Hope as your first perk. I haven't leveled it up entirely here. Uh, that way you can break Boons and see where people are and catch them before they finish healing. That can be an, uh, that, this can already be a decent build on Legion. Add-ons. You can never go wrong with extra duration. Never, ever, ever go wrong. And you also cannot go wrong with extra recovery. These are good add-ons to start with. Watch out with the add-ons that have downsides to them. There's only one or two like that. Um, you want to use those when you understand them a little bit better. Uh, but yeah, honestly, this is great to start. Let's get some blood points and get into a match. Right, so... As you can imagine, there is a big, big difference between finding one person and just focusing on that person and finding a group of people, injuring all of them, letting them uh, waste time with mending and then picking them off one by one. You definitely want to be doing the latter. You do not want to focus on one survivor. You constantly want to exert pressure upon multiple people when and if possible. So our idea is going to be to listen to discordance or have a guess as to where multiple survivors will spawn far away from us and try to catch multiple of them. When you begin to use your power, um, you will see that the FOB changes and you move very fast. When you hit one survivor, you now activate the killer instinct. Uh, the killer instinct is a mechanic that will let you find survivors with the lesion inside your terror radius. So when I hit one survivor with my power, I'm going to hear a... I'm going to hear a heartbeat that will let me know where the other survivors are. If they're close and I can close the gap and hit them immediately, awesome. If they're very far, it's maybe not a great idea to try desperately to reach them. It's maybe a better idea to get to them, cancel my power, and then start over. Uh-oh. Discordance is on. Notice that the generator is yellow. This one, this generator is like orange because of the event. Is that two discordances? Oh no, that's so sad. Well, now we know where four of them are. We'll hit two of them here for sure, though. I see them both. All right, I'm gonna hit one. Out of window. <laughs> Heartbeat. I know. I know he's pretty close, so I'm gonna catch up. He run into me a bit. Uh, watch out! He can stun me here. Let's be patient. Okay. I waited out a bit. And lunch. He was pretty smart. I'm gonna get rid of it right away. The other two are just doing a gen, and there's not much I can do. I could try to go and stop them, but look at that. It's really far. I don't have any other perk to slow him down. I accept that that gen's gonna be gone. Uh, sad fact of life. Survivor's going back, I can hear him. Very risky of him. Does he have a strong pallet here? He does not, I think he's dead. Uh, very smart shot, very smart. Right, got him. Uh, that girl's gonna be doing that gen, as soon as she can. I'll break this pallet, but oh, I really, really wanna stop that gen from popping if I can. I know the girl that I hit here is injured, so she cannot come and take a hit. I'm just gonna try to hook him next to it so I can kick it and then we'll see what we do. Keeping multiple survivors injured and making it difficult to uncork is definitely something that you can take advantage of as a lesion. But now everyone's back to healthy, so let's see if this cordons or our own intuition just lets us find a group of survivors here. Hello? Uh, survivors that hide in lockers are still visible and you can just press space and grab them. Don't make the mistake of trying to hit them while they go into a locker. Uh, cause that might actually fail if you're a bit too late. God damn it. 
I don't want to go as far as that. If I go... Yeah, there's two people there. There might be three survivors here. Oh, uh, the squadrons went off. Okay. Come on. He had spin burst? Good to know. I could try to... Okay, I'm gonna hit her. Two spin bursts? Wow! Very smart, guys. I understand that if I get stunned, I'm gonna lose my power, but I'm okay with that. This sucks a little bit. Oh, that was a huge misplay. I don't need to wait for that hard, because she's already showed us spin burst. Uh, basement's an idea, honestly. Especially if I can keep them injured. Do you like the new Tinker going on? Yeah, I think it's a really good change. All right. Shattered Hope is only going to be there if we actually have to deal with boons. I'm going to make sure... Wait, this Shen didn't have any progress before. Someone's here. I fear... Here steps. Okay. Uh, I use my power, I press space. You don't, you don't need to have any momentum. You can do it from the most awkward angle and it will still work. Okay. The moment they step out, we do that. And we can still hit them. I get my power back. Another probably gonna try to get to basement to save. I'm gonna try to stop it. If I'm not there in time, I just cancel. Will I cancel? It looks like I will cancel. All right, well, this isn't super ideal. I forgot to mention that you don't see scratch marks or blood during, um, during uh, Feral Frenzy. You also don't see people that you've already hit. You only see people that you haven't hit. So this woman, who hasn't mended, I wouldn't see her normally. Ah, this basement's way too strong. We're gonna be very patient. Mm -hmm. Alright, hit them both. And maybe I can do four hits? I might be able to do four hits, chat. Oh, especially if they misplay it. With the extra duration? Oh, that was a beefy spring burst, though. Extra duration, though, extra duration. Oh, yes, baby, let's go. Oh, uh, how far can you make it? You don't lose progress while you vault. This skill should go down. If we catch her. But as you can see, she's got a... Oh, she got stuck! Nice! That's four? And the power is bugged and it didn't work. Okay. That's a bug in this patch. Uh, she should be down right now. Uh, well, uh, you know how it's done now. You, as you can see, survivors don't need to give it to you for free. That is quite upsetting, I'm not gonna lie. Because that would have been so huge for us right now. Well done. Um, okay, second hook on her, if I remember correctly. I don't remember. She dead hard, though. Uh, I don't think so, personally. But you might be right. Because my power ended. If, my, if she dead hard, then my power wouldn't have ended, right? Did it not? See the blood from someone else? Oh, hello! <gasps> Whoa, well, there you go. What God giveth, God take it, and what God take it, God... Well, Claire, give it back. Thank you. My basement's not here, clearly, because he was back there. And now this is the kind of situation where Legion really thrives in. Everybody injured, many people hooked. I can just sit between these two, and they need to really find a way to heal. Oh, or not. Cheeky. Uh, when survivors go through windows and you follow them, it's actually quite difficult to tell where they are. So when you go through a window, don't let them get behind you or anything. It's going to be a bit frustrating. Ah. All right. Well, that was really cute of you guys. Uh, I appreciate the little bamboozle that they tried to pull by healing at 99%. But now I can just sit here. So good luck. Ah. All right. Good search slash jolt. And I need to go for one of you guys. What the hell was that? He's gonna fall to a basement and I catch him here. Good spin. All right, let's get this girl first, basement, then we get him, I guess. If they do the last two gems, bravo. I thank you, Celtic. I'm so sorry, chat. I need to focus, I think I almost get blinded there somehow. All right, let's find out. You can grab people off the ground uh, while using your power, by the way. But it's risky because they could... They could be... Uh, nice. Good spin burst, mate. Uh, but yeah, you can you can grab while you're on the ground. I'll pretend to pick up and she'll come right in. No, she won't. I'll take the risk then. Okay, I'll take the risk. Oh, maybe he has flip-flop. Ooh, damn. No flip-flop. Okay, basement. I think he's dead. I'm not sure. Boop. 
No, second. Okay. We can control this. They're they're really not healthy. It's so noisy. I should never leave the I should never leave the basement chat. That was so weird, dude. Oh my god. She actually did a medium one. Alright. Fair enough. Makes sense. Uh, no BT on either of these guys. Because if she doesn't have it, she doesn't have it on this guy either. And hi Claire, what's up? Oh, powerful! Oh, nice! Nice trick! She tried to use Primbers to get out of here. She might have Visual or something. She used it twice very shortly. Impressive. Oh, no. She did. Uh, see, I can use my power and then grab someone. Do that if you want to save a second, I guess. But it's a bit risky because what if they just pick up in front of you? You can't just cancel your power. You have a three second cooldown. But yeah. Uh, I'm sorry if you have decisive well use it. That is totally fair. But, uh, chat, what are some other things we haven't talked about, Legion? Uh, yeah, important one. When you hit a survivor once, you actually gain a slight boost of speed. So right now, I'm I'm fast. Now I am faster, slightly. And for every additional hit, you move faster. So the final survivor in your big chain of hits is actually going to have a much harder time than the first one. Additionally... This is a very obscure thing, you don't need to really know it, but I guess I'll throw it in there. Your terror radius as Legion is 32 meters, but when you use your power, it actually climbs up uh, to 40 meters, if I'm not mistaken. This girl's the smartest Suara you've ever seen in your life. So you actually detect people from very far away. Sometimes, if you're in the mindset of looking for people, especially without discordance and stuff, one idea might be to hit a survivor with your power, Walk a little bit away, and then if you hear someone in the distance, cancel. If you don't hear someone and then you suddenly hear them, that person is too far. Three spin bursts? I could have hit her. Only reason I didn't is because I thought she had that high. How much is a meter in this game? Uh, oh, it's really hard to tell, guys. A meter is more or less the distance, uh, the, the width of the pallet. More or less. Uh, there are some powers like Pyramid Head that can help you measure in units of eight, for example. Hello. Come on. Do you find playing Legion of Uh Yeah, I think Thunderphobia on Legion is a cool idea, especially if they buff it. But it's also not the strongest or anything like that. And definitely not the one that will make you the best Legion in the world. It's just a very simple slowdown. Okay, dude, you got me. You definitely got me there. What? <laughs> Play with fire. Uh, the new Dark Devotion on Legion. Uh, it actually used to work on Legion, so I can already tell you what it was like. Not ideal, I think. Not ideal. Locker baits in Frenzy? Yes, while you're in Frenzy, and especially if you're about to run out, some cheeky survivor will try to go into a locker. You just press space and you open it. If you hit them like this, and they're too fast, anytime you miss an attack, you lose your power entirely. Now, we do have this brown add-on that makes my cooldown shorter. So missing? Not that big of a deal. Uh, you know. Um, with the brown ruler. But, yeah, you, sh you, you shouldn't. Look, look how long it took me to use my power. Ideally... Ideally, you want to miss your power as little as possible, and anytime you're chasing a survivor, you're either about to injure them with Frenzy, or they're already injured. You don't want to be chasing healthy survivors uh, for a very long time, and then missing your attack and then committing, waiting 15 seconds to get your power back. You know what I mean, right? You, you want to be smart. If a survivor is very clearly outplaying you at every turn, injure them, move on to someone else. Since you can hear the heartbeat, like right now, if I didn't want to find this girl, I could just come here, Oh, I hear it, actually. Hit her, and then use my speed boost to find someone else. And, you know, I can be like, okay, Claudette is in the hook. Nia is right here. I just hit this girl, so the last heartbeat in distance, that has to be Dwight. Okay, let's go for Dwight. He's the one I want. Uh, also, you could use your power at the end to maybe get ahead of a survivor. <laughs> yeah, it was self-aware. Nice, that's cute. 
You can use your power to get ahead of a survivor sometimes. Three Springbirds. We'll see more of that soon, I think. Uh, GG's well played. Uh, Chad, what did I forget? Mm -mm. Did we cover why we look up? Oh, that's a very... That's a very minor thing. Uh, Legion, when you hit a survivor, they do this. They clean their knife looking down. So if you look up slightly during the during the animation, you actually keep your camera steady and you see properly. But that's something that's very minor. I'm sure you'll figure that out by yourself. Mm -hmm. Use Blood Echo? Unfortunately, that's a teachable, so yeah. You, you, will, you will not get that super soon, but if you do, it's a pretty good one on Legion. Uh, good luck playing him. Right, chat. We have reached the plague. This very tall Babylonian priestess. Uh, she has normal stats and average stats compared to most other killers. 32 meter terror radius, 15 per, uh, 115 movement, aka 4.6. You can press F1 to see all of these things. She's very tall, and her crown extends quite a bit higher up. So some of the mind games that you can do with other killers, watch out, they're gonna see you over everything. You are very, very tall. Even though she is a normal killer and you can play her like a normal killer, I really, really recommend that you think very carefully about her power, because if you use her power well, she can be a bit like Legion and make sure everyone wastes time and gets injured without actually being there sometimes, which is pretty, uh, pretty insane. Her power is the Corrupt and Vile Perch. We're gonna simplify it and call it the green puke and the red puke. By default, she has a green puke. The green puke and the red puke are both identical in like hitbox and, and timing and everything, right? Uh, but the green one is her default one. The green puke infects items, anything survivors can interact with. Generators, windows, uh, pallets, lockers, totems, anything you can see and survivors can touch, blah, 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 blah. You can puke on it to make it infected. If they touch it, they become infected. You can also infect the survivors directly by puking on them. And if you puke on, puke on them repeatedly, the infection uh, fills up very quickly. You don't see the meter, but they do. Uh, if a survivor is in a bad spot, it's a really good idea to fully infect them. Otherwise, I think it's kind of difficult, so you shouldn't try. Maybe it's best to just infect them a little, then move on to someone else, and let the passive infection build up over time. Uh, unless survivors are literally doing nothing, the infection infect uh, progresses, and when it's fully there, it injures the survivor. And very, very critically, this injury is not a normal injury. It doesn't give them a speed boost. If a survivor is working on a gen and they <clears throat> they suddenly grow fully ill, they don't get a massive speed boost as if you hit uh, as if you hit them. And if you're not doing anything, you don't get a slowdown as well. So it can be very very critical. That already is a really good power because when survivors are all injured and infected, they are they cannot do anything brave around you and they constantly cough and are easy to track. But on top of that, the plague has a bunch of phantoms around the map. And by default, one of them will be red. If you drink from it, now your puke becomes red for one minute. And this puke now is like a hunter's hatchet. It just straight up damages. And it can go through survivors too. So two survivors in a little corner, blah, blah, blah. Uh, red puke, down them both. Or injure them both. Huge, huge stuff. Uh, the way survivors counter this is by running very far away from you or stunning you. If they stun you with a pallet, you will lose your power. So be careful, you need to be... Other stuns are fine, but pallet stuns, you need to be careful while you have your red puke. Uh, if survivors are infected, they can also drink from the many fountains, and that turns them red, which heals them, but it also gives you your red puke. So it's a trade-off of what's gonna happen. So ideally, you want to infect survivors a little bit as your general strategy, and then anytime you think it's convenient, pick up one of the red fountains and try to use it to uh, down survivors really, really quickly and be very oppressive in chase. When you infect things, they stay infected for an hour, for a default 40 seconds. Uh, but if survivors are fully infected, they also passively infect things. So if you fully infect a Meg and put her on the hook, and then someone touches her, they will pass on the infection. So, and they will also infect things that they touch. So you can, you can do some evil things with all of that in mind. Her perks are some of the best in the game. With Corrupt Intervention, we'll block away the faraway gens, giving us, giving us uh, fewer gens to worry about for two minutes. Uh, with Infectious Fright, when we down a survivor, we'll see who's around us. This is great to counter flashlight saves and snowball the game and, and bring up the violence really quickly. And I guess we'll run Jolt to control gens a bit. It doesn't work with her power, watch out. And Bitter Murmur to have an idea of where people are. Add-ons. In my very modest opinion, stay away from the effectiveness add-ons. The Emetic Potion, and the infected medic. These add-ons make it easier for you to fully infect a survivor, but I've seen many beginner plagues 
try to infect the survivor desperately for five minutes and then never infecting it and then having a five minute chase. That's not good. Infect them a little, move on. If they mess up, infect them fully. You don't need these add-ons when you're learning. What you can use, however, are, are the apples. The apples give you extra fountains. Uh, I recommend the yellow one, it's a simpler one. Uh, and extra fountains means that you can use your red power a bit more often. And why add-on wouldn't hurt? Yeah, the add-ons do extend the time, uh, the cooldown, uh, reducing ones, or extend the time where things stay infected. Those are pretty good too. And this add-on lets you know when someone cleanses and you can see their aura, so it's also pretty helpful for beginners. You could try it out as well. Um, we're gonna do that, I suppose. And then we use that, and we kill for a game, and we talk about our decision making. Let's do it, chat. Ah, oh, right. Um, it was easy to neglect mentioning it, but when a survivor is fully infected, they become broken. And that means that they cannot heal. The only way a survivor can heal from the plague's full infection is to drink up from the fountains. Um, so that's very important. If you fully infect everyone, they'll want to cleanse. You need to be a bit careful though, because if they cleanse from all of the fountains at once and they all become highlighted and white, um, that means that your power is now going to automatically trigger, which is good, because you get your power, but you also lose all six or more fountains, or less, depending on add-ons. So watch out, you don't want that to happen. If you have a few fountains, you need to go pick them up and use them as you go. If you let them all cleanse and over cleanse too much, you will not get the same bank for your buck. So it's very important as a plague not to use your red power too uh, headlessly, but also not to forget about it completely until it's too late. <clears throat> uh, Blood Lodge is a very open map, a bit big. So as you can see, this is a normal white clean fountain. This is where survivors need to drink. And the white ones that you'll see in the distance there and there are the ones that I can drink from. They're not exactly where I want to be. These are the block gens, so I'm just going to go and puke on this. Puking on gens, never a bad idea. Oh, hello. Okay. Okay, so here's the deal. I'm going to puke on this bad boy. And ideally, I'm going to go for someone else. That way, the infection just works passively. And either he cleanses and gives me my power later, or he doesn't, and I'm fine. He's injured. Oh, multiple people here, maybe. There's no way. There should be someone here, surely. Oh, wow, they must be really careful then. Oh, there they are, actually. Oh, wow, I can't believe they did this. Uh, I press M2 just to do a, pu a bit of a puke. We don't need to fully infect the generator. Okay, all right. I have an idea of where they are, but mm, no easy time infecting them yet. I'm gonna try a little mind game here. And she's just running around the shack like a really smart girl. Okay, dude. I could try to preemptively puke on the windows and stuff. That definitely works. Now if she takes it, she'll get infected. But this is way too much time wasted. I really don't love this. Where the hell even is she? Are you guys... You guys are not working on this, are you? Or else they'd be infected. How are they doing this? Uh, I really wonder. Okay, good enough. We check the HUD to make sure that she's infected. I'm just gonna swing right through. Literally same as fully infected, except injury-wise, but we didn't fully. Alright, you go and touch it then. Uh, honestly, Chad, I walked into that. I walked right into that. It would have been so easy to be patient there. Looks like she might go down still though. Alright, search is gonna help. Uh, Jolt, sorry. An infectious fright. Oh, you're kidding. Please don't pick. Don't have the rescue. Thank goodness. Hey, what's up? You want to give me a free hit? I'll take it. Do you think he can sabo? He might be able to. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> Very fun. Uh, you can puke on survivors on the ground. And on survivors on the hook. If they're not infected, but this kill's infected. You cannot fully infect them, just a little bit. But this kill's infected, so we definitely don't need to do that. I'm gonna kick this. Uh, see where Jake is. He's coming. Would have been nice to... I don't know why this infection's lasting so little, dude. I don't know how that girl's not infected. Alright, let's see if we can cut her off somehow. I'm just gonna do this so that if she takes the window and the pallet... She's infected. Wait, what? Now she's infected. Okay, we can go. And this is good. Unfortunately, all of my fountains are extremely far away, so... Look at them. I think I'm gonna have a hard time using them here. 
What a nice map they have. Let's see if we can push one of them into one of the fountains so we can pick it up on the way. If I'm telling you, if you if you drop four survivors in one area to go for a fountain in another, they're just gonna hide. By the time you get there, you'll you'll waste the whole thing. So never do that, ideally. This guy is so fast. Oh my god, dude. He moved not even not even like ideally there, and he still was so quick. Right, not a crazy idea for me to hook him here and then drink up, I guess. But I'll still I'll still give up a uh, gen too far. But yeah, not ideal. Let's see with Bitter Normal where they're going. So they are going right over there. Uh, nothing too unexpected. Okay. Let's drink up! Okay, that's two of them, and they're going Shack or whatever that is. Let's try! We have a minute of now our puke damages people. Everyone's fully infected, so they're gonna pre-run and pre-hide and never be in the open. All of these loops are kind of worthless against play with her power. So I expect them to just play... Shag extremely well or something. Oh! <gasps> Auto-reading! There we go! That was really smart from her, though. Extremely smart, damn. Alright. She knows that she needs to stun me. Bro, that was so so perfect timing. I'm gonna hold it. If you hold it, you drop more puke. And as you can see, you can outplay that hard with that. Uh, chat, I'm not gonna lie, we might have down her, but I have literally nothing else. Unless I pick up this fountain again and they do some big misplay. Wow, dude, the big the size of the map is killing me right now. Just the fact that it's long and they're making me ping pong from one corner to another. I'm just wasting my power, just traveling, doing nothing. We'll try to settle down around here, see if we can defend the street gems, perhaps. I wouldn't be surprised if they pop this one, which was at zero. But if they pop it in my face, I have a bit of murmur, I'll see their aura, maybe I can do something. You can shoot through very small gaps, very much like Hunter's can. This bloody sucks, however. Psh, unlucky, Chad, unlucky. That could've hit. <sighs> what can I say, man? What can I say? That's just, that's just bad luck. No puking on her, she's fully inf- Oh wait, she wasn't fully infected. You're right, you're right. She had cleanse, I should have puked on her. Good good point, Chad, good point. He would have been a fool to fall for that. Yeah, he would need to be a fool. Mm, I think I can catch him here, though. Nah, that hard. <laughs> I'm so sorry, dude, but that is so miserable. On my last second, too. Oh, no. What? What? How was that not a hit? Oh, okay. Chad, I'm not gonna lie. This was not my proudest moment. Looks like it doesn't make a huge difference. Uh, one of these people is opening one of these gates, and this girl has the S. I'm in trouble. I can't pick him up. He's on the pallet. Yo, if you could just go away, I would appreciate that. Oh my god, that guy has unbreakable as well, for all I know. Uh, she doesn't need to take the risk. I need to go back. If I hit the fang, she literally dead hearts as well. So, yeah, I would like to drink more fountains. It's super important to do a, a good combination of opening one. This game has been so ridiculous, man. This game has been so ridiculous. Literally all of them, man. Well played. I would have liked to really down one of them and then push the last person out of the gates and we could have made a comeback here, but this is kind of stupid. Keep them all ball back. Wait, Jake is here? You wanna show your dead heart too? Nice, good one, dude. Right, Infectious lets you know when people are around you. That girl, oh, by the way, uh, super important. Near the end game, every survivor that you know will try to heal very quickly with the fountains. I need to, I need to uh, cut my losses and pick up already. It's so rough, dude. It's, it's so rough. So expect a lot of people to cleanse very quickly near the end game. It's quite tough sometimes. Oh my god, he has that hard again. I can't do it. I can't go for that guy. I'm gonna need a fourth dead hard in one minute. I don't get this. By the way. Oh, I do. Never mind. Yeah. Have they cleansed somewhere wrong? I mean, I bet. Yeah, I, I'm getting greedy for the two kills, but honestly, if they played well, I don't deserve any of that. I... Oh, man. 
Uh, this is horrible. Yeah. I'm literally confined to Hook in here. Uh, I'll tell you something important, however. The plague, both of her pukes go through survivors. So if a fully healed survivor comes here, you can I can puke right through him, even from a bad angle, and fully infect the rescuer. And then shortly after, I'm one and down them. So plague is really good at, uh, at doing trades. Nice. Uh, let's see where the final... Oh, well, not if I'm blinded, no. Well, I'm gonna have to do the thing I don't like to do, which is to fully infect survivors. But I'm gonna try... Nah, she's no... Oh, there you go. She is a bit near. One of them screamed but didn't get infected. That's just bad netcode things. And that gate, I'm pretty sure, is not open, so... Wait, is it? Did they, did they 99 both? That could be huge if they did. I need to check. They did! Oh, they did! Oh, they they absolutely did check. Oh. oh I get him, but he has that hard ghost blocking. Wow, GG's. You wanna see their T-Bucks? Uh, my mistake there was breaking that pallet, by the way. I should have never broken the pallet. I should have just camped that better. And we would have been fine. But you can do a little bit of what you saw me do there to fully infect two hours. Now this guy is completely out, though. So, yeah, sorry about that. Uh, Fizzle, thank you for the Edmonds. What's the default amount of fountains on map? Uh, six. But it's very simple. You look around, right? You look around. Uh, it's almost always going to be six unless you have some rare add-ons. And if you ever see that there's three or four white ones, you need to be very careful. You need to be very, very careful. Yikes. Uh, they did play well. What can I say? I just needed to play that extremely min. Had a bunch of unbreakables as well. Uh, but yeah, we needed to play that a bit more cutthroat, I'm afraid. Distance is all gone. Don't, don't, don't lose your marbles over that. It's not the point. Uh, the point of these games is not to, you know, for survivors to show off or for me to show off. It's for me to show the killer and give you a basic idea. Now, unfortunately, that map, we had very bad luck. We had two fountains in one corner. One of them on top of a building. Yikes. One of them on a corner. And then they cleanse on the opposite. So you can learn what the survivors did right. And you can learn what I couldn't do, which is, oh, pick up this fountain and then immediately kick ass. You cannot do that. If you get a fountain in the middle, you need to treasure it. You need to be very, very help, uh, thankful for that. Because that one in the middle, you can you, you can pick up at almost any time and use it uh, with very little downtime. In an ideal world, you spawn in, you find four survivors, blah, 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 puke on all of them, then drink up from one fountain in the middle and start uh, raining uh, mayhem on all of them. Uh, but, you know, the, the world is not always ideal for play. Why don't you like to fully infect? I mean, look at that ace. He was next to me. I fully infected him in five seconds. And then somebody body block and he dead harder and he was out. So what do you think is better? For me to try to fully infect people? And you can see how body can go? Even when they get body blocked and I, I harass them and they catch all of the puke? Or for you to just infect them so that they are, they are incapable of doing that? Unfortunately, there's four survivors near the end game. Um, uh, there's four survivors, they're all gonna cleanse in opposite sides of the map, and at that point, if I go and pick up any of them, they unhook, they have Diaz Unbreakable, and they're out. So, I, I was gonna lose. I was gonna lose no matter what, <laughs> at that point. Uh, so I needed to just camp the hook a little bit better there, uh, if, you, if you want to avoid that one. But, you know, uh, hopefully you understand. Oh, please, guys, don't. Um, did we forget anything else about Plague? Hey, Ots, why is the all perk streak monetized as 18 plus? What do you think? YouTube thinks. <laughs> um, I wanna, I wanna, there's so much to Plague's infections and stuff. Uh, body blocking with Plague? You can sometimes, yeah, body block the, let's say a survivor hides in a corner and you find them. Don't hit them. Body block them? Fully infect them and then down them, and that's very effective. Oh, uh, but yeah, they get alerted. Yeah, they hear they hear a big sound effect and they see you glow red when you have your power. You can see it on your screen too that there's like whispers and red particles. Hmm. But I think that's all of it. Yeah, yeah. If survivors don't do anything, if they don't run and they don't do any actions, their infection doesn't increase. But that's not super important for you, hopefully. Let's move on to the next killer. All right.
we have reached the ghost face who is a very decent killer to start with or transition from if you've already learned the basics um normal terror radius when he's not using his ability normal lunge normal everything uh, he's a bit slower when he crouches that's a unique ability of ghost face it's completely independent from his power he can crouch uh press left control or the active ability button and he gets a bit shorter um this, I guess, is kind of useful in some loops to try to lose or confuse survivors, but don't do it too much. It just makes you slow uh, otherwise. And his power is very, very simple. You use it, you bring your knife up, and you become undetectable. Your terror radius very quickly shrinks into nothing. You don't have a red stain, and you can now stalk survivors. Much like Myers, you can stalk them from up to 40 meters, I believe. Uh, yeah, they might have changed that slightly with the new system, but you can stalk them from very, very far. And unlike Myers, the stalking is completely fixed. In 5 seconds, you fully, fully stalk them. And if you're leaning from an object, which is something that you do by holding uh, the power button next to a tall object, you stalk at twice the rate. And it's completely stable at any distance that you can get them in. So stalking from afar with Ghostface while you're not being noticed, unlike Myers, is a great idea because you do it very, very fast. And your general idea with Ghostface will be to catch people uh, off guard, fully stalk them and down them, or alternatively, stalk them to about 90, 95, 99 percent, and then later, uh, stalk them fully because when you stalk them fully, they become one shotable. So he's basically a Myers that stalks individually and one shots individual survivors, as opposed to Myers, he just one shots everyone when he gets to tier three, and that's pretty much it. If survivors see you. Uh, and stare at you for long enough while you're using your power, or if you attack, or if you miss an attack, or if you get stunned, all of these things make you lose your power. And if you fully stalk survivor for the next minute, they are insultable. That's it. Uh, we're going to be using some of his own perks. Stolen Tremors is great. When you pick a survivor, it will let you know which gens are not being worked on. They'll be the red ones. The white ones will be blocked. Uh, Jolt is pretty decent as well. I personally like Amal Amaliers, um, but I decided to bring Whispers instead. Just to find people at the start a bit easier. And Sloppy is a pretty, a pretty safe uh, perk to run on him as well. Uh, anytime you down a survivor or injure and leave them, they'll take a bit longer to, to heal. Very good if you have Nurse's Calling as well. If you don't know what to do add-on-wise, you cannot go wrong with shorter recovery. And you also cannot go wrong with uh, faster stock. Um, yeah, shorter stock rate, basically. These two add-ons, for they are insanely good for a brown. They are super, super good. But yeah, our basic strategy will be to use Whispers, Lethal Pursuer, Discordance, uh, or Own Intuition at the start to find a group of survivors, ideally, at least one, and give them a good spook and get a good start of the game because that's Ghostface's main um, main strength. He's, the fact that he's unannounced, survivors don't spawn in and see a prop that tells them it's Ghostface. If they don't pay attention, you can get a big, big start. And later throughout the game, you can take advantage of the fact that you can stalk them and then fully stalk them later to catch them off guard. We'll try to do all of that as soon as we get a game. Oh, uh, the Surf Ward is a very, very large map. So, yeah, knowing that survivors are most certainly not spawning right next to me, you immediately begin to use your power as you spawn. There's no reason not to, uh, I would say. And I'm just going to go... Oh, someone's close already. Yeah, I see them, actually. I see them. Um, oh. Wait, oh, that's a damn shame. I saw two people in the background. And I figured that it was them that triggered whispers. But no, it was this lady running into me. I should have avoided that, but unlucky. Are you here? Or... There was another lady for sure. I have my power back though, thanks to this. So that guy is now... Not 99? Now he's 99. We call 99ing to leaving uh, the stock of a survivor very close to like 100%. Now, if that survivor ever comes by me and I have my power, he's basically a, a quick tap away from just dying, which is awesome. And that happens very often when they try to come for rescues and stuff, so yeah. If I dump this girl, I'm gonna lose a gen for sure. There's still be no one here. There's also no pallet here, so that's unlucky for her. Mm, what, am, what am I most scared of? I have dead heart towards that pallet, yeah. That's good for us, I think. Unless she had life. What's she doing? <laughs> right. Um, Thrill and Tremors. We're gonna pick up Facing Away just in case they have a flashlight. They have one exactly. And every gen that's white is blocked by the entity. Every gen that's red is being worked by the survivors. Notice that all of them are white, which is very good news. It 
doesn't make any sense. Oh, never mind. Oh, never mind. I just... I thought they were all white. Am I stupid? Um, this guy is nearly stalked. I'm pretty sure it's him. Can I get him? Or does he beat me to that window? I'm not gonna get him. So if I hit him, he will lose that 99 stock. I'm gonna go for someone else. Uh, I think I know where everybody is. Oh, interesting. Oh, that dude. That jolt is huge. And in fact, I'm gonna... There's a window here. I'm gonna drop because I'm pretty sure this guy's gonna be here. Where are you? I hear steps above me. There you go. 99 to 100 and down. And spawn. <laughs> and down. Uh, can I pick up this lady though? Did she go through the window? Yeah, she did. Let's pick her up first. The person on the hook, because they decided to do gents with our friends, uh, hit stage 2, which is good. Trillion Tremors is on cool now. Uh, Whispers is on. It will always be on when you're around hooks of hours and stuff. So right now it's telling me nothing. Uh, but now, uh, through and Tremors, uh, it's probably gonna tell me what I already know, that no gems being worked on. But it also, like, it means that they can't finish a gem that's like 99%, so... It also, on top of giving you information, gives you a bit of stall. Right, I'm gonna pretend to go for this lady, but in reality, I'm gonna sit right here, because this guy, or girl, is gonna be in front of me... ...in two seconds. Right? No? Well, that works too. Uh, I might eat a DS here. But that's okay. Yeah, she's having four green shit. Oh, it was still a good jolt. We hit two or three gems. Uh, oh, hello. Yeah, I'll take this trade. That's fair. Hello, Jono. What's up? Can I do a little stalking on you? Yeah, I don't want to hit him now because it will be BT. But I can do this. Oh my god, the lean. Yeah, you need to get to an object like this. The strangest thing ever. You need to get to a tall object like this or crouch near a small one and then lean. But unfortunately the lean, I thought they fixed it, but it's like dedicated. It's like server based. It's not like client based. So sometimes you begin to lean off something and then it cancels. It's very annoying. And I wish I could tell you that I know exactly how to prevent it or something. He's already healed up. Damn. I'm going to, I'm going to bring my volume up a bit. I have a hard time believing they don't want to do this gen. Anytime you have uh, high places, you can always use them as a stalking point. So in this hill, for example, I could come right here and stalk them and the rescuer really quickly. And I might want to do that, actually. If I have... Oh, hold up. I think they're coming. Good enough. A person that has been fully stalked cannot reveal you, by the way. So this guy cannot reveal me. That lady could. Pretend to do this? Wait, to oh, she's he's actually waiting. I see his shadow. Uh, I have a full minute. I'm pretty sure I catch him. Even without breaking this. Do I catch him now, though? That's the question. Uh, close enough. Oh, smart. Uh... Ah! I was gonna say, damn, dude, that was a good mind game. I'll pick up right away. I'm not even gonna break this ball, honestly. I just want to throw in trauma right away. Um, yeah, I thought every gem was white last time because I didn't see their color. Okay, yeah, I think they're on everything. It's uh, yeah, just in that one. We're at two gems though. We're not, we're not thriving too much right now. We need to kill Jill. I mean, not Jill. Uh, which girl? Michaela. This is gonna be Michaela though. This is Jill. Oh, that's pr that's pretty huge. Literally, if I go back to the hook right now, two people are 99 and cannot rescue safely, and one person is injured, who also cannot rescue safely. So that might be a play to stick around these gems. Just make sure you don't get revealed by the person from the hook or anyone else. Oh. This is Mikaela? No. Jill. Yeah. That's not good. Jill is on her second. Life. It's a good thing we didn't swing. Actually, maybe if we had swung, we would have been fine. All right. Uh, that's the people that don't hold. Though. Surely that's some pressure. Um, I'm actually gonna wait two seconds. Uh, I wait one second, give them a bit of time, but also have info so I know what I'm doing. 
I'm gonna guess if the Michaela healed, the Michaela rescued, and then she healed the other person, and this is the other person. Whispers off, no one close. This is the um, Hadi. I don't want I don't want the Hadi really. But hey, we'll take it. Is now everyone that on hook? Yeah. Would an eruption and Zone pair well together? Eruption is a nemesis perk. So yeah, it would. It got, they kinda of would. But, but maybe on a killer that can kick around and, and do stuff like Freddy, yeah. You could down a person, then he gets reduced, then he gets blocked while you teleport. Yeah, yeah, it could it could work on Freddy. Someone needs to die right now, we play way too nice. Hello lady. Oh, that's huge. Well, maybe not so huge. Oof, I figured. Well then, well, that's a bit of a waste because that person's Mark. Uh, we could have left at 99. Those two guys on that gem are gonna be... Yeah, well, we, we don't need to turn us all that. Uh, but if we go for Jill now, we have a pretty good counter of what a Diaz is, so... Let's see if we find her blood. Alright, Whispers is on, but it could be the person on the hook. Whispers is off, yeah. If Whispers is off, don't bother checking lockers or anything. These two will be there and they might pop that gen. Might even be a strat to just let them- Oh, never mind, one of them run away. Maybe Spine Chill? I hear someone. Ha! <laughs> they have a boon, I didn't remember. Hmm. Honestly, dudes, I don't know. Okay, going sideways. We're gonna do a little mind game here. We keep going, we go back, we wait here. And he's actually pretty good at waiting. Well, relatively okay at waiting. We have Bloodlust. If he doesn't have that heart, he's dead. Oh, but he did have that heart. There's no way he falls for this a third time. Dude, I'm so Bloodlusted. I just want the kill. Oh my god! Alright, I'm out. I'm out. I'm literally gonna lose the game here. Oh, where's Hattie? Mm, oh, he's in the middle of nowhere, actually. He's got a pallet and that's it. I'm bloodless too, bro. I'm so fucking fast. Put that hard, though. Alright, we'll know where they are. Oh, why don't you stealth for the no red stain? Uh, because if I if you use stealth, you can drop your red stain, which can help mind game in some places. But then when you down or miss or get revealed, you're not gonna have your power for 20 something seconds, right? We do have the brown add-on, which is kind of nice. Uh, so I wanted to make sure that after I down him, I still have my power in case Hattie shows up and I stalk her or something. Push was on. Hi, Jill. What's up? Oh, yeah, that's good. Yeah, we definitely thrive in survivors not knowing exactly what we're doing. I think this match had a bit of everything you can do with Ghostface. Uh, but, you know, the point that you make of uh, using your power in a chase just to lose your redstone is pretty good. You don't need to do things like this to hide them. Uh, alternatively, in rock loops like these, well, it's not really a rock loop. But let's say that this loop was a little bit bigger, right? Let's say that it was anything other than this crumbly, crusty... Uh, Wall. You can actually sometimes like crouch and uncrouch just 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 quickly like this You know just just for the survivor to lose sight of you for like half a second and then do a oh, oh I'm going like I'm going left. No, I'm going right in in that moment when the, where they lose their momentum You can get a hit many times But I think this map is a bad example. The loops are either all too big or too small and there's no in between You didn't forget to mention teabag. What do the add-ons do? Uh, one of them makes me stalk them a little bit faster. Uh, very, very useful. Very generally very useful. And the other one makes me get my power back six seconds sooner. And the, the, the power comes back after you get stunned, successful hit, missed attack, or get revealed. It's always the same. So in every situation, if I'm doing good, bad, in between, it helps me. For a brown add-on, it's one of the best add-ons in the game. For its variety anyway. So, yeah, awesome. Uh, what else am I talking about? Yeah. So you can lean from something low if you crouch, you can lean from something tall. 
and you can you can keep the thing as long as it's you can you can do this. Here's the problem, right? If I lean like this, let's say I'm trying to stalk a survivor that is that gen. This would be good. Because they wouldn't see my whole body. And I would be able to stalk them. As long as I see just a few pixels. Problem is if you do this. If you do this and you're like... If they can, if they can see your crotch, that's bad. You're, ex you're going to be exposed in a bad way. They're going to reveal you. If your crotch is behind cover... Yeah, just imagine that they have a nerf gun and they're aiming at your crotch. Oh, hi. Um, you, want, you want to protect. So, this would be good. Imagine that pillar is a survivor. This would be great. This would be good. This would be good. At this point, boom, you get revealed. And once you begin to get revealed, even if you go out of cover, it happens really quickly. So, yeah. You want to be very careful. Whispers is off, so this survivor is nowhere near. I could close this and with Whispers, check from gate to gate until Whispers is on and then we would find her 100%. We could also just wait right here and spook the heck out of her. <laughs> Now beginner friendly ghosts and who would you recommend him? He's def definitely uh, tough. He he's simple mechanically, okay? He doesn't have any super difficult power. Oh my god, you need to charge and throw this and charge this and pick this up. But the problem is, you need to have a good awareness of how survivors move and what their camera looks like. Because if I hide behind this little box and a survivor, you know, on top of a building reveals me, I'm gonna be like, what the heck? Where are they? I don't get this. You know? But you need to understand how they move, you need to understand spawns a little bit, you need to... You will not use the stealth very well if you just use your stealth and go, you know, corner to corner and like, Oh, is that ever... I got you, Claudette! Oh, that was a bird. Yeah. Uh, hi, Virgie. There are some great guides on YouTube explaining how to use whispers. Um, there's one by Tofu that I highly recommend. But if not, I'll make one myself. No worries, man. Uh, lady. Uh, also, you can use your power near survivors on the ground and if you get revealed it will tell you where they are coming from um i kind of want to give her this but yeah she's nearby somewhere you can get it dude uh, maybe i can show you what it looks like maybe they're in the building or something um but i'll go here they can get the hatch i'm trying to think of other things i forgot chat what are some other things i forgot um Survivors glow red the more you stalk them. Look at the HUD when you stalk to make sure that you stalk them properly. And don't stalk too little, too much. Um, oh, you lose collision when you stalk. So, I don't know. That's not super useful all the time. But if a survivor is body blocking and you have your power, you can just use, use it. And go right through them. Very similar to Myers. Uh, whispers off. Oh, yeah. Oh, you wait, we're lying wait then. <laughs> oh. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> a subscribe with try and activate it. Hi, Kanlin. Yeah, you absolutely can, and it's gonna be appreciated, but you don't ever have to. Thank you. Is it better to stalk hearing a survivor or interrupt them? Uh, it depends. If I see two survivors, I think the best idea is to go like this and stalk them both to 99 and then attack one of them. Uh, if, if one of the survivors that I really, really want is being healed, then screw it. Just go and interrupt them, you know? Depends on what you want. Hey, you can get this, lady. This is my car. Yeah, yeah, now you can. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point, that's a good point. Um, uh, there's not that much about Ghostface. Uh, he can stalk through very small gaps, so be very creative. If you can go on top of a roof, or sorry, on top of a building, look through some cracks, like uh, little sh little shack openings and stuff, you can absolutely do that. So yeah, uh, GG's, cute Hattie, so cute. Hi, hi, power. Thank you. Is it ever worth having a staring contest with Ghostface? If a, if you can tell that a Ghostface doesn't stalk properly and you can reveal him for your teammates, good. But staring in a 1v1, if the ghost face is any decent, you're going to lose. He's only going to let you stare at him when he knows that you're like 80%. And if you try to stare at him, he's going to finish uh, finish off the mark. So no, typically, like right now, ghost face after the update, his add-ons are better, but he's a bit easier to reveal, okay? I'm not going to lie. Right now, even I, who have played a lot of ghost face, even I lose staring contests. But especially in the past, and especially as you get better and better at ghost face, Anytime a Swabra tries to win at a staring contest, quote unquote, you, you typically beat them. So watch out. Be careful. And I think that's pretty much it. You guys remember anything I've, I missed? I hopefully uh, covered everything. Let's move on to the next seller.
All right, it's time for the Demogorgon. If you own the Demogorgon, congratulations. At least as of the time of this video, he's no longer in the game as purchasable. Some people still own it from before. Some people just buy keys from the internet. Or maybe one day he'll return, bless him. Uh, but right now, this game, this is a, this character is not available in the game. But if you are playing him and you want to get better, uh, well, let's try to help you out. <laughs> uh, this is the Demogorgon. Uh, he's a normal killer, normal terror radius with a unique, very cool song. Normal lunch, normal everything. Um, so it's very easy to transition into and from when you know the basic killer stuff. Uh, but on top of that, he has two unique things to him. He has portals that he can place on the ground and he can detect survivors uh, with these portals and traverse between them. And it kind of like makes a ripple in reality. He goes through them um, and teleports from one to another. Very cool. And then he has the ability to shred uh, which launches himself forward extremely fast and this is a damaging attack that will damage survivors for one health state And he can also eat up pallets. He can shred through pallets and that's it But you have a killer that on average is not the best at anything, but he's also Surprisingly well-rounded. He has a bit of chase a bit of mobility a bit of stealth because when you come out of a portal You don't have a terror radius for a couple seconds and a little bit of information gathering from his portals and, and so on. So overall, very decent killer to learn, very fun, very balanced, no one will hate you for being OP, and you will never feel like you're completely worthless because he's a fairly decent, balanced killer. Uh, we're gonna use what used to be his own perk, Fearmonger, and Joel, he's also what used to be his own perk, to, I guess, keep survivors on gems. Clubby Butch is alright, but it doesn't work on the Shred attack, so, hmm. We could run something else, I suppose. We could run Bitter Murmur and... No it, perhaps, to give us a chance at the end game. Yeah, not my favorite perk on him, but... Yeah. What are some add-ons that you can never go wrong with? Uh, faster cooldowns, you can never go wrong with. You use this, your shreds have a shorter cooldown, which is awesome. You use this, Breaking Palace has a shorter cooldown. Super good, super basic. Um... Yeah, honestly, I've. it's not going to give you any bad um, habits or anything, so I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Let's use this and talk about his power a bit more at length once we load into our game. Alright, so someone pointed out with very good judgment that the demo can not only shred through pallets, he can also shred through breakable walls. So yeah, much like the Chinso killers that we covered earlier, uh, your shred, if you aim it directly at a breakable wall or a pallet, will absolutely shred it, which is about as fast as breaking it normally if you're close, and definitely faster if you do it from afar. So it's it's very advantageous. Like if you get stunned by a pallet, you can just press space, break it normally. But if you if a pallet's already down and you have your shred ready up, then go right through. It will save you a lot of time, especially with the add-ons that we have. They send us to the RPD, which is a cute map. Um, I'm gonna place my portals on one end. Uh, you know what? I, I anticipate that they're gonna break one of them. So I'm gonna place two. Uh, these portals are now white, which means that they're inactive. They don't do anything. They don't detect anything. Um, that's fine. If you make any kind of noise, survivors immediately hear a, a sound effect. Like a monstrous uh, sound. So try not to do... Michaela, where are you going? Friend? Okay, just normal attacks, sure. We could have done a special attack there and recover faster, but you know, let's just practice the normal stuff. She's gonna drop it, I guess. Right. So that, my guys, is a bit is a shred. It works very similar to Huntress. You hold M2 and you prepare it. You walk a bit slower while you do it, and then you press M1 and you release it. You can also stop holding M2, and in this case, that would cancel it. I'm gonna keep this. Ready. Oh, what am I? Oh, I'm stuck on these boxes. I, I will try to put another portal on the top of the other side. It's easy to go from top to bottom. From bottom to top, not so easy. Uh, that hit, that girl hit stage two for some crazy reason. And we're probably gonna lose a gen over there. Also, Demogorgon can fly. Never mind. There's an invisible wall there. If you're on a hill and you use your power off the hill, it's actually a pretty neat way. Uh, it's actually a pretty neat way to gain distance. So uh, that's really cute. Alright, uh, this survivor has a window here. I'm gonna pretend I'm stupid as hell. Alright then, I'll show my red light. Oh, never mind. He's good, chat. 
<laughs> Alright, prepare my attack and let go. Much like Clown and Huntress, uh, the demo shred charges up over time. Uh, I don't know the exact number, so forgive me, but I'm pretty sure that after one second of full charge, you go very far. Check it out. Whoa! That's really far. If you do it immediately... Hold up. It's more like a baby shred. You can do a baby shred if you want to get rid of a pallet right away. You might as well just do it as fast as possible. But if you're trying to catch a survivor on the very last possible frame, you want to do a fully charged one. Like that. Oh, well, maybe in this case we would have been better off not doing that. Hello. All right, can you show us an example of a fully charged shred? There you go. I'll let him be. I'll let him be. He's just gonna hook at me. Oh yeah, that, uh, what's her name? That Yui did a really smart, uh, juke. There, people will do this constantly at Windows. And one of your, the first things that you'll need to learn is how to not fall for it. If you see a survivor run towards a window, you could, you will be like, ah, ah. But be careful, because they can just juke last second. If they have an item though, it's, oh, I got stuck. It's very easy. Look at their item. Look at the item. Look at the item. You see how it disappears? If you notice that the item disappears, that means that they've already pressed space. And it's a good idea to do it. Okay. Oh. Okay. I'm just gonna do a special attack just because. Uh, I'll place a portal here and I'm gonna break it. Alright. I'm now going to use my portal to go from point A to point B. Very close. During this time, I'm undetectable. And for a few seconds uh, later, as you can... Uh, as you can see by the edges of the screen, I'm still undetectable. Hello, Yui? Are you here? But after that, you have the terrorists again, like normal. And honestly, uh, once a portal is yellow and you've already used it to come in or come out of it, it becomes active. And if you hold your power and there's a survivor on it, you'll hear a heartbeat, but it seems like no one's on it. All right, let's go to this side of the map. Hello. If I'm out of the on the pilot itself, I might as well just be. Do we feel bad for this Jake at all? Mm. No. Survivors can hear you and yeah. physically see you come out of a lock mm. of a active portal. Oh. It's not invisible. It is invisible only if it's white. And it becomes visible once you start coming out. Uh, he definitely had time to react to that. I have no clue what he was on. What was that drop? I don't know. I think Jake needs help. You don't want to place all of your portals because uh, you cannot get them back unless survivors break them, which they can do. Oh, you know what that means. When the survivor is act uh, actively destroying your portal, they don't hear your terror radius. Hello. Okay. I, could, I probably could have just done a normal attack. Not a lot of breakable walls or pallets broken so far. Are you uh, literally in here, girl? Okay. Uh, she's dead, by the way. She hit stage two for some crazy reason. Uh, let's not hook in the middle, because that's a really nice hook that we probably will need at some point. I'm gonna hook here so that we lose this one. But yeah, when should you M1? When should you M2? Uh, if you have certain perks or add-ons that might influence your decision, I'm gonna say. If you have a clean, normal hit, just do a normal hit. With a normal hit, the cooldown uh, is about the same. After the future patch, it will be shorter, and you get to move around and, and have a better visibility. Uh, you might have noticed that when you use the shred, your visibility is a bit different. Like, look, my camera, even though I'm like spamming left to right, my camera is semi-fixed. If I do a normal basic attack, my camera is perfectly fine. I can spin around as much as I like. Oh, sorry. Anytime survivor do, does this, just prepare your shred. Okay. Hello. <laughs> sorry, that's fine. There you go. And what are some more things that are important to say? Uh, strategy that is not a horrible idea ever. Yeah. Near the end of the game. Oh, oh you are the healed? Damn, don't, I'm like, there's no way anyone's body blocking me here. Near the end of the game, you can place active portals near gens. And then just the mere uh, channeling of your power, just the mere charging of the shred, will give you 
an idea of where they are, like this. So when you have three gems, you can put a portal or two near one of them. To try to harass, uh, to, to try to gather information and harass them if they go there. Right, I'm gonna pretend to go here, but I'm gonna cut her off. Hello. Oh, really? Well, that's exciting. Uh, okay. I am a I don't think she makes that. I think she'll go left. Yep. It's totally okay to just bait her like we did. Sometimes it's more powerful than the actual thing. Uh, you see what I mean? Where I can control my camera during the cooldown? Uh, and chat, what are some of the important things that you can do? You can put a portal through a wall so that they don't see it right away. Uh, if multiple survivors cleanse a portal, they do it a bit faster. Uh, and then you get it back. You kind of place them too close to gates or other stuff, but it's still useful. You can shred upstairs. Oh, yeah! Yeah, yeah, yeah. You will... This is completely fine. Uh, like, type locations, like, say, this, are dead sentences. Uh, so, survivors will typically try to avoid them or use that hard or something. If you chase a survivor in here, I guess you can see. And also, going downstairs is totally possible. It's a bit awkward, but it's possible. And as I said, if you're on a hill... Um, I saw a survivor here, didn't I? If you're on a hill, you can use the elevation. Uh, will this work? I don't know. Nah, it's not. It's not telling off. But yeah. Um, I think I think I know a place that doesn't have a that doesn't have a um, invisible barrier. Hold up. I'll try to show you what it looks like when you use your power off a hill. Uh, it's really powerful to put a portal on top of a hill so that you can teleport there and then immediately swing whatever. All right, this isn't incredible or anything, but. Yeah, well, you, you can see more or less. There's a, there might be a better one here. Hold up. Yeah, this is much better. <laughs> I'm gonna break that lamp. Eh, you get the idea, hopefully. <laughs> there's a, there's some, there's some invisible barriers in some main buildings, but for the most part, kills are fine. And all right. One really dirty thing I could do in a map like this is put a portal right on this doorway, right? And teleport to another, to the other gate. Let's say it's there. And now do this. If I do, if I constantly channel my power, any person going through that or nearby will be detected. So it looks like we might actually get away with that. We'll shred. No, shred is a special attack, my guys. Uh, so unfortunately, if you shred, you do not apply sloppy butcher. You do not apply know it. You do not apply uh, basic attack stuff, you don't apply, no. You will apply... Uh, I mean, you benefit from the add-ons, though, which is nice, I guess. Alright, so... Right now, I have some extra portals, so I can just... I'm just gonna set down real quick. This is a white portal, it's inactive, so... It doesn't detect anything, but we have it uh, ready. And if I hear a heartbeat... I just look at that portal, press left control on top of this portal, and we go there. And that's pretty much guaranteed that they can't escape in this map in particular. When are you holding shred? Don't spam left click or else it will cancel it. Oh, really? Oh, nice. They found... They found the hatch or whatever? Nice of them. But the gates are empowered. Oh, I, I thought I had closed the hatch. My bad, chat. Well, hopefully you get the idea. <laughs> Damn, they had good toolboxes. I don't know what the hell... What's up with them, though? You can suggest and want some perks? Hi, Murder. No, I'll have a video with proper builds. But if you are looking for something, I mean, this is decent to get you started, I guess. Um, hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of tricks. Uh, the one notable thing that I haven't explained. Uh, some collisions are actually kind of good for demo. So, in some maps, for example, where Blight slides, or where Hillbilly slides, you can use demo to glide around cars and hit survivors, but that's more advanced stuff. And I'm sure you'll figure it out in, in other videos on by yourself. Uh, is there anything else you think I missed, chat? Thank you, guys. Yeah, all of these will be in a video, don't worry. Uh, Pillow of Food is not a very good perk on him, no, he doesn't need it. 
faking a pallet with strat? Yeah, yeah, you can pretend to be like, okay, I'm gonna break it and then cancel and catch someone else. It's a really good trick. Demo can bait picking someone up. Yeah, that's true. You can you can start to put down a, a, a portal and that looks the same as an animation of picking up. So you can do that to bait someone with a flashy. Yeah, pretty good idea. Pretty good idea. Don't forget that sometimes you can shred ahead of a survivor and body block a window or an exit gate with your body by launching yourself forward. Uh, hopefully, with all of that, you have a decent side demo. Let's move on to the next one. Alright, so we've reached the Oni, who is extremely angry all of the time, so... I'm going to pull up the hook model, so that he calms down a little bit. Uh, the Oni, he has two modes. Normal mode and very angry, very angry demon mode. In normal mode, he's literally a normal killer. 32 meter terror radius, 115%, normal lunge, normal terror radius with his own unique uh, music and so on. So, pretty much the same as a Trapper, Michael Myers, Wraith, whatever, what have you. Uh, the really spicy thing comes when he hits survivors and they go from healthy to injured, and he gains blood, and then he collects blood that survivors um, um, drop when they are injured. So no matter how a survivor gets injured, whether it's no miter or you hit in them, they begin to drop blood orbs. And you can collect these little pellets and you charge yourself up, much like Myers. When you're fully charged, you can activate it and then he goes into demon mode. He changes from his uh, sword into his cannibal, like this. And now his attacks can break pallets quickly, much like the chainsaw killers. Uh, same with breakable walls. And if you charge them slightly, they also insta down. If you charge them slightly, they also hit multiple times. So two survivors unhooking each other, you could hit them both potentially. And on top of that, he can now do a sprint into an attack. Which plays very much like a, like a hillbilly. But it's kind of better because you don't, you don't bump into anything. You can run into things. And just like Billy has a flick at the start... The Oni has a flick at the end of this that you can do. So if a survivor gets behind a corner, you can run at them and then hit around the corner in a 90 degree-ish uh, fashion when you have your power and insta down them, which is pretty damn huge. Uh, so yeah, basically he's a normal killer. When he gets powered up, he becomes a monster and can very quickly deal with survivors. We unfortunately don't have a lot of great perks uh, if we just go with the ones that he comes with. Um... But yeah, since we have whispers to find, I'll just have Blood Echo. You never know. It's not the best on him. He doesn't get everyone injured all the time, but uh, maybe we'll get some value out of it. it it's a really nice perk. It makes survivors um, exhausted if they're injured. As for add-ons, uh, you really can't go wrong with the faster activation and deactivation. And some of these add-ons barely do anything. Uh, they're not super exciting. Um, but you can't go wrong with duration. There's like three durations, you can't go wrong with either of them, so we'll use one of them. We'll, we'll bring a cake as well, and we're gonna start up. Uh, unlike other killers, uh, the Oni is not extremely macro heavy. You don't need to control a point or pick up a power and then deploy it. It's, it's more about understanding how to use his massive mobility when you get it and how to use his burst of powers and chase effectively. So it's a kill that you need to practice with a lot, and hopefully some of the do's and don'ts and, and obvious mistakes I'll help you avoid. Let's uh, load into the game now, chat. Uh, right, so as you can imagine, you, you need 100 points to get your power, and you get 40 for a hit on a healthy survivor. You don't get any for injuring uh, an out-of-the-injured survivor. Uh, or hitting them if they have borrowed time. So you want to hit healthy survivors at the start. And if you get one, that's 40. And if you get two, that's 80. And with the passive recharge and that you get over time, and with the blood that you pick up, if you have two hits, you get your power pretty much right away. Problem. Sometimes survivors will identify that you're an Oni and will work against you. They don't want to give you a first hit. So, smart survivors against Oni will play extremely safe. They will drop extremely good pallets. Uh, that can be okay for a little bit, but it's probably not worth it to get rid of four pallets and lose four gens. So, our strategy, yes, get rid of a pallet or two, sure, but our strategy is to try to find the one salesman that will sell us blood. And we're in a very awkward map for that. <laughs> All right, uh, let's try to cut off immediately to the, to the middle, see if we can catch someone awkwardly sitting somewhere. Last time was really useful. 
This time. Oh! Oh, no way. Alright, so that's one already. Awesome. Uh, I will follow her and pick up blood on the way. Ideally, you have other perks to let you know where all the survivors are and everything, but... This is a pretty safe uh, strategy of just picking up blood as survivors go. If you make a survivor do extra actions, like drop a pallet, you see... or vault. It's actually really useful. Look how much blood this woman has generated. You also get a little bit of extra when you hook her. So we're probably gonna lose a gen from the three people that just sat on a gen when they spawned, but we already have our power. We're not gonna use it yet, of course. Uh, you, you lose it uh, on a timer of 45-ish seconds. And also if you pick up, so we're just gonna save it. And see if we can catch someone off guard. It would be awesome if we found someone here. Well, that's three people. I'm gonna guess some of them are gonna go upstairs and through here. Let's see if we can... Oh, damn. Never mind, never mind. Uh, change the plans. There's someone here. We can stop this gen. What? I've just been gaslighted. Uh, that gen sounded like it was being worked on. Did I say someone's aura? I sure did. Alright, let's run. Hold them too. Damn. Damn. Okay, that was... That was a lot to take in. I'm just gonna pick up right away. Uh, you lose a bit of power when you use your power over time, and you also lose a bit when you down someone. Unless they give you a grab or something, which would be awesome. But yeah, let's just be happy with that. When a survivor gets uncooked, they don't drop any blood orbs, and while you are in demon mode, they also don't drop any blood orbs. So right now, we're not gonna get any blood orbs for a little while. Oh, unless we hit this lady. Alright, if we break this right now, she should be completely... ...boxed in. There you go, that's my power again. Um, right. Ah, I'm very sorry, but someone has to go and someone has to go. Alright, good judgment probably not to rescue. I'm gonna charge in two. That's how you run. And there's a few tricks you can do to make, uh... Okay, I'm gonna hold the attack. Oh my god, this girl was actually insane. That was really smart. Make no mistake, that was a great play. I'm gonna cancel. I think she ran behind me again, but I'm not even sure. Wow, this called that. Oh, there's a lot to explain, man. There's a lot to explain. But basically, if you do a normal quick attack, you'll do a quick attack that is doesn't count like a like a normal attack, but does everything a normal attack does. You need to charge it for a little bit longer for it to insta down. Uh, I guess at the end of the game, I can show you the difference. And if you hold it a long time, you have an, an extended launch. The launch goes really far, but it also does not get cancelled. Oh, cool. Can I pick up some blood? Cool, cool, cool. Uh, don't forget that anytime you hook someone, there's two blood orbs that appear. It's only them attacking. No, you cannot drag his tentacle, but you can you cannot drag his uh, cannibal. But you can certainly uh, flick it. It's like a reverse Billy. You can flick it at the end, and you saw me do that on the first down a bit. But I guess it happened really quickly, so it's... It'll take a bit to explain. Okay, my power is almost there. Your power doesn't automatically fill up to 100, but it stays at 98. Alright, let's just make her drop this ball up. Very good by them. Ooh, that was really gritty. That hard? No. Blood Echo makes them exhausted, but this girl wasn't injured, so I don't think she was affected. Anyway. Let's hook her in the middle, so it's very awkward for them. We see all of the pallets and all of the windows uh, because of Zanshin, his own perk. I think Zanshin is an amazing perk for beginners. If, when you take it off, you'll remember where those windows are. And you'll learn the maps and you'll learn which places you've been to, which places don't have pallets, which pallet you already dropped but didn't break, etc, etc, etc. I think it's really good. This guy's healed. This gen here is done. I don't think they have any reason to be here. I might have actually taken a really bad path. Alright, maybe time to go. Is she going herself or am I still? I could use my power, but if they begin to hide, I generally will lose it so quickly. Not a good idea. Oh, that's better. Hello. Let me get a good line of sight and then I use my power. All right. You hold them too and you immediately start to run really quickly as soon as it's charged up. But there are some tricks to it. Uh, you can steer yourself. Not perfectly. 
Uh, you don't need to hold the forward button to run. And in fact, it's a bad idea to hold it if you want to slow yourself down. If you want to slow yourself down... Really? That's the 90 degree flip. Uh, basically, I don't even use QE, I just use my mouse. When you hold them two, and you press them one, you do the little slam. And right as you press it, you hold it, and you move right, right, or, uh, right or left, and you do a 90 degree turn like that. Alright, they're doing pretty great. Honestly, this gen wasn't nothing pretty much, and they finished it during this whole time. Alright, let's see if we can tell the claw that's apart, because they all look exactly the same. And I did not bother to remember which one is which. Okay. I think that's a drop. Whoa, you're so brave. Alright. Uh, power back up in a second. Boop. What? They heal her so fast. That has to be two claw that's... That has to be the two of them. You, no, that was too fast. There's three people right up here. I bet my life on it, and that gen has progress. I'm using my power right now. Yikes. Oh my god, that was fast. There she is. She's gonna drop. Ah, uh, screw you, dude. Don't care. Hit me with it. She goes, she has DS, I don't care. I picked a couple blood herbs, and I'll catch her again. I'm gonna be played cheeky like this. Oh, you're kidding. Oh, never mind. I'm fine. She had spin burst? The hell? She's fast? Oh, that hurt. Not gonna lie, that hurt. She's really smart. Notice that survivors that are smart will try to go, like, in circles and be young things. Because if they go in a straight line, I can follow them very easily. If they move around corners and stuff, it's really hard to catch up, actually. Really good. I'm good at this, though. I'm pretty sure. Wait. Oh my god, this girl's actually really smart. Oh? That was a bug! I actually saw her through the wall. The map didn't load in. Alright, well. Uh, what claw is this? Is it numbered one, two, three? Oh, we'll find out. Uh, let's see if we can find a place where they've been working on Jen's injury or something. Oh, that's really good. Uh, one more... No, well, um, there's two gems. Maybe I want to be here. Well, Hawks, I'm sorry. Sorry, I didn't mean to. That Diaz and Neo was silly, but uh, it's not like we didn't know what was happening. You slow yourself down while you collect the orbs, and you can collect more than you need. So if you see a blood, uh, if you see a blood pool of like 500 orbs, don't don't spam M2. Just collect the ones that you need and nothing else. I think this girl knows what she's doing. Oh, okay, never mind. I'll take her back. She's dead. Let's kill her fast. Maybe we catch someone else. Uh, can you still do the flick tech by looking up? Yes, but that's more of an advanced one. Uh, if you hold... Uh, yeah, if you do a very certain uh, trick with your mouse, you can do a more than 90 degree hit. She's not even dead? Alright. Oh, that's disgusting. Uh, well, someone was certainly here. Hold up. Huh. Well, this time I don't want to play nice, honestly. Can we get some blood up somewhere? Mm, almost. There you go. They can hear that sound, by the way, map wide. Watch out. Uh, what's the exit on that side? It was, yeah. Uh, honestly, I think they're just gonna open the gate and leave. Which will be fine. We have plenty of hooks on everyone. Sorry, just making sure I'm not missing clouds anywhere. Because I'm pretty sure one of them wasn't too far from here. And he's still locked in here with us. But we'll see. Oh, hello. Absolutely. This probably will go down, likely. Ooh, smart. Good timing, too. I think that was a mistake. I think she'll go down here. Oh my god, she found a little nook and cranny. To hide behind. Nice, this call that is great, dude. Smart player. You see, you see how they play. Well, that's some of the things you'll have to deal with, I guess. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Not not a horrible idea there to just breed over. Couldn't tell. Uh, I think it's gonna be a trade, my guys. Right. So that's as little. That's how little you can charge it to still down. 
if you don't charge the M1 like that, it will be a different animation. You will not insta down. Um, maybe I can get a bit more blood and show you. Oops. I'll play by that monster. Um, I'm gonna go out. I normally would just stay here. Uh, I want to see if I can get my power and, and show you some of the things. Another thing that you can do if you want to slow down is not tap forward while you hold your power and instead tap side to side. A and D, A and D, A and D. This makes the game think that you're turning and it slows yourself down in place. And notice that sometimes it's a good idea to just run into objects, right? So I use my power here and I run into this, run into this. Oh, left, right, left, right. And then I come from the right and bam, hit with, with my power, obviously, not, not without. Uh, I don't think I have enough to show you, sorry. For some reason, we just really didn't get that much blood. All right, let's see if they give us a hit here somewhere. Can I have a, can I have a quick one? I wouldn't be too happy with uh, Unlucky, we don't have enough. But yeah, in a, in a loop like this, it's a really good idea, unlike Billy, to run into the loop itself and get yourself stuck so that the swabber has to guess which side you are coming from. Uh, and eventually you can come from one and flick into the other, and with some tricks, they will have a really, really hard time, honestly, avoiding it. Why are you guys too? Right? I don't know what they're up. Uh, Ops, can you bypass my swap with daily rituals? Uh, no, the rituals are are not. Uh, like if you claim them, I can show you. I'll, I'm pretty sure they don't go past the million. But yeah, uh, you know, some people are winning games, are escaping for the first time ever, so... We'll be patient with them. <laughs> ever since you finished this streak. Thank you, Amir. Well, yeah, obviously. Why not? Yeah. I bet you cry on the forums when it happens to you. Yeah, why not, right? Why not? <laughs> uh, yes, yes. We all love it when the other side is cocky. Uh, really sad. Uh, pff, chat, what are some things that we forgot about Oni? Mm, if you grab survivors, you don't lose your power as much. His add-ons are complex, go watch the add-on video for more info. I think we are, we about covered it. We about covered it. Dun -dun -dun -dun. Uh, next up, the Deathslinger. He's a bit of a hybrid killer. He does have the normal lunge and terror radius uh, of other killers. Similar height, he's on terror radius music, but he's actually slower. He moves at the same speed as Huntress, Spirit, Hag, and so on. And thus, you cannot just play him the same way you play other killers. You actually need to think about his power constantly and use it constantly and be smart about when and when uh, when you actually commit and when you just fake it and, and wait it out. Uh, his power is the Redeemer. It's this big harpoon gun that he shoots forward. Uh, the Redeemer has a range of 18 meters, which is a ton. It's really, really far, but it also doesn't travel at max speed. It travels at like a actual speed. So from afar, hitting survivors is really hard. From up close, it's very easy and very consistent. You hit them and then you reel them towards you and then you can hit them. And this will do one state of damage. Uh, also, the first hit that you do, or if they break your chain, it's very much like lesion. They get deep wound. So you can also have a bit of slowdown on the side a little bit. And that's pretty much it. You just play him normally in some places and aim his gun and shoot at survivors and reel him towards you. You cannot, heal, uh, you cannot hit a survivor through a pallet, which is pretty critical, but you can hit them through windows. So if you drag a survivor in front of a window after they vaulted, you can hit them right through. And that's a big part of playing him. We're going to use his own perk, Deadman Switch, his own perk, Gearhead, which will let us know where some people are sometimes. If we have hexes, we can use Attribution, but we don't. We're just going to use the, the common Sloppy Butcher and common Jolt. They're pretty decent. If you don't know what add-ons to go for, you cannot go wrong with reload speed and with miss cooldown. These add-ons are a bit forgiven for beginners, and these add-ons are good anytime you need to reload. So I'll use these two add-ons, and we'll bring a cake. And off we go. Actually, we can spend a bit of time and bring a proper cake. Let's do that and queue into it again. Right, um, so while we're loading in, some people mentioned uh, some interesting things. Can you use a crosshair on Deathslinger to aim better? I mean, yeah, if you put a little gummy bear on your TV screen, or if you have a crosshair, if you're on PC, you can do it. And I don't think it's illegal or anything. 
Uh, but unfortunately, there's no in-game option to turn it on. So yeah, do that. Is the Slinger playable on console? Absolutely. But he's not quite as nice as on PC when you can have a very crisp and smooth aim, especially if you have a background in playing like FPS games. Uh, but he's still he's still very playable on all the platforms, don't worry. You don't need crazy aim and flicks. Uh, for the most part, you can wait at the right times and shoot at the right times. And it's mostly about prediction and, and reaction rather than like precise pixel perfect accuracy. Okay. Right, we just played a, a match of um, of Deathslinger, but we played so poorly and the match went by so quick. Uh, it really was a bad example. Uh, as I said in the previous one though, remember that you're, you're a slower than usual killer that slows themselves down when they reload and they shoot and they do anything. Uh, and you have a normal terror radius. Even though it has its own little um, melody, survivors will hear it from afar. You want to make sure you immediately go to where you think survivors or many survivors will be. And don't mess around too much. If they ever give you a free hit, like it looks like this will be, take it. Because then you won't need to reload. And if right now this girl makes a stupid move, she goes down very quickly. What? That was fast. Uh, this girl is kind of... Yeah, she just played herself, I feel. Okay, this is a great example. You shoot someone as soon as you see them go through the window. And it's typically pretty straightforward to just crawl towards them or bring them towards you and then hit them at the window itself. You can even do a little lunge, but be careful. Not every angle will work as easily. That one was a very straightforward, uh, uh, very straightforward one though. Fairly simple. Oh, good enough to get the, uh, them on Switch, I guess. Uh, these guys seem quite aware though. I'm so sorry though, I respect nothing. But uh, there's two things you can do with Deathslinger once you've already confirmed a chain on a survivor. Number one is walk towards them. Number two is reel them towards you. So press forward or press back or even stand still. Uh, it doesn't really make a huge difference. Um, the main idea is for you to bring them towards the area that makes the most sense. Um, so let's see. I think she's about to use it that hard. Boop. Yeah, there it is. Uh, the window's not here. We should be fine then. Maybe another search. Uh, Jolt, sorry. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yeah, I mean, this time it doesn't even make a difference just right here. But yeah, if you are in the open and they are between a bunch of trees and obstacles, bring them towards you. If they're in the open but you're surrounded by a lot of obstacles, then simply walk towards them. Uh, okay, this is Gearhead and them and Switch working together. Them and Switch broke in the jam and Gearhead telling us where to go. And that was definitely a smart thing that I just did. You can shoot through some tiny gaps like this, but I don't know them all. I also feel... Yeah, this girl absolutely has that heart, so... I'll try to use it. That's okay, though. We're fine, I think. That was pretty smart. Oh, what? All right. In this situation, yeah, maybe I should have real her towards me so she doesn't get behind these buyers. All right, uh, Gearhead triggered again. Come and see who triggered it. Uh, well, that guy. Who is now healing someone, because I see the red thing on the gen. Yeah, let's, let's see if we can shoot through this little gap. You never know. Or the window. Oh, we absolutely could have. Shame, that was too small. That could have been good. Oh, I think he's already behind it. You can shoot through things like this, for example, but... <laughs> so this skill is healthy, right? I'm just going to break the chain. And a normal chain breaking is the same as you hitting them if they're healthy. If they're injured, you don't down them, but yeah, that girl was healthy, so that was absolutely acceptable. If she was injured or out of the indie boom, then it wouldn't be so worth it, surely. Life, maybe? No? Normal hit, always go for normal hit. And do watch out, because dead hearts are numerous. Yeah, you're gonna see him use dead heart right now. Right now. Um, someday. Um, but yeah. What are some other things that we need to cover? Um, we've explained walking towards them, we've explained reeling. Um, uh, we just played a game that we, we didn't even have time to cover some things and I have a feeling like I might be missing something important. Uh, 
uh, but hopefully not too much. Having info perks to know where to go is so important. Here we're just making up the lack of them with just intuition. Ooh, that was powerful. Not staying there was actually kind of smart. I could have totally done that. Don't forget you're pretty tall. Okay, I'm gonna try something very ambitious. Alright, it didn't work. If this if this was a bit smaller, you could have though. Uh, during the first instance of chaining a survivor with your spear gun, you don't actually have collision on your chain. It's not it doesn't actually um have it doesn't actually break faster. That's what I'm trying to say. So it's actually a good idea to shoot a survivor and then immediately go around whatever beat obstacle. Because in that little period of grace, you can actually do some crazy, crazy little shots around and stuff. But that one was just too large. You could see that by the, you know, by the time my chain was already broken, and the chain breaks faster if it is an obstacle, um, she was, she was already, she was fine. I wasn't around fast enough. These shuns are close to each other. This might be so much more pleasant than the previous. I think if you don't reel the chain, actually breaks faster. Uh, no, I believe that's about the same. Uh, they need to they need to wiggle out. They need to move some. Yeah, if they stand still, uh, the chain breaks at a different pace. But most survivors, you know. Okay. In this case, it's in my best interest to reel him back to me. Because I don't want survivors to have a pickup and a hook right next to each other. And I also want him to be closer to the hook that's right behind me. In another situation, I'm going to walk towards him. Oh, someone let go of that gem behind me. Do I see an aura of someone? I do. I'm gonna use the aura to maybe do a shot. She has no idea, but I know. Dead heart? They cannot dead heart through a window, so... Boop. And I know the last person's coming from literally where I'm looking, because of Deadman Switch told me. He, does he save... The mech last second? Amazing, well done. Oh wow. These guys are doing well! Well, if Meg saves anyone, she loses her decisive, so... She probably won't be very happy to go down here. Oh, I just thought for sure she would take a high, right? But no, Meg is very moderate. Okay. Down. Uh, so where's this lady I downed? Oh, she's picked up. Right, I downed her inside. Damn. I misremembered. She's locked in here, though, isn't she? Yeah, she is. Knowing little gaps like this? Is a huge part of playing Slinger, and you're gonna learn them more and more as you go. That's the one we were talking about earlier, right? Uh, uh, Gearhead, where? I believe she's dead. Yeah, she's. We just need to defend the gems that I left. Let's go for the far away one and kick him in. Huge blunder from Nancy? Yeah, I don't think she. You know, I don't think she felt very safe, so. She went back in. But that's okay. She did good. Okay. Sometimes you will miss a survivor and then they'll get inside your your chain that's extended and it will look like you shot right through them, but no, that was a that was a completely fair miss. There you go. This guy's healthy, so we're gonna do that just to injure him. And we could probably get him if we play a bit cheeky here. Oh! Oh he tried to run! Nice. Okay, in this situation, it's very clear that I need to drag him towards me. Ah, oh, shit. I was so close. Oh, damn. Well, I'm not even sure I was right anyway. Yeah, well, I tried to drag him towards me so that I could navigate all those obstacles. Oh, I think I got him. Yes, let's go. Okay, that's what I tried to do with Nancy earlier, but in a much, much smoother way. For sure. He's not dead, though, is he? That's much better. Oh, damn. Damn, that's a lot. Yeah, this this footage will make you want to play this game. He is that nice. No, not the previous game. I'm still salty. <laughs> okay. But yeah, uh, some add-ons on Dead Slinger definitely make him a lot more forgiving to miss and reload and stuff. So do explore those. And... Yeah, don't forget that because you inflict deep wound, 
sometimes, if you don't care, if you have Survivor A and Survivor B and they are both the same to you, if Survivor B has to mend, then go for Survivor A. This is another window. I'm gonna do a little lunch. You see? Okay, that was a bit that was a bit extreme. That that almost almost misses. But just in case you ever shoot at a Survivor from afar, know that if you're a little bit too far, you can do a lunch at a window. Because they're kind of stuck. When you break the chain, they have like a like a millisecond of them being kind of useless. He knows that I can shoot him here. Oh, here's another example. There you go. Thank you, Adam. Damn, you're so cooperative. Yeah, that's that's more that's a bit more normal. I'm going to be playing a community in the tournament. I'm confident my survivor didn't, but I'm nervous about my killer round. Oh, wow, Ray. Uh, congratulations. Yeah. Uh, uh, no matter what I say, I think you're always going to feel a bit nervous. But practicing a lot and making sure that you understand a lot of extreme case, uh, extreme case scenarios. Like, be ready for this. Be ready for that. Be ready for that. Try to practice a lot so that you've made every mistake you can. When the thing happens, they will be just as nervous as you or more, so... Don't don't feel too bad. Don't feel nervous, my guy. Uh-oh. Oh, that's good. Okay, I think it's pretty obvious here that I want to drag her. Ow. But she takes even longer. I might want to reload her. I could shoot this guy and then, like, keep him reeled for a few seconds to just uh, outplay the BT. But I actually don't mind too much. I did miss there. Yeah, don't worry, I got you. You, you got me there. Oh, we're gonna do that. Uh, yeah, if you have, um, I don't know, Steep Tick, Borrow Time. If you know that a survivor has like endurance, you can shoot them, keep them real for a bit. And then, in about five or six seconds, whatever, you have, I think, seven seconds or so. If there's nothing breaking the chain faster, you, you try to... You try to hit them, and that might actually save your life. With all seriousness, you can mention capability to punish get T-baggers. Yeah, yeah, if this... Uh, this Adam's gonna leave right away, but if he didn't, you could totally shoot them, reel them back, and then down them. We could also, we also could have played that a bit meaner, so they would never leave the basement. But we're not, we're not interested in bullying people, we just want to show the kid. Uh, GG's, we'll play to everyone. Oh. Okay, here's the thing I didn't mention. When you aim down your sides, you are slower. Don't do it too much. Do it a little bit to mess with them, but don't do it constantly. When you reload, you're also slower. Sometimes, if you miss a shot, or if you shot and now you need to catch up, it's better to not reload and just keep chasing the survivor and when you have them cornered somewhere, then reload or then hit them. Sometimes if you reload every time you can, you give enough time to survivors for them to reach a place where now it doesn't matter. They're in a really good spot. So yeah, don't always instinctively reload right away. Sometimes it's okay not to reload, keep chasing them, get them to drop a pallet, now they're stuck, now you reload, now you shoot, you miss, uh, do it again, then you get them. So yeah, that's another important one. <laughs> yup. Uh, underlinting is not very good for Slinger. Uh, you don't need to ever miss. Yes, if you shoot a survivor and you realize it's a bad idea, you can just attack to miss and break the chain. But if you want to injure them, you need to break the chain normally. And breaking the chain normally has a cooldown of 3 seconds. Nah, you don't need underlinting in my opinion. Uh, there, there's some weird techs you could try with it, but I don't think they're more... I don't think they're worth it for the most part. That's mostly it for a boy with that Slinger. Okay, so allow me to present you the Executioner, aka Pyramid Head, from Silent Hill 2. He is a normal killer in terms of terror radius, 32 meters, uh, very tall, however. Uh, his own little music, normal lunge, uh, normal movement speed, everything is normal. So he's a pretty good killer to transition into, if you already know killers like Trapper. He's not the best killer to start with, his perks, his teachables are pretty bad and hard to utilize. And his power is a little bit complex and requires both a lot of thinking and decision making and also mechanical timing and, and reactions. When he presses the attack power, he slams his sword into the ground and then drags it. While he drags it, he creates a little trail of danger where if survivors step on it, they reveal themselves by a little heartbeat. 
And they also become tormented, which we'll explain later. And also, when you're in this mode, when you're dragging your sword at any time you want, you can press the attack button to then send a shockwave forward. It's a bit like a Doctor Shock, it's like a little cylinder in front of you. Uh, but this one damages, uh, much like a Hunter's Hatchet. And it damages anyone inside this cone. So if three survivors are in a conga line in front of you, you can hit them all uh, uh, simultaneously with a single attack. The attack works like a little wave. It goes boop, 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 right in front of you. So if you have a survivor very close and one very far at the edge, which is about eight meters, you will hit the one first slightly quicker, and then you'll hit the one at the end slightly further. So yeah, that's it. That's Pyramid Head. When survivors are tormented, that's where the fun begins. Because survivors that are tormented, if you down them on the ground, you can pick them up and hook them, which is option A. Or you can press your active ability button and then send them to a cage. You plunge your sword into the ground and they appear on a cage, which is basically like an alternative hook. So you can... The cages work exactly the same as hook. You can do cage, cage, hook and kill. Or cage, cage, mori. Or cage, hook, hook or hook, cage, hook, it's the same thing, basically. Uh, but the third cage is actually a mini Mori. So if you have a tormented survivor on the ground and you press left control, you will actually cut them in half very fast, much faster than the normal Mori. So yeah, that's great. This killer saves time uh, on hooking, sends survivors really far away, and because he can counter, um, because he can send survivors to cages, he actually counters hook perks. Borrow time, um, the size of strike, uh, the future of the record, all of these perks that come out of hooks, they don't really work against them. Uh, but he also has the downside that he cannot use hook perks as well as other killers. But yeah, that's it. Uh, add-ons that you cannot go wrong with. Uh, distance add-ons are great. I honestly recommend them. They make his power have longer range, which is fun. Uh, recharge and maximum duration or longer power. Yeah, all of the all of these are honestly all fine. So. We're gonna go with a bit of extra um, range, only half a meter, and a bit of extra duration of our trails on the ground. And we're gonna use a cake, and we're gonna ready up, and we're gonna go. Right, um, so, let's talk about perks. All of the hook perks don't work on cages. The only two perks on the top of my head that work on cages right now, at the time of recording this video, is camaraderie slash kinship. Uh, a survivor will take longer to die in a cage if they have that. Very rare perk. And also Adrenaline, which is technically not a hook perk. If a survivor comes out of a cage and they have Adrenaline, they'll also be fully healed. But almost every other perk on killer or survivor side, other than Mori's, Mori's still work, they don't trigger. Oh, it's Dash Populous? No. Oh, it's Can You Get This? No. Uh, the answer to anything else, I'm pretty sure, is no. So don't forget. You press the power button, you begin to drag your sword on the ground. When you drag your sword, you leave a trail on the ground. This trail, by default, I believe, lasts... 70 or 75 seconds and if a survivor steps on it or does any action on it other than crouch through there it is uh they'll become tormented and when they're tormented you can send them into a cage and we've already explained how that works uh now uh, that's a big part of playing pyramid head but the bigger part is using his punishment as a chasing tool very good by this lady Anytime you're dragging your sword, you press M1, and it sends a shockwave forward. And survivors are all too smart, and they know how to avoid it. But you can also just cancel your power. And just hit them in- Okay, she understands that she's locked in here, she needs to go left. She saw me, and she's going back. I'm gonna hide my red light, and come out. And you see the blood? I mean, she was waiting there. And I can probably hit her here. Oh, but she's so smart. Well done. She stepped on the goo. Awesome. We're gonna cancel. Oh. Okay. Honestly, without an amazing dead heart, which you don't have. We're going to cage her. This is basically this basically sends her to the furthest possible point from the map. Chosen kind of at random. And now they have to go and find her and get her out of the cage, which is very much like a hook. Oh damn, dude. I'm playing such a basic pyramid, and they are so ahead of me. You do not see the cages while they are in it, but when they rescue, you will get a notification. Which I'm sure will happen in a minute. There you go! No, that's not it, actually. That was a pallet drop. Um, and yeah, if you get too close to the cages and you try to camp them for too long, 
they will actually reappear and respawn elsewhere. So you are not... You're not allowed to do that. Oh, they were above me, I think. I hear a heartbeat when they step on it. Will she put up that? Oh, I thought that with range we would have her. That was good. Oh. <laughs> okay, you have a limited vision. Honestly, basement would have been good. Look. You can actually send an attack downstairs. As long as you're not on the stairs yourselves. As, as long as you have solid footing, the, the attack can go downstairs. But it cannot bridge gaps and it cannot go upstairs. If I do it upstairs, look. You see it goes right through, right? Uh, yeah, that's not a good idea. Uh, but yeah, you'll get used to the sensitivity and the tanky controls that happen when you play this killer. Hello, Nia, what's up? What's up, cutie pie? She should not be able to dodge that. She's in a bit of a... Oh, she got stuck. Uh, wait for the E. Uh, we're not waiting for anything. All right, we didn't torment this lady, so we just pick her up and hook her normally. And Chad, what, what are all the things I'm forgetting about already? Uh, that we said we'd mention. Uh, as we tried to explain uh, earlier, the general thing that happens is... If a survivor is really far away from you, and they're further than 10 meters, uh, your range is 8 meters, by the way, they're going to keep running. They don't want to wait in place because they know that you can pretty much cut down any loop. Oh, hello. Oh, wow. I was hoping to hit two of them. That was good, but we kind of body blocked it. And what's more, what's more often going to happen than not? I'm being very basic here, but damn, dude. They do keep it spiced up. Gonna cancel? Oh, well, good job by you. Okay, second cage. If I really, really wanted to, I could try to guess where in the opposite end of the map she's going to spawn and try to be around there, not get too close or else the cage relocates. Just, just enough to catch them off guard and make it really hard to unhook. Because remember, they don't have any perks when they come out of the cage. Smart, I can't use my power downstairs. Uh, but don't bring me to your friend, or else they're probably dead. This survivor made it really easy by going through the middle of the pal. The moment he was at the middle, I just released my attack. Typically, what they'll try to do is they'll try to get to the window and then fake it, or dead hard, or use whatever. I would have pre-drawn that. Um, Alright, I'm very good chat. Yeah, uh, the torment thing that David is afflicted by only goes away. That's a really good call chat. It only goes away. If I send them in a cage, and they get rescued, or if they rescue someone else. Whoa! Damn, dude! These guys are all pros. Well, damn it, well done. Yeah, so if that David now goes and rescues somebody else, that could definitely get him with a torment gone. So you typically want to torment, cage, torment, cage. Uh, times when it's a good idea to torment. There's a flashlight save happening, you can prevent it. There's a pallet save happening, you can prevent it. The dude has a size to strike, you can prevent it. Um, yeah. There's someone else going on uh, in, at the, in the vicinity, you can prevent it. The problem happens when you're not so sure about which one's the right play. If you're in doubt, you can always hook. Uh, this attack has a shorter cooldown, and you can kinda sometimes... Uh, zone people by the edges of the map, so a good idea if you can. If you have a swabber completely cornered to do this. Damn, hold on. Damn, dude. I have been absolutely atrocious at landing these. There you go. Uh, in this case, I'll catch her. It might have been better to just hook her, but I want to just go away and catch someone off guard. Hello. You're the person that's on hook? Alright, we put torment on the loop. Notice that I put a bit of torment on the pallet or the window. Just enough so that if they use it, they get tormented and we push them away. Okay, this is really good. This girl is completely cornered. If I am one, I have an animation. If I am two, I have a shorter one. Unfortunately, she's smart and she's making me work for it. What? Really? That long? Oh, okay, dude. Uh, I'm really trying to hit the middle, but she's just... Better. She definitely is not going anywhere. <laughs> These guys are so good! Oh man, it's like I'm a magnet! 
Okay, well, you two meta now, dude. Run. I want you as well. I don't mind. Please tell me you went into the same room. That would have been so convenient. Hello. Cancel? There you go. Uh, I'm doing it. I don't care. I'm pretty sure we can make something happen here. <laughs> We're at six strokes, it's so awkward. That goes out of the healthy, oh no. I swing there to save time on the drops, but watch out, it's not always a good idea. Always let it go when you see them in a tight spot like that. Definitely wasted too much time. I'm gonna do a quick one here. Okay, I wanted to get rid of that and use the range, but it didn't work out. I have been getting some horrible volley from the cages, my guys. Alright. I know, I don't think she's dead. I think we have three hooked. Three people and one hooked David? Maybe she's dead, actually. She might be. I don't remember hooking David. Yeah, she's dead. We can totally hit through this and try to hit a survivor on the, on the other side of the wall. Even better. Let's hit it and look for the two Hatties. Maybe he gets a bit spooked and stays away. Maybe they have found another gen. Oh, hello! I know. Hello, Hattie number two! She's gonna drop. Okay, that's a... At least an attack. Ooh, that balance landing was fast. David's out of the heal up. This girl went up again. Pre-dropped the pallet, smart. I'm going to ignore... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm being body blocked by mannequins. Uh, I should go back to that gen though. That day was gonna be on it in two seconds if he out of the heal. That was sloppy for me. On cooldown. Yeah, don't forget you cannot place uh, trails too close to gens, too close to gates, too close to hooks, or on the basement stairs or inside of the basement. But anywhere else, you can try to choke the living heck out of them. I'm so surprised. Little, little bits of dragging around pallets is always a good idea. These guys, man, they have a boon somewhere, don't they? Oh god, dude, this pallet. I'm going back. I don't think the other gens are advanced. I think they'll just converge on this. Yeah, they did. Man. Man, did we struggle. I never saw the other lady. Oh, I did see her. Okay, I go for this. Whoa, they already have the gate! Shit. Okay. Oh, they can't body block this. Oh, what, dude? These guys were cracked. Yeah, hold well on, dude. Hold well on. You had one chance to dodge that. But I think in this match we actually got to see quite a quite a few things about Private Head. It might have been better for me to at some point just hook a person in the middle instead of caging them so much. Yeah, they were all very, very, very happy. Why are you guys be bagging? Did I play unfair? But if some people equip Lightborn instead of fire up when they see flashes in the lobby, fire up messes up their timing. Uh, I think some people don't care about flashlight rescues. They just care about uh, not being flashlighted every pallet and stuff like that. Oh? Oh? Uh, you guys remember? Python Leno? Well, I thought I was playing this super fair. I, I had, a, I even had a basement and I didn't hook there not to give them a hard time or anything. The hook is here in rain. Oh, uh, don't worry, we can check. Uh, bonus points is if rain is one of the two people that look exactly the same. <laughs> it's one of the two people that looks exactly the same. <laughs> I 
I taught one of the hotties that had the exact same cosmetic as the other person who also had the exact same cosmetic. Okay. <laughs> right, uh, I probably forgot many things, but please watch my pyramid head guide. I made it some time ago and some parts about it, are, some numbers are slightly off, but all of the examples and all of the breakdown of how the power works is still very much relevant. It will give you a, a more full picture. Um, yeah, a more normal map with shag, jungle gyms. Yeah, you'll, you'll see more swabbers bolting windows and stuff and you'll have to take more 50-50s with your power. Uh, but don't forget that your general idea is just to use your power and wait until they make a mistake. You don't need to shoot too quickly, as you saw me do, unfortunately, uh, a couple of times. You just need to wait until they run into themselves or do something really, really stupid. Uh, but yeah, uh, don't forget to tunnel. <laughs> yeah, people are unbelievable sometimes. Okay, um, we have reached the Blight. The Blight is a normal standard killer in terms of stats moves normally at the 115 standard speed, normal 32 meter terror radius, normal lunge, pretty tall, comparable to other killers, blah blah blah. Long story short, if you play Trapper and you switch to this killer, it's not gonna feel immediately different. The thing is, though, his power makes him rush forward at massive, massive speeds, uh, with that on he only gets faster and faster, and then he bumps into things, and then he bumps into things again, and then he can hit survivors, and it gets pretty hectic. So, you can play him normally, and use your spo his power sparingly. Eventually, when you become better and better, you will use his power all the time, because it helps to traverse the map, close the gap, and even get the hits in. So, he's not a killer I recommend you start with, because how difficult it is, and how much of a focus you need to learn both his power, and also the collisions and overall functioning of the maps, because each map has their own quirks. So because of that, I recommend you dabble with him a little bit, but don't start with him and don't focus on him too much. When you learn to play him using his power a lot, he begins to stray from other killers. You play him very differently and he doesn't have that much in common with other killers. But you can definitely play him like a normal killer and use his power sparingly here and there. Very simply put, uh, his power is actually super, super simple. Uh, when you press the attack, uh, the, the power button, you begin to rush forward and then you bump into whatever you bump into. You can't bump into survivors, but the environment... Generators, walls, trees, you can bump into anything. And when you do, you'll you'll get like uh you'll get repositioned and then you can rush again. And from the second rush forwards, your cane is now up and you can actually do an attack to hit survivors. So if a survivor is in front of you, you can bump into a tree nearby and then go for the survivor and hit them. But you cannot rush and hit them right away. Um that's that's the trick. You need to learn how to bounce off things and play pinball, if you will. And then when you do that, you just focus on the one-on-one -on -one chase and try to use his mobility to cover the map, and you're good. Uh, we're gonna use his own perk Blood Favor to block pallets, and a cute. His own perk Undying to protect Blood Favor, and a cute. And the common perk Throw the Hun to protect both of these totems and make them take longer, kinda cute. And also Fearmonger, I guess, to make survivors uh, tired when they touch and kinda cute. Uh, unlike other killers, I don't recommend the brown add-ons to start with. This, these add-ons are meant to help beginners, but they're all meme and terrible. The Foxglove, however, and the Canker of the Thorn, uh, they both reduce the cooldown for missed attacks and stuff when you use your power, and that's helpful, so we're gonna have that, and nothing else. Some of these, uh, some of these add-ons are ridiculously strong, but we're just gonna start with mostly baseline stuff. We're gonna put in our cake, and we're gonna look for a match, and that's it. Right, so one thing, thank you, Alka. One thing that we neglected to mention is that he cannot bump forever. You start, uh, Adams can change this up and down, but you start with five rush tokens. And one of them you have to use to start. So as you're gonna notice, now my cane is up and I can actually hit at the end, like this. And if there was a survivor in front of me, uh, I could hit them. They don't need to be like, I don't need to like launch them afar. I can just launch when I'm right next to them and that will still be a hit. I'm just gonna do a normal hit here. No need to overcomplicate, more so like Slinger. It's a good idea to just do a normal attack and then you don't have to go through any cooldown. All right, I'm gonna use my power, bump on this tree. And that's the very basic one to left, right, good night. But things will get more complicated and survivors will play smart and structures will be harder and you'll have to do more. Now, here's a mistake that you could make. Bump into one thing, bump into one thing, bump into one thing. Bump into one thing, 
bump into one thing, and now I've made a total of five meters worth of distance. You don't want to do that. That is wasting the maximum distance that you have. Here's another thing you don't want to do, which is not bump into anything. Uh, uh. So that's bad, because you don't go too far. And the other one is worse, because you waste everything. So you want to actually more or less measure these, what is it, about 15, 16 meters? And try to bump into things strategically to cover a lot of distance. Alright, this pallet gets blocked because of our perk. And this lady is now dead. I don't need to use my power. I think we're just fine. But so now we're gonna do what you have to do if you want to traverse the whole map. Let's say we have barbecue and chili, and I know where survivors are gonna be. Alright, I look for a distant object, those wheels, uh, sorry, tires, hit them, look for another distant one, that tree, look for something else distant, that, look for something else, this, and just like that, I've made it across the map. You get the idea, right? You want to bump into something right about as your... You don't have that hard in this ice either. Uh, you want to bump into something right about you're gonna get uh, fatigued from running for too long. So let's do that again just to more or less show. Alright, uh, into the street, into this harikur. Oh, well, it ended there, chat. It ended there. Alright. Oh, this is locked still by my perk! Okay, I can only do this. But yeah, you can you can press the M1 attack when you see the survivor right, you know when they're close you for when they're close enough for you to bite them in the butt, you can attack. Okay, here's a mistake. Don't imagine the survivor is this tree. Actually, it is. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you what not to do. Hold up. Uh, I forgot to tell you, you can break pallets and walls with your attack, much like Demogorgon or whatever. And if you use all of your things, it takes longer for you to recharge them. That's pretty obvious. Whee. You can also do some flicks and some DPI tricks at the uh, at the end of your power to hit around stuff. That's a bit more advanced, you honestly don't need to know too much about it. But I want to show you a common mistake. Okay, they didn't die. Uh, a common mistake that people do, especially against two hours in the open. Okay, I'm gonna bump as many times as I need. Okay. Maybe not as many times as me. That kind of thing is not what you want to do. You don't want to hit a survivor like beginning your little lunch from afar. You want to hit them when you're really biting their butt. So you want to hit them like like this when you come when you're uh, rushing. Okay, I had nothing to bump on, so that was a bit of my uh, my bad there. I wonder if this time I can find something to bump onto. Uh, unfortunately, that car is too slippery. I mean, I did find something now. But if this guy's in a good spot, maybe I'm better off just leaving, huh? Okay, that thing right there is a blatant mistake that I should have never gotten a hit with. But for some reason, this Hattie just will jump into me and into my loving arms. But for the most part, if you, if you try to do that, you're gonna get juked. You're gonna have survivors dodging and spinning and... Oh, by the way, let's try to show this. You can break pallets. Hi, my love. What's up? You brought me some water? You want to pour it over my hot school right now? Oh, well, that was a bit... That... Give me the stuff. Uh, some places have very slippery collisions, and you can take advantage of that. By beginning your run past... What the fuck? Yeah, if you if you know that a place is a bad collision, you can sometimes use that on purpose to slide past it, and sometimes uh, that can be helpful. Little things like barrels and there you go. little things like barrels and stuff you can never uh, take for granted. They are your bread and butter. So in the TO walls, for example, there's a lot of t uh, a lot of maps that have barrels in the middle, and you can use them to stop yourself. When you bump into something, you have a few seconds before fatigue kicks in. It's very similar to Nurse, in a way. I'm gonna show you what happens if you don't use your power in time. It's not a big deal if you don't, by the way. 
Damn, we got some great value out of that. Let's get this event thing going. Right, so I'm gonna bump into the street. Oh, sorry, car. I'm gonna bump into this. Uh, ah, okay. Sometimes, if you zone out a survivor, it's totally okay not to do that, as you can see. And you'll still probably get the hit here. Okay. There you go. Be careful. Do not swing too early. Sometimes survivors will do a massive... Okay, let's go for what I told you about the swing thing. Can I pull it off somehow? I could have, maybe. I could have, maybe. Uh, we already broke this wall, remember? So that means this girl is probably dead. I bump in here. There you go. So you're, you're basically playing a game of pinball on and off through the entire match. Oi, 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 Let me be a woman. Um, she's gonna let her out. Or try to. All right, let's see if we make it to the first hook after that. Oh, almost. <laughs> That's no biggie. Um, hmm, what am I forgetting, chat? What am I forgetting? Addy, you you sure you're not here? I trust you. I don't trust you at all. Ah, I'm sorry. That was very eager of me. Okay, you can have it. Sure thing then. I was expecting them to come out of that locker. <laughs> Uh, how long does it take to wiggle out? Uh, 16 seconds. A little bit less with the new system if they hit all the good skills. If you hit a lot of people and miss a lot of hits and, you know, you're slow down, yeah, it's not so good. That's terrible. You can sometimes bump on things unnecessarily to, uh, to wait out a dead heart. Or to wait out a little play like that. So, if I thought that that girl was about to press E and dodge me, I could have maybe... I know she doesn't have it, but I know I could have... Ah, uh, be like... Ah, and then, you know, just... Sorry, I completely failed. Do this, and then bump into something else, or bump into... When they when they think that you're about to hit them, just bump next to them, then they press E, and then you probably catch them. Um, there's probably other things. You can sometimes use the fact that you get pushed back a little bit um, as a way to get into something. So, for example, here. Check out this tree. This tree is, this tree is not lined up with this doorway, right? But when I bump into it, I'm going to bump back like a meter and then I'll be perfectly on the doorway. But you can do that kind of stuff knowing that you can do something like this. Bam, immediately line up. And don't be shy at hitting people through walls and, and sorry, through windows. Like if there was a survivor vaulting a window, you could totally hit them with a cane like that. So don't be, don't be, be ambitious and try to hit people through windows. It works quite, quite often and sometimes in ways you wouldn't expect. Um, all right, well, um, Blight, honestly, it, it starts really simple, but it devolves into a lot of little techs and little tricks and little things that I'm probably neglecting to mention. If you guys know anything else, uh, please remind me so that someone learning uh, can use your experience. How do you use the Russian chat look? Okay, all right, uh, that I can kind of teach you. So it depends on the angle, but let's say I want to catch them at the window. I'm going to go for the doorway. Boop. Bam. That's one. Uh, more advanced ones that you'll see people use. They'll, they'll do things like... This is a this is one that's going to be patched at some point, but... Uh, yeah, you get the idea. I kind of messed it up. But depending on how you look... Oh, 1v1? Okay, let's go, bro. All right, let's go. Don't do it. Don't do it. Boop. <laughs> you can slide that check anyway. Yeah, yeah, you don't need the hot tag. You can you can do I could maybe I don't know. Maybe I can do something like this and show you. Maybe. Ah no, no, I'm not. I'm not quite I'm not quite prepared. But yeah, you can slide past many obstacles like this. If you if you get really close after the initial thing. Or at the first hook, you can you can slide. It's a similar idea with the cars. Like for example, let's say I wanted to catch up to someone. Um, I don't know. What would be a good example? Right, I could do something like this. Bam! And now I'm on the other side of the car. Like like imagine how slow I would be 
If I want to catch someone right by that car, if I jump here, then there, then there. But look how fast this is. Well, you saw it before. So yeah, you can use little text like that, but you don't need to start very fancy. Um, start with simple things. Break the pallet with your power. Zone them out. You, Subaru drops the pallet. You break it in the way that makes them on the edge of the map. Now when they run in the open, boom, catch up, hit them. Um, what else is there for us to learn? Um, yeah. Be patient with your rushes. Sometimes, you know, you'll do a stupid... Oh god, where am I? Oh my god, what is my name? Oh, what? Okay, okay, I have one more. Bam, hit. You know, sometimes even after a small mistake where you bump accidentally into five things uh, or your own shadow, you can still make a, a recovery or at least be in a really good spot. Mm. Hey, thank you, Incarvi. Bye bye, Mikaela, you were cute. And yeah, a breakable walls you can also break with your power, recover that. Chat, what am I forgetting? What am I forgetting? Just just know that there's little uh, like DPI tricks that you can use to sometimes hit around corners. And I think that the one I knew how to use is out of the been patched out, so I can't do it. I'm not even sure if that's even worth uh, teaching right now. Hello. Thanks for the game. I played all. Two survivors. <laughs> I think Nancy did have DS. She just just didn't have it. Like she actually worked on the gen. You can only use the power with five stacks. Yeah, you need to wait until you get fully back. Very similar to spirit. Oh, good sports. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. two survivors. And hopefully that's about it. And we didn't. We didn't. Yeah, you hit. You can hit people really close to you and even to your side. It's a it's a wide corner ahead of you. The hitbox of the. Of the hit. That's pretty important. But yeah, I think that's all I can teach you with Blight. You cannot grab after Rush, no. You can only do a special attack. And it will not apply Sloppy, you will not apply anything like that. So, don't try. Okay, chat. <laughs> we have reached the Twins. Uh, it's a pair of cooperative killers. And you take turns controlling one or the other. The big sister, Charlotte. And the small brother, Victor, which is this little guy here. Uh, Charlotte herself is a normal killer, normal lunge, normal terror radius range, normal stature, pretty much. Uh, normal uh, movement speed of 4.6 meters per second, aka 115. So, if you come into twins from, say, a trapper, they'll feel exactly the same. When you switch to Victor, however, you send out your little uh, brother and you begin to control him. Victor is very different. He's extremely short, but he moves extremely fast at 150%, so that's... 50% faster than a running survivor. And then he can do a little whoop, charge into a pounce. Very similar to Demogorgon, in that you charge it and then release it. But he also jumps uh, and can go over obstacles and jump big distances. It's actually kind of funny. Uh, when Victor hits a, an injured survivor, he downs them. And when he hits a healthy survivor, he uh, sticks, up, uh, sticks onto them and harasses them and they have to remove him. And then you go back to Charlotte. And then you take turns back and forth. When Victor is removed by survivors, he regenerates in you. If he gets kicked by a survivor, if he misses an attack or goes AFK uh, and they get kicked, or if he goes AFK for 90 seconds, if anything happens to Victor, he regenerates back in Charlotte after a few mm. seconds. So you basically have to play a ping pong battle of injuring survivors with Charlotte, then sending Victor, injuring them with Victor, sending Charlotte, downing a survivor in one part of the map, then going back to Charlotte. You need to be in two places at once, play a bit of chess with survivors. But it's really fun. Uh, as for add-ons and perks that we're gonna run, Floppy Butcher doesn't work with Victor, but it's good. We'll apply it at some point. Fearmonger, uh, not bad if we make people tired. Uh, Deer Stalker might be useful if we leave people on the ground with Victor for too long and we don't find them anymore. And Oppression is the only perk we have to fight against the gents a little bit, so we're gonna bring it. As for add-ons, you cannot go wrong with the add-ons that make you uh, release or return from Victor faster. These add-ons are, they don't change anything meaningful. Um, there, they just feel pretty good. You also can't go wrong with the add-on that makes you charge the Victor attack faster. That one's great for a brown. It's fantastic. Uh, in my opinion, stay away from the cat figurine. It's an it's a beginner add-on to show you what Victor does, but in practice, it just it just 
doesn't really help that much. So we're gonna go with these basic but serviceable add-ons, bring some cake, and run into our first match. But I really like this outfit, yes. <laughs> yup. Right. In an ideal world, I would get a free hit on every Subaru with Charlotte, and then I would send Victor and then down, 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 and it would be super easy. In the real world, it's not so simple. If they don't give you a free hit, you send out Victor, you injure them, and if they're smart, sometimes they won't get rid of Victor right away. They'll keep him hostage for a little while so that you have a harder time exerting pressure. Where did Leon go, though? Did he come this way, or is he in this loop? I really can't tell. There he is. Let's see if we can do a free hit. Mm, doesn't seem like we'll be able to. Sure. Oh, yeah. I hit a wall. He could kick me right now during this cooldown, but he decided to be a peaceful man. There you go. Very similar to Demogorgon. Uh, I'm actually gonna kick this gen. Because we don't him, we're gonna hear another gen. Probably. That's someone getting a skill check and missing it. Amazing. Alright, so that guy unfortunately will kill with his medkit very quick, but maybe we can find a group of Suarez here and make a bit of a disaster happen for them. Wait a bit. Nah, that's a free hit. This is the ideal situation, because I'm gonna injure. I'm not gonna keep Charlotte in a corner of the map, I'm gonna keep her centralized, so that when I go back, I know more or less where I am. Do I see blood here? Yeah, I see blood. You don't see scratchman with victors, only blood? But sometimes that's all you need. Is a body block going to happen? No. I was waiting for that hard bit. Victor has a bit of a detection range, I'm gonna leave him right here. If people don't crouch and approach Victor, you hear a little heartbeat. Very similar to the Legion power. And then you can immediately switch back sometimes and try to act on the- WHAT?! Well... Nah, no, I, I want her first. Right, so- oh. Well, now you know what it's like to get a kick in the face. He has a flashlight, watch out, look away. Well, man, I'm not gonna get greedy, but damn. What? what? How did you get so close? What the hell? I think you got my wallet, chat. Well, damn. Um, I want to break this pallet at some point. Um, you cannot use Victor while you are too close to the hook. But if the Victor is out of the place before the hooking, then yeah, you can. That 100% will take a little bit more luck. Shame. I'm not sure what I did wrong there. Hello. Yeah, medkits are tough, and you probably need specific perks if you want to have a slightly easier time. Uh, we're gonna come. We're gonna take comfort in knowing that most games are gonna be a bit easier than this in terms of the pressure you can exert. If people are injured, you can pick them off with Victor so quickly, one by one. But now it's not something we can do. We do have two people injured, but if I send out Victor right now, I'm gonna be in a bad spot by the time they're down and they start to pick themselves up. Damn, dude, that timing was excellent. Jesus. Like, she knows. What? Okay, that timing was not excellent. Thank you. Alright, let's send... We down someone. Let's send Victor and see if we can do some more damage. Remember, you don't see scratch marks. But you have to go off by... Um, wow, really? <laughs> uh, you can kill Victor with a stun from head on, pallets, any stun will kill him. You can also blind him, but you know, you can look away, so it's not very useful. Okay, if I had Victor available, I would send it out and try to catch the fang, because she's been hooked once. And that would be useful, but we don't have him. Uh, okay, Leon got rid of it. If they don't get rid of it, you need to press M2 to retrieve it. Uh, after 30 seconds. He's out of healed! <laughs> That is absolutely nuts. I can't do it. It's unbelievable. Uh, you also see the aura of someone with Victor if they've held it for a little bit and for the first few seconds. Okay, that girl's still in. Let's see if we can see a trail of blood leading. What? 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 Is this Adam for real? Oh, what? What? Is she Kobe? Dude, I don't understand this. That girl killed herself. This, uh, do you, wh when is, when, when have they had time to do all of this? Okay, that girl's there. Fat, we're gonna live forever. He could get a flashy save there if he was a bit faster. Alright. 
Damn, dude. You drop Shag as well? Yeah, and I feel like it's not going to matter. I need to walk out a bit farther before I can unbind Victor. And I'm gonna... She's out of the shield! Okay, I'm gonna look for blood that she left a few seconds ago. What? Oh, that makes more sense. They have a bone, chat. They have a bone. I didn't remember that. Yay. Yay, booms. We unstreamed. Yay. Personally, I'm a big fan. <laughs> Unlucky, I would have liked to down Victor, uh, sorry, down Leon and just be an absolute tyrant. But don't worry, my time will come. Uh, notice that uh, if you look at the HUD, the little claws of Victor are next to Adam. But they're not actually moving. Now they move. But they're not actually moving consistently. That means he's not getting rid of him. The heartbeat, uh, that's the survivor that's next to him. Uh, a person with Victor on their back is oblivious. And now I'm gonna retrieve it, press them too. And that means that they don't hear you. So someone with Victor, sometimes you can kind of mind get them and come from some weird angle and hit them with Charlotte. That's of course completely justified. Can Victor, no, Victor cannot do anything, unfortunately. He cannot break boons, he cannot do anything. And I don't think I can do anything either, man. This is ridiculous, dude. You're gonna see that girl finish healing? Hopefully not. Absolute insanity, dude. Absolute insanity. A sloppy Butcher, though, helped me there, because that heal is gonna stop. They do have that hard part. Okay, that's a big range. If the map is a bit more 3D and has a bunch of... Okay. Here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna hook her next to Victor. If the map has some hails, you can use that to your advantage and, pa and pounce from, like, miles away and go Victor Airlines, which is really fun and has a lot of text. Um associated with it. So Twins has a lot of depth and a lot of map knowledge that can be pretty rewarding to play. Unfortunately, as you can see, sometimes with medkits, boons, unbreakables, we're gonna live forevers, survivors can heal themselves faster than you can do anything. That's hard, that hard. I'm gonna be so patient here. Okay. I could try to port to Victor, but I cannot teleport back because I'm too close. So I need to leave Victor apart somewhere. I'm actually gonna park him on one side and then maybe come the Yeah, you guys have this coming. Alright. Let's put Victor here. That's the sound you make when you're too close. And then I'll... Oh, wait! Uh, that's Adam. That's Adam right there. He's gonna come through the window too. Do it, buddy. Yeah, do it. Don't worry. I'm... She's... I can do it. Yeah, no, no, I can wait. She's fine, she's fine in here. We're missing you, dude. Well, you understand. <laughs> this match is a good example of what Twins really struggles with and what Twins really excels at. I don't believe you, I don't have that heart. Oh, oh, and now you understand why we run the perk Dio Soccer. There's no hook here anymore, technically, so I can switch whenever I'd like. Um, uh, things that you can do with Victor. Vault through windows, but it's risky. Uh, sorry, uh, pawns through windows. You can also uh, pawns through pallets when they drop them, but you need a bit of an angle. And if they crouch, it can backfire. Um, but yeah, be very, very, very careful. I only have a hook for one person here. But I don't mind, I don't mind. It's a, it's a educational match, so they can rub in the, uh, in the ground if they like. <clears throat> uh, guys, please, don't be don't be children in the chat. Alright, so as I said, if you use Victor from elevations, you can cover massive distances. A bit like demo, but way, way better. So if you ever have a chance to catch up to a survivor, you can do something crazy like this and hit them straight up or close the gap. Now there's a little problem. If you land somewhere that is too high up where a survivor cannot uh, naturally kick you, Victor will die. Let me try to show you if I can do that. Well, uh, that reminds me, do not hit with Victor upstairs. You will do this. Anytime a survivor is on a stair or a slope, don't ever do that. It fails horribly. Okay. When you begin to hear that little whoosh, that's your cue telling you that you're in a place where you're going to die. If you can, try to fall off, or better yet, just die. And then you get back. 
to your sister a bit quicker, which is convenient sometimes. So that's not a horrible thing. Uh, what else? <laughs> you thought I wouldn't find you. Don't worry, buddy. Uh, yeah, as I said, you can hit over pallets and windows, especially if they vault or drop it right in front of you. You can typically hit them. Charging around corners on tight loops. Yeah, it works a bit like demo, which we covered. You can do something like, okay, they're going for that window. Oh, bah! and that typically hits them though. You saw me fail at doing that once. There you go. Uh, oh, another thing. What if a swapper goes into a locker? You can actually check it. If there's no one, nothing happens. If there is a survivor, then Victor locks them. He's like, you can't come out. And for eight seconds, they'll try to resist and come out. If Charlotte is not too far, perfect. You can go in and grab them or just go elsewhere and waste our time. The problem is if you're too far. So your idea when using Charlotte is to be the commander. You want to be in the center of the map or around the center so that no matter where Victor, let's say I don't swap here, 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 Charlotte will always be close for the unhook, right? If you use Charlotte from like a super far away corner of the map, and then down someone else in another super far away corner. I mean, you saw how quickly these survivors could pick each other up, right? Yeah, I don't need to tell you anything. It's not gonna work out. Poor Adam. The Adam decided to go into a corner where he thought I couldn't hook him. Uh, don't feel too sorry for him. Uh, yeah, you cannot switch back to or from Victor when you're too close to a gate. So you cannot do something like this, to like body block it. But there's nothing stopping you from being right here and then checking both of them and then switching back and forth whenever you'd like. There's a bit of a cooldown and a bit of a slowdown that happens, but yeah. Uh, survivors can kick you while you're idle, idle like that, so be careful. Listen to the heartbeat. And try to place Victor in strategic locations as a, as a beacon of sorts. Poor survivors, you want to see what these guys brought and then feel sorry for them? <laughs> These guys were more than ready to beat our ass, dude. Don't, don't feel sorry for them. I don't know, I think they had a good game. Crouching to prevent heartbeat. Yeah, very smart survivors. I think it's really risky, because if you crouch next to Victor and he comes back to life, you're gonna get your ass kicked. So it's very risky, but strategically, survivors will occasionally crouch through Victor not to be detected. So yeah, that's a thing. <clears throat> and yeah. Uh, an important question that I get asked a lot. Does Victor matter for perks that are based on distance? If I have Devour Hope and, I, and Charlotte is 60 meters away from the hook, but Victor is next to the hook, does that give me Devour Hope? The answer is Charlotte. For things based on distance, Victor doesn't count. He cannot use any perks actively. In fact, if you have things like Bitter Murmur, bar Barbecue and Chili, they don't work while Victor is on. Only passive-ish perks work while Victor is being controlled. So yeah, everything related to perks works only with Charlotte and her distance is based on her actual sleeping or active body. But that's it. Yeah, Force Penance is really good on Twins. The trigger on Force Penance. Yeah, yeah, because that's a that's not a that's not a basic attack perk, it's a passive perk that just happens under certain conditions. So yeah, some perks don't work on Victor, but many of them don't, so you need to be a bit careful when it comes to those things. Uh, no worries, Lynxia. Uh, it seems like we were spared from the worst of it today. Uh, thank you, Dillinger. Thanks for letting me know. Anyway, yeah, uh, Twins was really fun and honestly quite rewarding. Uh, some rough edges that somehow that somehow I hope get corrected over the uh, over the next few months. Do give them a shot, though. They're really fun. But... Oh, yeah, and we forgot one very important thing. If a survivor has Victor on their back and they are at an exit gate, they get a mini blood warden. They cannot leave the match with an exit, uh, through an exit gate with Victor. And when they get rid of it, uh, there's like a bit of a cooldown if you hit them. So if you see a the survivor by a gate, hit them with Victor and down them with Charlotte and you might be able to catch them. Very important. I forgot about that. Uh, the trickster time, Chad. The trickster time. <laughs> the trickster is basically a faster hunters. Instead of throwing massive hatchets, uh, he throws tiny knives, uh, which are much faster, but they also require several to injure. You need to hit them with six knives, if I remember correctly, for them to injure. 
Um, and then you throw, 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 build up, build up, build up, and damage. And if they don't fully damage, they disappear over time. Uh, similar to Hunters, if you are in the open, he can he can deal damage really quickly. He deals with unhooks very, very well. With short loops where you actually see the survivors, he's very deadly. But he's a bit slower than most. He has a bit of a lullaby that people can hear, and a, and a smaller turret and a smaller, uh, sorry, and a slower speed, and he needs to reload at lockers, so he's a bit slow. You need to be delivered with what you do. We're gonna be bringing a crowd control, his own perk, it blocks windows if two hours fastball them near or far. Throw the hunt to distract them with another totem, and then no way out and bitter murmur, which will show us the hours of everyone around the map, and around the end of the game we'll see everyone. So maybe we can get them with no way out before they can open the gates. Uh, decent perks for, for a start. Uh, for add-ons, some of them get really crazy. You cannot go wrong with extra knives. Avoid the memento blades, they're a meme add-on, they make you worse. And you also can't go wrong with slightly faster holding speed. So yeah, these two are very basic, they, they'll do enough. Uh, as a trickster, as I said, survivors in the open, if you are accurate with your knives, they will be melted and very, very quickly go down. Problem will be when they loop you around tall structures like shack, where you don't really get a line of sight. And also... Wait, twins are first? Chat? Did I forget the twins? What happened to the twins? Uh -oh. Whoa, I bring it up! Uh-oh. Okay, chat. Here's what we're gonna do. I need to put this together into a video anyway, alright? We're gonna make this the match. I'm so fucked. Dude. <sighs> uh, I'm gonna make this the match. And then we're gonna do the twins afterwards. I'm so sorry. I was I was following my inner monologue so well. I'm <laughs> still so dumb. Uh, yeah, let's pretend this is the trickster, alright? Then we do the twins afterwards and then we redo the explanation. I'm so sorry. Students have knives now. It says students and you're playing tricks there. Oh, that's not even the biggest mistake I made. <laughs> sorry, chat. Hi, Airmine. Yeah, yeah, we know. Right, uh, well, we just got about the biggest, meanest, worst map we could possibly get. So we're not expecting to do incredible. This is a really bad map for Trickster, I'm afraid. But maybe we'll pin them against a corner somewhere where we actually can show some of our strength. Right. Oh, well, that's a good like going to Shaq. Yup, yup, she's very confident. If she takes the window and fast vaults it. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, that's huge for me, Chad. That's huge. This goes dead. Okay. Um... And now the holy greed compels me to chase this Claudette and try to get two downs, but the truth is getting a down in basement this early is really good and we shouldn't overextend. The fact that we got an injury is just cherry on top. Oh, you need to give me that. That was literally death. Oh my god, she blocked her own window and then she dead harder into a drop. Oh my god, thank you god. Literally listen. So yeah, as I said, uh, he's a very good defensive killer. You could see that that gate coming out. Of course you did that. Coming out of the basement. Um, that gate. If I had just walked her like this, uh, she would have just run out and I would still be chasing after her. But if you use your knives, they get a speed push, yes, but you don't slow yourself down that much. And there's very little downtime, so you can do lethal things. Is that the two of them, Bitter Murmur? No, only one. But it's okay, we'll just try to give them a pleasant game and just use this as a learning experience. Don't be that call that chat. Don't be that call that. Understood. Hello. Yeah, anytime you can, you get some knives in. Uh, strong pilots like this, don't be afraid to get rid of them. <laughs> if they ever go for a window, it's typically a damage uh, health state, if they're not very careful. And when you've hit enough knives, you get this little yellow effect, which is main event. You can trigger it by pressing left control or just ignore it for 30 seconds. And she's got that heart. Oh, she just punned me, chat. Well done. I wanted to hit her before she could trigger her. But yeah, main event is basically an extra power that you get on top. It doesn't consume any knives, and it does this. 
Blah, 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 blah. You have infinite knives for duration, which is 10 seconds. Uh, you can cancel it at any time. Um, you don't need to stop using your power. You can hold your knives and press left control, and you don't need to reset the animation. So you can be holding a knife and then press left control and it begins. So, yeah. Trick it's very important to trigger it at the perfect time. Because you you're like a little machine gun. Um... Hello. You're like a little machine gun, but you're also very slow, and once you start, you're gonna either get something or not get anything at all. Alright, this one was blocked up. I don't see this lady at all. Okay. She's in the open, but I don't see her, so it's kinda hard to... Bro. Kinda hard to... Great knives on her. Notice that any loop that... You can barely see the head of the survivor is really good for you because you can throw knives at them. If you don't throw any knives at them for about 15 seconds, they lose the laceration, which is what every knife is called. The laceration meter. So right now it's 14, 13, 12, 11. And if I hit her with just a single knife, 15. 14, so you always want to keep keep it up with knives, but else they'll they'll lose the progress. Uh, you, you see you see the problem, right? She cannot go through these loops without avoiding some of these holes. So that's nice. This loop for another killer would be really difficult, but Trickster would deal can deal with this one at least. Oh yeah, his throw rate is a really interesting thing. Uh, add on the side. Uh, when you begin to throw knives, you move a bit slower than survivors, and the more you throw knives, the slower you become. Okay? So it's kind of like a car uh, pressing the brakes. You, you move slower the more you throw them. But it's also true that you throw them faster. So the throw rate of the knives begins slow and speeds up, and your movement speed begins fast and gets slow. I don't think you're- I don't think you're dead on you're fine, right? Uh, maybe I can show you. Actually, no, I have two knives. I can show you. But yeah, you start slow, low, fast, 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 and you move, uh, the reverse. So, yeah. It's a good idea to throw a knife every now and then to- to keep the laceration from draining. But you don't want to be doing this all game. Because then you're moving very slow and you're wasting ammo. And as you can see, you need to reload every now and then, and it kind of kills your momentum if you have to reload mid-chase. Um, you, you will be surprised at how many angles you can find to damage survivors. Even if it's even if it's just like one or two knives, sometimes hitting them through there can be super critical. Many times survivors will walk away from a loop with one knife left, and if you can just find like a cheeky little throw spot like that one, and hit them on the top of the head, bam, that's enough to down them. So, super important. And some items can help you do that. Mm hmm Anytime you can push survivors into basement, into open hooks where they can't rescue easily. Uh, anytime you push them into loops um, that are short like this one, that's great for you. And another thing that's worth considering is that when you want to be accurate, you can press... Uh, hold the, it's very much like Huntress, right? You hold the power. Actually, it's a bit different than Huntress. Uh, you hold the power and you tap to throw knife. Tap to throw knife. But if you want to just go machine gun, you can just hold it, which I didn't know <laughs> for a long time, and it just shoots automatically. See? Notice that there's a bit of a recoil. You need to constantly aim downwards slightly to ups offset it a bit. <laughs> when to knife, when to swing. Okay, uh, chat. My main event is at like 80% or so. If I find a survivor that is injured right now and I can get it to 99, it might be a good idea to use knives. Because that way, uh, I, don't, I don't know exactly how much it will be, honestly, from the top of my head. I think it takes like 30 knives to get there, so... Yeah, normally if a survivor is injured, there's no need to use knives. The reason you use knives is because you can go from, in, from healthy to injured and four knives really quickly, right? Uh, think of the Kate in the basement at the very start of the game. If I hit her there, she's out. If I use the knives, she takes one health state and 
pretty much another one right away. So this girl right now. Let's let's look at my knife state. Okay, if I hit her with two more knives, I think I get my main event. So if I could right now, I would I would hit her with an M1. Chat, why? Very simple. The next fool that I find, I'm gonna go, you know, full joker on them. And I'm gonna throw a million knives. Because I have my main event 99. Trying to 99 your main event is great. Right now, if I had it, if I use my knives, I would be wasting it. It would be... Uh, like, I would be able to use it and there would be no one. So now, I can just save it and show you what I meant earlier by not having to switch stances. You're gonna morph on them? Precisely. So now, if I find one, I throw one knife and I already have it ready. And main event on a, on a healthy survivor typically means that you get the down if they're in a bad spot. Or at least you get damage on multiple survivors if they're close. Let's say that they're unhooking right here. Let's say they're coming for an unhook. I use main event. If I hit them early, they don't get the unhook. Because I go knife, knife, knife. They begin to unhook. They're halfway through the unhook. Bam. Six knives. Damage. Interrupt. Anytime you interrupt them, you damage them with knives, you interrupt them. Obviously. And then they try again, but at that point I'm throwing knives too quickly. And before they get the full unhook, they're, they're down. Because main event is twice as fast as normal. Hmm. Oh yeah, that's true. Uh, if you have a survivor with like a lot of knives on them and you hit them with a basic attack, that removes some knives from them, but not all of them. Yeah, true. What did I say? <laughs> Alright, well, she used as well. As I decided they're in a bad spot. You can typically get the... Get the down. We were close enough, though. Alright, Kate, you're my best friend now. <laughs> Au revoir, Shoshana. Bye bye. Uh, we can just leave her. Um, what else? What else? Oh, uh, survivors can go into lockers if you use main events and you can't do anything about it. So, cancel. Can if you notice that your main event is bad, just cancel. By the way. <coughs> What else, what else, what else, what else, what else? Oh, yeah, very simple. Let's say this girl gets uh, gets rescued, right? And she has borrowed time. We know we would base it soon, right? So I can do this. I can hit her. One, two, three, four. Eh? When you hear the sound effect, that means that they are one knife away. So I hit them, hit them, hit them, hit them. E, screaming sound. Wait. One, two, three, four, five, or whatever. And then you can do it. Uh, can I show you that? Nah, we don't do it. <laughs> Okay, now, if I had to, if she was rescued, I could wait a little bit and then go back. And that would play around for a time. Oh, wow, she went this way. Smart. I think we got her, though. Oh, I'm out of knives. Bad management, I should have reloaded, probably. This poor kid didn't give up, though. Oh, I feel bad for her. She has that heart! Bastard! Kill them! Kill them all! Do you mention Iron Maiden? Yes, you can use uh, the Melodious Murder USB stick add-on to reload quicker, and there's also a perk called Iron Maiden that makes him reload faster. Is it super worth it? In my opinion, no. I don't think it's super worth it. But, hey, the keeper. And if you want to practice chases and not have much downtime, you can use it. She deserves hides right now, Max. It's alright. I'm just trying to, like, since we had a chill game, because one person decided to be a clown. Um, you know. Just wanted to teach what I could. Did I see scratch marks or am I blind AF? I'm blind. Um, hmm, chat. You forgot twins? Yeah, don't worry, guys. We'll go back to twins. Don't won't trouble you two people. Uh, what's important? Chat, tell me what's important. Show the recoil. Oh, you can already see it. Okay, look at the crow. He's in the center of my screen. It's a bit like a Call of Duty kind of recoil. Yes. So basically, the, the way to undo recoil is to do one, two, three. Like if you sh if you don't, if you space out your shots, they're very accurate. Or you can just also try to like, like very subtly find the sensitivity and, and try to move downwards to offset it. Like you would control recoil in a, in a Call of Duty FPS type game. 
Um, but yeah, that's it's not a huge deal. You shouldn't be throwing people, you know, throwing knives at people from across the map. You're not gonna get a montage. Well, maybe you will after I say this, but um, yeah, you use it short to medium range, and that's when they're most deadly. In a way, uh, in a way, Trickster is more similar to Cannibal than she is Huntress, because he is a monster at catching people in the open and just making them feel super naked. <laughs> Um, but yeah, uh, why are we forgetting chat? If you're worried about survivor entering a locker because of main event, activate main event after putting five knives into a survivor. Oh, why? Well, I don't get that at all. Hmm. Is it so that when they come out, they take another normal hit? This has a lullaby. Okay, listen, uh, you don't need to know this, but the trickster has a 24 meter terror radius. And then from 24 to 28 or something like that, he has like a, like a little, boom, 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 boom. he has like a little lofi soundtrack that survivors can hear even when you're undetectable. But then it fades away. It's like a ring. So even if you have Tinker or like uh, monitor abuse, it's fine. It's fine. I've run Tinker on this killer a million times. I still catch people love gems. So you don't really need to worry too much, but hey, it's good to know. Uh, you saw our main- I don't care, Chad, I just want her to get the hatch, honestly. And make sure we don't forget anything. Do I was gonna mention with lockers? Yep, yeah, yeah, we talked about it. <laughs> yeah, you can shoot small gaps. This is a great example, for example. If someone's healing there, you can go bam, bam, bam. Then the recoil's gonna make you miss. So, you know, be a bit smart, but okay, we'll close this. We have no way out, so this girl's never going to escape, but okay. You can try. 99 main event, we did talk about that. Um, uh, let her out, we can, we can. They had a horrible game. Yeah, we'll let them out, we'll let them out. I never heard it's a lullaby at all. It kind of messes with his, mixes with his terror radius. But it's, it's, it's audible, it's audible, for sure. Mm, short loops, okay. Very simple, chat. This loop... Other than maybe some crazy angle through, this loop sucks. This is the kind of loop where you just get rid of the pallet or avoid it altogether. So that loop, bad. This loop, if there's a pallet here, bad. This loop, it can be alright. Maybe you can maybe you can be like, oh yeah, drop the pallet. Ha <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You can maybe do some cheeky things. But for the most part, all of these loops bad. Loops that are good. Um, kind of the ones that we have around here. These are pretty typical in many maps. Like these loops like this. This loops. You, like, if you try to loop around this, sooner or later he's gonna find an angle where he puts five good knives inside your belly and you're dead. But yeah, main buildings are strong, Shag is pretty strong, although we have the Hex to block window, which was helpful. The jungle gyms, the killer needs to have a good add-ons and be smart, but when you try Trixie for the first time, you're probably gonna be okay. He is definitely, definitely, definitely fun to play, I, I do think so. Hmm. Alright. <laughs> it's always the same type of survivors. <laughs> ah, she got hurt there. Bless her, chat. Did I forget anything? Survivor can't crawl to a knife down. Okay, that... Okay. <sighs> Damn. We're getting into very specifics. Yes, when you down a survivor with a knife, they go like... Ugh! My back. And they fall down. Flat. They don't crawl as fast or fall forwards like some other killers. So yeah, that's kind of useful. It can sometimes let you catch a survivor crawling out of a gate or something like that. Yeah, definitely do that. <laughs> Alright, next or previous. Uh, and it's time for the Nemesis. The Nemesis, despite being extremely large, loud, and chunky, is actually a normal killer. Normal terror radius, 32 meters. Normal launch uh, distance, normal movement speed. Um, yeah. If you transition into him from any other killer, or out of him into any other normal killer, it will feel pretty natural. Uh, however, he does have two powers. He has randomly generated zombies that appear around the map. There's always a boy and a girl, there's two zombies always, and they respawn if they are killed. Uh, slower if the survivors kill them. Um, and then he also has a tentacle that he can hit people with. And you start in tier 1 mutation, and then mutate your way up to tier 2 and tier 3 mutation, and the tentacle gets stronger as you do so. And Nemesis is a bit tricky. 
you need to be smart to use the zombies uh, strategically whenever they are useful. Sometimes they're just randomly uh, useless. And using his tentacle is a bit tricky, so I don't think he's the best killer for a beginner to learn right away. But he's definitely very oppressive and really fun if you want to sink some time into him. So, uh, knowing that, uh, we're going to use Lethal Pursuer, his own perk, an amazing perk, lets you know where everyone starts the match. Uh, which is really, really useful. In the future, this perk will also buff Bitter Murmur, which will let us see survivors for even longer. We're running this with Noe, so that we see everyone at the end of the game and we have a chance to instant on them. And Eruption, his own perk to slow and gents a little bit. Uh, very humble, nothing crazy here. Uh, for Nemi, uh, he's got a lot of add-ons. Many of them are weird. Starsfield manual is completely useless. You cannot go wrong, however, with the Visitor Wristband, which makes zombies a bit more aware of their surroundings. And any of the speed uh, add-ons for zombies is not bad. I also highly recommend Marvin's Blood, just to get out of tier 1 quicker. Uh, but in this case, we're just gonna go with the humble extra movement speed Brian's Intestine. Gross. And okay, and we're ready. So yeah, what's the deal with the mutation? The tentacle of the nemesis extends 5 meters in front of him. It's like a little hatchet, pretty much. It just goes over obstacles. It hits in front of him, right? Uh, but this tentacle only infects survivors. It only infects them. Once they're infected, then they get damaged. When you get to tier 2, uh, the tentacle also breaks pallets and, and, and walls extremely fast. And that's the really, really, really good thing. So getting to tier 2 is our absolute priority. And we'll talk about how to do that in a minute. And then when you get to tier 3, which takes a bit longer, his tentacle gains 1 meter of distance. So in tier 3, it's not 5, it's now 6 meters of hitting pallets and people. But yeah, that's pretty strong, but not as important as the tier 2. So much like Myers, you want to get into tier 2 as soon as possible. If you stay in tier 1 for too long, pallets are kind of useful against you, and survivors can actually delay you a lot. So yeah, how do you get to tier 2? It's complicated. When you hit a zombie with your own tentacle, you get 1 point. Not ideal. When you hit an out of the infected survivor, you get one point. Not ideal. But when you hit a survivor and infect them for the first time, you get three points. Very good. And you need six points. So if you do the math, you need to kill uh, either six zombies, which take a while to... There's only two, so they need to, that would be horrible. Or hit two survivors for the first time. If you find Claudette, hit her. Uh, and find Dwight, hit him, bam, out of the tier two. Ideal. Uh, alternatively, you can also hit Claudette. Then hit her again, now you're at 4 out of 6. Now hit a zombie, 5 out of 6. Now hit Claudette again, 6 out of 6. Uh, it's not a huge, huge deal if you don't get into tier 2 in your first chase, but you should try to. That's why a perk like Discordance or Lethal Pursuer can be amazing, because finding a group of survivors and quickly getting two tentacle hits is super, super important. Now, do we have the luck to find a group of survivors? No, they are spawning completely... Okay. My idea is to hit this Nancy, if God wills it, and then go for those two. And she's out in a really strong place where I'll struggle to even get an M1. I'm out, I'm out, I'm going for Shark. I, I have the brown wristband and I hope this zombie will somehow notice these guys. If they miss skill checks and do noisy actions, they are more likely to notice them. Alright. So... That's a tentacle. It works very similar to Huntress and other ranged attacks. I, I would like to go for the other person that's in here. Let's see if we can find them. They actually run away. Uh, I'm gonna go for that person, man. I need, I need my tier twos. That's crazy. Where did they go? Damn, man, they split up so much. Uh, yeah, I can't, I can't tell you this is much better than staying with Khaled, but I know that she, if she picked up some pallets, I'm in trouble. So better to get out of tier one as soon as possible. What? Really? I'm gonna. <laughs> They already did that. Okay, zombie, where are they? There they are. Alright, if a zombie hits a survivor, you don't get the infection points. Nice! Nice, nice, nice. Okay, we only got one point, which is horrible. Because the zombie technically got the score for that. They've already used the vaccine. That's insane. Uh, a bunch of uh, special silver lockers spawn in the map. Uh, that have the vaccine cases. And they can use them to get rid of infection. They typically don't do it this early. It's a bad idea, but... Yeah. Alright, one more zombie, or one more survivor, and we're in tier 2. Hardly ideal, but... Oh, please stop, bro. 
what? They actually sabotaged that ahead of time. That's insane, man. Time to pick up. I'm gonna pick her up right now and hope my timing is not off. And my timing is. Yeah, it's not off. Well, one more hit on this lady and I should have it. They might have the add ons. Yeah, she didn't make it too far. There you go, tier two. Alright, so what's so special about tier two? You're about to see. Oh, maybe not. Well, yeah, you're about to see anyway. Look. Look how quick you can get rid of pallets. Same with walls. Alright, well that wasn't ideal and this girl will sub another hook if we let her. Crazy. Uh, let's kick that gem with eruption and see if we can make it regress if we dump someone else. Zombies, can you be useful? But yeah, um, understanding the hitbox of the tentacle is a little bit... Um, a little bit difficult to visualize. Just imagine that you have a bunch of spears that come out from you at once so you can hit uh through gaps and you can hit through uh, over obstacles you cannot hit through really really tiny gaps though and as you can see you actually have a bit of movement speed okay there's no reason for me not to run down right now you actually are you hiding inside me or am i crazy what the hell did she go oh wow big boost um there you go. Breakable walls are not an issue at all. Zombie, get her! Ah, oh, almost. She'll use that heart. I know it. Oh! Oh, we body blocked her. But... Uh, as I said, you can... Oh, no! One more second and we would have used eruption. Oh, that would have bought us so much time. Oh, man, that one miss was so significant, actually. Just because of one good Sabo play. Oh, great great job by them, honestly. We were sorely outplayed. I, I know that they're injured. I know that they're here. Let's go and find them before they finish yelling, maybe. But yeah, um, as I said, it's like a bunch of spears in front of you, but you can actually move them a little bit. She's trying to... You can move forward sideways while you have your tentacle uh, active and what you can do is basically use this to do a little sweep of sorts there you go if you do a little sweep it's actually really hard to dodge the tentacle you see how i go left to right i'm now tier three so i have max yeah okay i have max range of six meters which is good uh i'm literally not gonna get that if she, if she will take one hit and then that heart through or whatever. Let's go this. Uh, she's gonna focus, lady. And my gems are really far. If I had just maybe one of these two being closer, that would be awesome. Zombies are not cooperating. You can sometimes look at their auras. And if they have their arms up, they're chasing people. If you see them like stunned like this, uh, uh, that means they're being blinded. They can be blinded by flashlights. It's a very common thing. Uh, we do have no head though, so don't forget. She dead hard. Honestly, that made me, that, that was a huge fear for me. Thanks. Just some, just some one heart. Basic attack. Am I stupid or am I hearing Nancy? Yeah, uh, using a basic attack in a situation like this is totally fine. Eventually, you will want to get really good at using the whip. Because if you can use the whip, sometimes you can zone people out. You can hit the whip, which has a slightly shorter recovery than basic attack. Not by a lot, but slightly. And then recover fast enough for you to catch them for another whip or an actual attack. So yeah, you need to you cannot just hit people with your fist and never use your whip. You'll be a very mediocre nemesis. But let's talk about the drag and when to use it. Uh, I know that person used the vaccine, which immediately plays a heartbeat sound, and I could see by the HUD that it's this lady, so. See how I see how I drag my cam. Um, I, I use pr uh, I press sideways, immediately drop it. You see how I that zombie's harassing them. Awesome. See how I press left to left to right or right to left, so that I can actually cover more area. In this situation, bam! Really hard to escape that unless survivors are really smart at uh, at like juking you around. And of course, Khaled is running behind because she wants to save her teammate, but, yeah. Oh, she dead hard through, did she? That must have been a dead hard. 
The animation doesn't play out if they're coughing from the vaccine, but that must have been. Hi, my red stain a bit. Okay, hello. Oh, there you are. Alright, well, we need to worry a bit about hooks now. Sorry, we need to kill you. I'm sorry, you guys have done really well, and she's had four chances. I would kick that gen in case they get on it with eruption, but I'd rather go for a gen that they have a lot of progress on. Okay, that zombie is now harassing them out of a gen. Wonderful. Particularly useful if you have perks like Ruin or Deadman Switch that will make getting off the gen really painful for survivors. So this is good. Don't make it too obvious that you're using the tentacle from a bit of a distance or else they begin to do left and right uh, zigzags and it's really hard to hit them. You do it kind of fast if you're going to do it like this. Mm. There you go. I'm out. I'm out. I want to. I want to patrol gems. Uh, I've hooked Nancy once. Haven't I? I don't remember the hooks I have on these peeps. Are we going to see the nurse soonish? No, we played her one of the first ones actually. So uh, don't worry. It should be in the video, but probably someone here. Pretend to go right. They come left. Okay. I could have used the tentacle there, I suppose. But... Does she have iron well? No. She kept running. Yep. You need to be a bit mindful of pallets. On the one hand, if you res if you stay away from them too much, there you go. See, you can hit everything. So. Um, survivors will just take you for a fool and keep doing spins. You need to be very very accurate with your movement. Uh, I also failed to mention one thing that is not super important. Uh, you can kill your own zombies for infection, but we're only at max a max mutation, right? We don't care. In tier three, Nemesis is slightly faster while he holds the tentacle out. This means almost nothing. You only hold the tentacle out for a few seconds, but it does mean that, okay, push them into zombies anytime you can. Okay. It does mean that you are punished less for holding your tentacle. So if I hold my tentacle, that was just a really, really solid play. What can I say? Sorry, I need to do a bit of an advance uh, bunch there. I don't want to do those really fancy things. <laughs> Hell yeah, zombie. Oh, they heal right next to me. Which means this girl's probably gonna get a salvo. Yeah. Let's go over here. Did they just three gen themselves? Mm, not exactly, no. The last gen's. Well, actually, they're kind of close, yeah. Yeah, they're not too bad. Let's kick this with eruption. With eruption, if we down someone else. Uh, or anyone, that gen gets a minus 6, soon to be minus 10, after the next update. And it's kind of good, because if someone's working on it, they can't do anything for a while. It'll be like a bomb. Kind of cool. Uh, first hook, she could have deliverance, that gen's not being worked on. Uh, those two guys healed. You're gonna hear a heartbeat. I think they need to use another vaccine now. Oh, one of the vaccines is right here! They can't even use this one, nice. There's only four. Alright, uh, I'm gonna do the drag. And I'm going to immediately drop because I know this Nancy has to come and I'm gonna put pressure on them. If they want to rescue, give me something, buddy. That's the six meters. I don't think you could do that with normal tier one. And I think Jill's gonna be here right now. Push him on. Oh, close enough. Uh, I'm gonna lie, Chad. I think I blew it there. I could have, I could have done that better, or I could be more patient. I hit the claw dead. Um, eruption though, eruption will hit them hard. You're gonna see the Nancy scream in a second. Because they haven't seen it yet. Uh, oh, she pressed E anyway. There's eruption. That Nancy can't do anything. The claw dead healed. And now we hook on the same spot. And she cannot sabo. She literally cannot sabo. Uh, actually, I don't know if she will be alright by the time I'm there. I'll just hook here. Mention the difference between M1 and M2 on zombies. Uh, if you M1 zombies, they die and they respawn uh, somewhere else. That is okay in two circumstances. If a zombie is body blocking you and you need to kill it, punch it. If a zombie is stuck in one place and he's being useless, punch it. Uh, if you have an add-on that gives you extra stealth by killing zombies, it's okay. You can punch them like that. But... Some, uh, if you want to gain infection, uh, sorry, mutation rate from punching the zombie, then you need to do it with your tentacle. Kind of like Cell in Dragon Ball Z. 
Where did they go? Oh, I see. They're in here. Hey, yo. You can hear them. Uh, yeah, yeah, you, yeah, your tentacle will never be able to break a pallet and hit a survivor at the same time. First, it will check for survivors. If it can hit a survivor, great. If the survivor is out of the way, it will hit a pallet instead. I'm gonna show you what that looks like. Um... Oh, that, can you demonstrate? If you miss the survivor, then you break the pallet. And mind you, you have a big range on your pallet breaking ability. Six meters at tier three or even five in tier one and two. Well, tier two, because you don't break them in tier one. It's very, very meaty. It's, it's, it's sizable. So you actually are, maybe with one exception, the fastest breaker of pallets and walls of the whole game. Especially without any of the atoms, so yeah. Let me show you what how you can optimize it and how like normally with a normal killer I would need to go like okay okay uh, uh. with Nemi you can literally do this hold up um instead of walking all the way you can literally do this and bam back to business so yes pallets that are down you don't need to immediately break let's say that this pallet here is down do I need to break it right right away nope I go away if Nancy comes back. I bring up my tentacle, and either I break it on the spot, or I hit her over it. So you can leave pallets for later. The only exception, maybe, is if they have a UE with any means necessary, or someone that's picking them back up. If they pick the pallets back up, and they're good pallets, yeah, maybe you want to break those. Uh, but yeah, that's it. You can also do some crazy angles. Let me try to show you. Yeah, you, that, that, kinda, that same principle works with pallets, too. Um, all right. uh, in a situation like this, pay attention to zombies. Look, that zombie is crawling towards someone. They kind of, they follow very basic pathing. They follow something that happened earlier. They don't necessarily point you exactly to where the survivor is. They, but they give you a clue of they, where they could be. Okay, that was a dead heart. We kind of chased around. And as you can see, even with this brown out on, they're pretty, they're pretty slow. So you kind of need to be patient with them. Oh. Sure, bam. Yeah, that was a bit out of range. How is this killer balanced? Hi, Glumsy. Well, you have to get two uppers three times. So that's that's a reason why he's balanced. You can get the gate, buddy. And yeah. Uh, what else, chat? What did we forget about? Uh, survivors will occasionally go behind a window and crouch. And in some windows... Sometimes if they crouch, like this is a loop, right? And there's a Claudette on the other side. She crouches, I'm going to miss. In this situation, what you need to do is fake it and then bam, uh, do a drag around it or something like that. Okay, try, don't try to be super predictable. It doesn't work out super well. Sparing a stars, let me, well, we need a sequel, buddy. We need, we need to sell DLC. Are you looking up? Yes, uh, when, when you are using the tentacle, your camera is fixed. You cannot look up very much. You cannot look down very much. I technically look up a little bit because it helps me... No, like, the tentacle is slightly out of the way. So, uh, to me, it helps me to aim up a little bit. But it's something I do without even noticing. So, it's not a big deal. Like, it, really, it really makes no difference, so... Yo. Oh, GG's good spot. Um, what else? Uh, yeah. <laughs> If you see survivors with zombies, you can wait until the zombie hits them and then hit them yourself. You can try to body block them. Uh, a lot of things you can do. Have you explained the trick with zombies and making this strike useless? Oh, that's a really good one. Uh, let's say that I know a survivor is about to wiggle out of my grasp because they have decisive strike. Or because, I don't know, I, I ran out of a hook. One thing that you can do that is really powerful is get close to one of your zombies and drop the survivor when they wiggle out uh, uh, right on top of the on top of the zombie the zombie then immediately uh slaps them and if they were out of the infected now they go down so yeah uh that's a really good one uh can actually save you this code is like zombies yes the notifications from perks like eruption 
Discordant. Um, no longer Pandas after the next update. And, and a few other things make zombies go like, huh? And then they start going in that direction, which is really good. That's why I think Discordance is so good on Nemesis. Uh, but not every notification. For example, Tinkerer doesn't do that. So yeah, some notifications, uh, even the pebble from the survivors, the distraction uh, the diversion, can uh, affect the survivors, the, 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 the zombies uh, AI. That's cute. Uh, but hopefully, you know, they don't get in your way too much. And that's mostly it for an enemy. Hmm. Move on. Okay, uh, we have reached the Cenobite. The Cenobite, uh, following the trend, is a normal standard killer. Moves at the normal speed of 4.6, aka 515. Normal launch, normal 32 meter terror radius with, uh, with a very cool music. And yeah, if you come from Trapper or any other basic killer, kill feel roughly the same. So you can play him very normally and you don't need any crazy skill. However, it really pays off to go into this killer with an industrious mind and, and trying to really learn him because he's very, very strong if you use his power well. His power is basically split in two. There's the little lament configuration, the box uh, that appears in the map and survivors have to find it. And he also can send out possessed chains, which slow down survivors. And the idea is that survivors uh, have have a timer, and they need to find the box before the timer triggers. If the trigger, if the if the timer triggers, the box begins to harass all of them, and chains appear and begin to bother all of them, which is really bad. It's really hard to do gems like this. So typically, I mean, if the, if it's the end of the game, worst case scenario, they just leave and it doesn't do anything. But throughout the match, they need to get rid of it. So what happens when they pick up the box? Uh, what can be the best case scenario for survivors? Best case scenario for survivors, they find the box, they solve it, which takes about six seconds, and bam, now the timer resets, another 90 seconds, and it happens again. And they, they're fine for a while. Second best case scenario is that they solve the box and you teleport to them, which is really funny because you go, the box, you opened it and I came, and you, you teleport to the box. Sometimes this is good, sometimes this is bad. Sometimes you teleport to the box and you don't really want to be there. Uh, sometimes, you know, you teleport and it's the best decision possible. Uh, this also resets the box and it doesn't really do anything, but at least it moves you to a place where maybe you want to go. Now, the best case scenario for the killer is when you find the box yourself. You don't see the auto of the box, but if you happen to just find it randomly, and it is somewhat random, you can pick it up. And it's boom, it resets it, and all the survivors get tormented at once by chains, which is awesome. And a very similar thing happens if they pick up the box and you bam, if you harass it out of their hands. If you down a survivor with the box, you automatically claim it, and it's the same as picking it up, pretty much. They all get harassed. And this harassment alone can make the game very, very slow for survivors, because then they have to find it again, and so on and so forth. So yeah. Oh, we're gonna try to harass the box, and if they pick it up near us, we're gonna try to not let them uh, do it. So you need a bit of decision making. On top of that, he's got his normal chains that he sends out to find survivors. So, we're gonna use his own perk, Deadlock. When they finish a gen, the other gen with most progress gets blocked for 30 seconds. Hugely, hugely, hugely powerful perk. Super, super good, super easy to use. You put, literally put that on every build on every killer, and it would be at least decent. Uh, we'll also have Sloppy Butcher, very good to make them heal slower. Jolt, common perk, uh, gents around those regress. And we're going to use Plaything. Every time we hook a survivor, they don't hear our terror radius. And if they don't hear our terror radius, sometimes they are a bit less careful and some bad things can happen. As for add-ons, you really cannot go... Uh, there's some add-ons that are really weird. Don't go for the add-ons that extend the range of anything. Uh, you cannot go wrong with the rat or the leather strip, which decreases your cooldown. I mean, this one's 3%, it's very tiny, but yeah. And the add-ons that make the uh, chain hunt, which is the timer for the box, go faster. I mean, this is super tiny, super tiny. Uh, you can't go wrong with these. Uh, don't mess with anything else, honestly. Um, the pen nail is a meme add-on. Don't use it. At normal matches, I recommend things like Larry's Remain, which gives you a better chance. Or for beginners, uh, Torture Pillar or Impaling Wire, which makes the chains harder to break. Those are great for beginners. All the other add-ons are either bad or they require a very, you know... Um, good idea of what they do. And I forgot to bring a cutting. Oops. No lethal pursuer? No, we're going to be using so only basic perks. 
<laughs> Thank you for subsidizing my money. Right, so I made a video about this and you can look it up on YouTube, how to find the box, pithead, whatever. Uh, basically, when the box spawns, it, it looks where the survivors are and it looks where the killer is and it tries to find the spot in the map, not like the actual edge, but like the spot somewhere uh, around the map that is the furthest from all of you. So, if you have a bit of intuition or knowledge or lethal pursuer to see the survivors and you see where the survivors spawn and then you think where you spawn, you can kind of guess where the box is. And if not, you can just look around as you go by, look for survivors, look for the box, try to listen for the, the little sparks it makes. And if you find it, that is huge, huge, huge and gives you a ton of momentum. Even if you don't find it and you just stick around it, that means that anytime they pick it up, you might be able to contest it. So we're going to try to keep the box in mind. And remember that when the box is solved, it goes on cooldown for a while. And when you, yeah, it, 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 it has a cycle that goes on and off. And you're going to see it. And survivors are going to see that they're playing against a pinhead right away. Because in the HUD, they'll get a timer for the box. So the 90 seconds begin now. And unfortunately, in this map, it's honestly extremely difficult to guess where the box will be. So I'm not holding my breath. But who knows? Maybe this Leon will tell us. Leon, what's up? So as I said, I'm a normal killer. If they don't make it difficult, I just play normally. Oh yeah, that sees possess a chain. It actually works a bit like Nurse. You hold the attack button and you send a little portal and from that portal comes a chain that just messes with survivors. And you can use it in a lot of structures to great effect, but it's a bit tricky. I don't think I need to use it actually. I didn't need to. Uh, Jolt didn't go off, which means all the gens near me are not uh, actually affected. I'm gonna hook him right away. Anytime you're holding a survivor, if they do the box, you cannot do anything about it, so... Hook him fast, get rid of uh, Plaything. Sorry, get rid of him. Uh, uh, Jolt uh, didn't trigger, but Deadlock is telling me that maybe that gen has someone. Is anyone doing the box? Mm, no, we will get a notification in the HUD when someone picks it up. In about, uh, what is it, 15 seconds? They have to get rid of the box. And it could be here somewhere, so... Uh, I kind of want to stick around. When you hit a survivor with the chain, two more chains uh, uh, spawn, and they kind of hinder them. Survivors with chains only walk, they can't run, and they can't fast bolt. They have to slow bolt windows on pallets, so they're very weak. But the chains break really quickly, right? So that's the chains. I'm not really super fan of camping this guy, but I know the box is nearby. So tell me what it is, buddy. They want to get rid of it. All right. Wait, the Steve picked it up. Really? Oh no. Oh yes. All right. One thing you can do with the chain on top of slowing down is use it to. Yeah. You can just hit them with the chain to interrupt them. If they're doing a totem, if they're doing anything at all uh, that is time sensitive, uh, not with hooks, unfortunately. You can use this to interrupt them. Oh. Okay, so as I said, downing person with the box, resets the thing, and shows everyone on the map, which is really strong. And that was kind of the play, honestly. And now Leon, sorry, Leon and Steve are both oblivious because of this perk of ours called plaything. So they are likely to misplay and run into us when they don't mean to. Oh, where are you? Meg? Am I chasing someone, chat? Hello? What's going on? Now, there's a lot of nuance that goes into making these chains good, and we need to start explaining it. Wait, dude, that's a really bad play, I think, honestly. I think I can interrupt that. Ah, that's a shame. If only he had a longer hairstyle. Yeah, we were very close. We needed to be a bit more patient. Now, we need to be a bit careful here. Nah, I'm gonna cancel that, actually. He's gonna use that hard, I know it. Ah! No. Alright, so this bad boy could still have the size to strike. We're gonna wait a hot minute. Hello. Is this blood? Oh, it is. What about? What? Really? Really? Alright, well, sure. I'll focus in a minute. Body no body blocking anything, it seems. Okay. Excellent play by this lady. They fixed the box, they solved the cube, and they got away with that. Well done. 
Right, so as I said, the first chain will be the one that you hit them with, right? Oh, wow, it actually spawned on top of her. Much like Nurse, it won't work if you use it like this. And the second and third chain spawn randomly, unfortunately. And those are kind of bad. They can... They can sometimes spawn in a way that trees, walls, the general environment, or even other survivors, or even yourself, can break. Now you must come with so, me. the extra chains you cannot control, but the first chain oh, you can please. control. And I'm gonna give you a principle a that will hopefully suffering. help you make your chains not break as easily. The idea is that you need to hit survivors from the direction that they are run that they will run towards. And if you do that, the chains are so much stronger. Um, hmm, interesting. Well, that didn't work out at all. Oh, hello. Hello, Leon. Okay, uh, example, right here. Well, the Leon is a extremely big brain individual, so maybe maybe don't use this example at all. But yeah, the idea is that you want to hit them from the angle that they're running towards. Like so. Now here it doesn't really matter because he will just drop this pallet. Oh, never mind. I messed it up. I'm not breaking it. Hold up. Go we'll slow down. Maybe we catch him. And um, we don't need to break it. There's some pallet. But I need I need a, I need a person that I don't hook right now. Uh, the box is already spawned and they need to find it again. If they are careless and they try to find it somewhere next to me. This girl, by the way, I think she has plaything. That's maybe why she ran into me easily. And hey, Steve, what's up? Oh, that girl... That heart? That girl's actually not too far from us. She's getting harassed by the chains. You cannot finish it. There's a little trick to it. They need to wait a certain amount of time, but... Uh, the person holding the box always oblivious, by the way. Um... I'm sorry, but I think that if I... Uh, picking up that Leon, good. But doubting this lady might be even better for her overall chance to win here. That was a terrible move. Because now I have all three of them right there. This is what happens. And we hook this lady, and now everyone has plaything. And anytime anyone picks up the cube, they need to watch out if they're close to us. Bonk. Oh, okay. So, I think... This, oh, dude, this would be ideal. Uh, hitting people at that long distance does absolutely nothing for you. Don't ever... Unless you have a very specific add-on and you already know what you're doing, don't do what I just did. That is a horrible idea. Are you telling me where the cube is? Oh yeah, you are. Thank you. That's why plaything can be really good. Now, plaything is not necessary for the cube holder, right? When they hold the cube, they're oblivious. So does it really matter that they have this perk? Yes, it does! Because right before they pick up the cube, they can hear your terror radius. So a survivor that's smart is not gonna pick it up in front of you. This guy, with plaything, is not smart. He doesn't know. So he picked it up and made it, made, made it easy for us to interrupt him. And just like that, we go back and forth with the cube, back and forth with the cube. Many times, you know, you're just unlucky. You down a survivor, and while you pick them up, another Navy Six Seal team finishes the cube. You can't do anything about it. You just need to rely on your chain a little bit more. But yeah, um, the point is that if you chain a survivor and they move away from your chain, the chain is very long and it breaks very easily. Bleh. Damn, I suck. However... If the chain is in front of them... It's a different story. Like, imagine that chain is right in front of her. If she runs in front, she doesn't break it against anything. That's the point. But I'm, I'm honestly finding, finding it difficult to illustrate it right now. Okay, another jolt. Okay, maybe in this loop we can actually. Oh, excellent. No, please don't leave it! Stay! As I said, here it doesn't matter very much. It just... Well, actually, it might. Nah, I shall go, Shaq. I break my own chains. You see the problem? I wouldn't break my own chains if the chains were in front of us. Again, some of the chains you can't control because they're random, but the one that you send out, you absolutely can, so... Oh, in what no, situation should you teleport to the box? Okay, teleporting to the box suffering. is literally the same. Actually, I think maybe not, but it's almost almost the same as them finishing the box. So think about the survivor that has the box. Plaything again. Is that a survivor that I actually want to be next to? Yes or no? Are they in a part of the map that I want to be next to? Yes or no? If the answer to those two is yes, then yeah, teleport. So this Nia, for example, 
Is that on hook? If I teleport and kill her right now, that would be really good. She might have decisive. Can I interrupt it? Let's see the heartbeat. That, yeah, that's the first one. If you can interrupt it, interrupt it. I can't interrupt you that. You summoned teleport. me. So this girl I knows came. exactly what she's doing. But then to go one way, then go the other. After chaining is pretty effective. She'll use that heart here. Very unlucky. Okay, now we can use uh, an example of this. Oh, dude. Ugh. Why do you guys need to be so good? Uh, this thing is blocked soon. Okay, see? Now, if she runs into my chain, look. Okay, she did break the one that was created additionally. Yeah, use your dead heart. Go for it, bro. Uh, notice. You see that flashlight on the ground? Notice. I need to wait, don't I? I need to wait. Uh, notice that survivors need to drop their own items before picking up the box. And if you harass them with the box, that means that they have to go back to their items later. That's small, but important thing about Pinhead. He makes uh, items a bit worse. Which is something that I wish most killers could, honestly. That's great. Uh, yeah, you can see how pressured these guys have felt if they have a new bother to heal. Alright, let's see if we can play Shaq. Alright, we hit from the left, come from the right. Um, okay. Honestly, dude, that was a good move. If you can, like I kind of did right now, try to avoid breaking your own chain until like last second. Ooh, damn, I don't even know what he did. Uh, notice that deadlock is saving my butt by constantly blocking jets. But we're in the final one now. So. Yeah, I'll Box. teleport to her. She's in a bad you spot. You opened it. Yeah, she's in a really bad spot. Oh my god, that was a poor play. Maybe that heart saves her. Notice that. Yeah, that heart saves her. No, she doesn't. Bad What here? Uh, yeah. So what she did there, bad idea in my opinion. Especially considering that she's dead on court or dead. Dead on court. Uh, the problem is when this Meg. I've never hooked. She's in a really good spot and everyone else is finishing gens and everyone else is there on hook. Then, then he forces me a really difficult decision. Like, what the hell do I do, man? What the hell do I do? I can't. Uh, additionally, by the way, you can use your power just to check on your totems or check on gates. If there's any wall or, or obstacle, you can send your chain out just to have a little peek. I guess. It took the window. Hello. I'm gonna press E right about now. Dead. Uh, if you grab a survivor out of a locker or whatever and they have the box, don't worry, the animation won't play out, but it's the exact same effect. You know what? Sure, dude. Why not? I don't even think they need to do this, by the way. Uh, if the survivor, if there's only one survivor standing, the box does nothing, by the way. The chain hunt that occurs every 90 seconds or whatever. It doesn't apply to the final survivor. So if there's only one survivor left and they're looking for the... Did they go through there? And they're looking for the hatch. Don't expect to see chains in the distance to find survivors or something like that. Right now, if, if it was active, I could I could maybe see chains in the distance that let me know. Oh, someone's here. Oh, yeah. So he's going to take this window. If I chain him right there and he takes the window, he breaks the chains pretty much immediately if I don't hit him early enough. Okay, I did something there that you should never do. I held my power out. This this is not a Huntress. You use your power right away. You almost never hold it out. Oh, man. I just suck. These do better than me. I want to show you an example. Oh, he thought I was going to hit him past the window. Okay. That's kind of cute. Yeah, that's the idea of hitting them in front of them. I'm just really struggling today, man. I mean, to be fair, these loops are kind of difficult. Like, the, ideally, you do this. Yeah, this is good. Don't drop it. Don't pre-drop it. Don't pre-drop it. Don't, yeah, yeah. Don't, oh. All right. Well, we'll try. Ah, he's just going for that window, is he? You see, he got the fast wall before I even did anything, so... Yeah, he breaks the chain. They reappear if he doesn't break them properly, but... Uh, yeah, this map is just horrible. I'm sorry. It's not that it's a bad map, as you can see, we did okay, but... It's a pretty open map, you know, and stuff. But... Like, I, I can show you some things that I think are, like, normal in other maps. It's not like jungle gyms or anything. Right? Um, 
Uh, so as I said, don't expect like uh, uh, the the random chain hunts do not prevent them from opening gates or anything like that, and don't expect them to work if there's only one survivor up. Um, so why why is it important to do the thing that I'm telling you of hitting in front of them? She's here, right? Hello. There you go. Go in. If you know that a survivor is going around the wall and then coming back and, and running you in circles, in what you can do, instead of just sending a basic chain behind them, send the chain through the wall, hit them in the face, and then when they run through it, it's really hard to get rid of it in a timely manner. So, I could drop that, I could draw that in paint because I really couldn't demonstrate it very eloquently here. But say you have a... Hold on. Can I make this work real quick? Yeah. Say you have a... A very normal jungle gym, right? Let's say there's a wall like this or something. This is like a very simple pallet gym. There's like a million of these, right? And the pallets right here. And you're coming in this direction. And so is the survivor. The survivor is trying to beat you in this direction, right? Let's use a different color for the survivor. Now, if you put a chain... Let's say you send the chain out here. And then to hit them there. You have to hold your power for a long time to go ahead of them. And if you use it right next to you, if you use it right here, then the moment they go around the corner, the chains that are going to be created are going to break around the corner. So what you do instead is you send the portal ahead of you through the loop right here. You need a bit of timing and practice. And then you hit them right around this corner. They never expect this stuff. And then the chains are here, here. They, they randomly create themselves, right? And then the survivor now is very, very slowly, slowly going forward. They can't break them because there's no wall to break them against. So anytime a survivor runs back into you behind a wall, I mean, this map was a bit awkward for that. You, you try to do that and you'll see such good results. Uh, and yeah, many good add-ons on, on Pinhead too, if you ever want to invest in that. Leon did expect it though. I feel like I... Yeah. Yeah, no, that was on a pallet. He saw me perfectly. Like, yeah, no, no, no. Don't... On that pallet, if Leon gets, gets caught, he can just drop the pallet. So no, that wasn't a great example. It was a corner, yeah, but no. No, I, I, I hopefully will have better clips to show you at some point. Also, uh, yeah, that's very true and very easy to forget. Much like twins, if a survivor is injured and you hit them with a chain near the gates and then you hit them and down them before they get rid of the chains, the block, the exit gate blocks for like a couple seconds. So if you have dirty teabaggers that are like, hee hee, haha, I won, uh, try to catch them with a chain. What if someone takes my box and I don't want to chase them, but they never solve it? Do I just ignore them? Uh, here's the thing. If they ignore the ch if they just hold the box, they will constantly be harassed by a million chains, so they will never be able to do anything. And if they if they hold it for long enough, everyone else also gets harassed, I think. So yes, no, they have to do it. They cannot hold it forever. Or else it's kind of bad for them, uh, as far as I understand it anyway. So yeah. What did happen to the chain hunt when it's on for a long time? It never stops. It never ever stops. It will harass them forever until they pick up the box and solve it. Or you or or you solve it and there's like a little break before it starts again. But yeah, they have to get rid of it. Uh, eventually, eventually you will have to pick someone up and they'll have five seconds to do it. But as you can see, you can you can make it really, really painful. And that's how you win the pinhead. Okay, okay, and one quick addendum that we forgot. When you hit something or someone with the chain with the possessor chain, you automatically face that direction. Uh, doesn't matter where you were looking before. And when you teleport to a box holder, you automatically stare at the box holder. So if you don't see them, they're behind a wall in front of you. Uh, important one. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, so we've reached the artist. The artist is a little bit like Blight, uh, or a little bit like Pyramid Head. They are normal killers. They have normal 32 meter terror radius. They're tall, mind you. 
Um, normal movement speed, normal everything. So they'll feel pretty natural to play, but they have a power that is really, really strong that can cover the entire map. And it's hard enough that if you pick up Artis as your first killer, she's gonna be a bit of a struggle. And if you jump in and out of her casually, don't expect to do super well on your first few times. But don't worry, because it will be super, super worth it if you even master her a little bit. Um, the Artis, on top of being a normal killer, can use her power to set up birds. And it looks exactly like that. Uh, these birds cover a, uh, like a, like a straight line that flies right ahead. They sometimes follow the terrain a little bit at the start, so they can go up a mountain a little, a little bit or go down a staircase a little bit, but then they fly straight. And they go on for the entire map. And they go on pretty fast, they even accelerate as they go. If a survivor is right in front of them, they are literally like a hunter's hatchet. They literally do straight damage. So a survivor right in front of me right now would have taken a hit. But if they are behind a wall or very far away, instead of taking damage directly, they get swarmed by birds which is like a half damage. If you then fire another bird and successfully hit them, bam, that's damage. And you can do this and slowly hit multiple survivors and even and even harass them off gens and places from across the map. So her potential is really, really high. We don't have a lot of perks, unfortunately, uh, to choose from that are super, super amazing, but we're gonna have Bitter Murmur to see autos of people, might be useful. And know it, have a bit of a comeback potential. And her own perk, Pain Dress, which is pretty great. And Grim Embrace, which is pretty decent if we ever hook everyone. Um, fortunately for us, though, her basic add-ons are awesome. The Thick Tar is like one of the best brown add-ons in the game. Makes them get rid of the birds slower. And if they take longer to get rid of the Swarm, that means you have more chances to hit them with a second set of birds. Uh, and honestly, if you run the Festering Cairn, which is another yellow add-on, that's like amazing. It's like... A similar effect, it makes you shoot bits faster and recover faster, so you have better chances to catch them. But I'm gonna stick to brown add-ons for now, and simply use... Mm, yeah, add-on to the tech survivors a little bit further. If a bird doesn't directly hit a survivor, but they are very, very close, they can also detect them, and this add-on helps with that. It also uh, happens if a survivor's in a locker and the bird goes through the locker, you can detect people. So the killer, uh, the artist, can detect Survivors gain info, harass them, injure them, shut down loops uh, by threatening to place multiple birds. You'll see, she's pretty strong. Let's get a cake and find a lobby. Boop. Okay, so since we have a ranged killer that can potentially find survivors across the map and injure them across the map even, we're gonna talk a bit about strategy. Can I immediately, upon loading into the match, send the bird to the furthest generator and sometimes expect to hit survivors? Yes. Yes, you can. And in fact, we're gonna kind of do that right now. We're gonna send one and two. We have three, but we'll do this. Now, question. Is this an absolutely lethal weapon? There's two survivors here. No. Survivors can go into lockers. Ooh, they got rid of it in time. Survivors can go into lockers to remove the birds right away. Which is kind of good if they're far away, because what are you gonna do about it? And they can also, alternatively... There's a bird for you. They can also, alternatively, use a flashlight to get rid of swarms and static birds. Ah, uh, it took too long, but no. Yeah, I'm lucky. So, from afar, your birds are a threat, but they're not a major threat. Your th the, the threat of your birds becomes a little bit more obvious when you're close up like this. What is he gonna do? Nothing. He stands still, I hit him. He goes towards the bird, the bird eats him up. The only thing a killer, a, a survivor can do in this situation uh, is find a third way out somehow. Like find a way to escape that or that hard through the bird. Fi find some cheeky way to get out of there, which is hard. Or have some assistance, have someone else go and destroy my birds by running into them or something like that. Which is not always a easy task, so yeah, difficult. Uh, any loop, the artist can place a bird or two, or three if you're insane, and, and and lock it right away. And the best idea is not to... Okay, you see, the Suabra understands that. But he's gonna take a hit here, no matter what. You see the problem, right? He's, he's, he's in this bind, and I'm gonna stay right here, and he's probably gonna decide to run away. I think that was a lot of hard. 
Oh yeah, as you can see, especially against the corner of the map, the Yaris is an absolute choker. She will find a way to just choke the life out of you. You need to keep running to the next loop, and you need to think smart. You need to, as an artist, place the birds in a way that won't let them have an easy escape. I think he wasn't expecting the first bird to hit, and thus he wasn't quite ready to run out. But next time he probably will be, so, yep. Are they on that gen, you think? I think not. I think they're on the further one. Now there's a little problem, okay? If you send multiple birds, the cooldown for your attack is larger than if you only send one bird. So right now... I'm fine, I guess. Yeah. Uh, right now, I probably wouldn't be able to hit this man with a, with a bird. So it's a really lucky thing we hit him with a basic attack. So if you want to guarantee downs, you actually need to send birds one at a time. Because they get rid of the birds in about eight, now eight and a half with these atom seconds. That wasn't so good. Bad timing from him. So yeah, but there's a twist to it, okay? Because a survivor needs to continuously hold a button to repel the birds. And if you make them drop a pallet, uh, ball to window. If you make them do anything that interrupts that, then the timer resets. So say I hit one of these survivors, and they've been removing the birds for like eight seconds, but then couldn't quiet. Remember that. Very good. They have a big vertical hitbox, as you can see. Oh, that was a miss. Well, it won't matter. I'll hit him normally, I guess. I'm focusing on these two guys, which I guess is good. But mm, it'll only take us so far. Okay. I heard someone behind me. I'm gonna cross thing though. Yeah, he can't take the stairs. I blocked him. Oh, <laughs> he did hard them, bro. <laughs> so yeah, that guy was almost done with his birds, but then he did hard them for no reason because he thought he needed to, and then he got nothing. He had to reset. Isn't he better to hit bird than hit? Yes, it's better if you can hit them with a bird. You recover very quickly, so hitting them with a bird and then with a M1 is very convenient. But it's risky. So, I would... If you're not so sure... Watch out, because flashbangs and flashlights destroy uh, birds uh, that are waiting, like the one I can place, and the ones that are swarming. So people can use it to, like, save their friends. Is that a distortion? I didn't see anyone. There's literally no one on that gen. I'm gonna let this bird die out, because it's almost out of the out, and it comes back quicker. Two seconds when I get them back. Uh, it's okay to fire birds off. They come back fast anyway. <laughs> they always try something cheeky. The really smart survivors, they'll pretend to go into the bird and then run past it, or then they'll dead hard through it. They'll do something crafty, so watch out. Like, don't be, don't be super cautious. Also, you don't necessarily want to place the 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 bird facing the pallet straight. Don't forget that birds follow basic geography. Oh wait a minute, that's a that's a Yuichi. Yeah, they follow basic geography. Uh, for the first uh, little bit. Oh, that's too early. No, that's great timing. <laughs> you were here for the rescue and you got this instead of you. Fair enough, I respect that. Well, she's out now. I hope you have insurance, Ace. I hope you have insurance, you murder woman. They can body block, but not really. Well, yeah, really, actually. <laughs> they got out of the way, well done. Smart. I'll fire the bird off. Probably shorter than doing nothing. Alright, now the problem is that that Claudette can hit me with a DS. Did I see someone else, or...? Gotcha. Uh, you see the auto of the birds? Uh, if they begin to repel f uh, after a second or a half, you don't see them anymore. So now I don't see them. But for the first second or a half, you can. And if they don't repel, you see them forever. So try to follow them, and try to send follow-up birds, or, or use the information from that. There's so much more to artists, guys. So much more. There's so many things to explain. 
I've hooked every survivor exactly once, and now I can see the obsession. Bam. As I told you, we can see the auto. We're gonna try to line it up. Oh, we hit someone else! Well, that's convenient. Ah, uh, that's Grim Embrace, by the way. Or very special perk. Second hook for her. So where's Ace? Should be coming from here in a minute. I'm gonna set up- you cannot use birds near hooks. But you can use them as little turrets. I can put a bird right here and just cover them up. No. Okay, well... Sure thing then. Take your time, bro. No heartbeat, no nothing. Uh, you can also line up gens together and check two gens with one bird. Which is very convenient. Uh, almost anyone, almost everyone is dead on top, I think. So, if I just camp this man, no one will want to come and rescue him. But yeah, this is a great economy. And if they want to get rid of the birds, it takes a while. If they want to dodge preemptively, it takes a while. Yeah, wonderful. Uh, should I hit him with a bird? I think I'm gonna hit him with a bird. So much faster. Check it out. Oh my god. Yeah, that doesn't always work. He panicked a bit. Uh, yeah. Uh, I think it's time to see which gender we're working on next. That song? Yeah. He, like, he had to do something, though. Either him or someone else had to. And Pain Rush. Bam. This is really powerful. And we don't even have other perks that could make this feel meaner, I bet. Oh, all that. Do I find blood? No, she's healthy. No footsteps, she's far. Oh, she's Yoichi. All right, at this point with Noid, I could commit to this guy and kill him, even if I lose a gen. Uh, yeah, Artis doesn't have collision for birds. So don't worry, if you body block your own birds, you're fine. This guy should be in a bad spot now. Now, he makes the right choice and like, if I'm gonna take a hit, I'm not gonna take a hit with the bird. I'm just gonna take a hit elsewhere and get out. But that's the, you know, I guess the preferable play. We could try to make some 500 IQ play here, but... Nah, we probably shouldn't need to. You, you slow down when you set up birds and you slow down when you send them out. Not a lot, but you slow down. So, whatever, what I did there, completely unnecessary. You don't need to. So that bird went right through me, right? If he was in front of me, that would have 100% down him. So don't worry, birds that go through you do not count as going through a wall. Oh, he's bugged. Can't pick him up. Oh, what else? What else? I think one of them was there. Okay, I only sent one bird, so the recovery is very fast. I'll send a couple to increase our chances. Oh, almost. It's a bit of a trade-off. If you send extra birds, there's a chance that they'll get rid of them. That was... You chose poorly. Alright, uh, notice that I'm not gonna put a bird on the pallet. I'm gonna put a bird in front of the pallet. There we go, we can put multiple. You see that pink... Uh, sorry, purple cylinder. The purple cylinder tells you where the bird is lethal. So you can use that as a visual reference of where your bird is actually going to straight up damage. Past that little arrow, it's gonna be just swarms. Uh, now, if you're finding last survivor, try to think of places that have lockers and send birds towards them. That's Shaq. You might hear a little... This, I think, has no lockers. But sometimes people hide in lockers uh, for the last bit of the match, right? Probably not this long, but... Uh, yeah, you can do this, and especially with the brown atom we have, well, no, you never know. No, you find someone. You can also do the same for gates and stuff, but you know, all of that is pretty intuitive once you understand how this power works. Um, please do watch my video called 50 Wins on Artist, because I actually made some graphics and some really pretty PNGs. Uh, explaining the artist's power 
and her cooldowns and when you should fire the birds and when you should just wait and what's fastest and exactly why, you know, if you hit them with a bird, then you can do bird bird and it's safe. If you hit them with two birds, your cooldown is a bit too much, so you need to at least make them vote or drop a pile at once. And if you hit them with three birds, the cooldown is too big, so almost nothing works. So yeah, like lots of visual examples uh, in that in that intro. If you wanna watch that. But we're gonna say GG. Thank you so much. Or give me also the game. And I hope I didn't forget much. There's there's so much to artists. There's so many little intricacies about how her power works, like with add-ons and so on. So I'm I know for a fact that I forgot something. But the most important things you need to do: uh, don't send three birds out every time. That's su that's stupid. That's not a good idea. Even if you hit a survivor, you will not get your birds back because you use too many. And put them in places at the loops, like you've seen me do, where you choke the survivors out of the loop. Don't just put them in front of the pallet, looking at the pallet. That's very basic and, you know, it's very simple. Uh, for them to play around it. Oh, bro. Oh, okay. Let's take a minute before we talk about this killer. I need to spend some blood points. Uh, okay. Uh, spooky warning. Or we're gonna be playing Sadako next. So please don't jump scare us. Look away. Look away. Please don't jump scare us. Uh, Sadako is a normal killer. She's actually quite short. So she can get away with little mind games and tricks that other killers cannot. But she moves at 115, has the normal lunge, and a normal terror radius when manifested, which is her normal state. But she can also de-manifest, and it's a bit like Wraith, she turns invisible from afar. She has no terror radius, although there's like a little hard to listen lullaby if you pay a lot of attention. And she's mostly stealthy. She also can go right through survivors and, you know, you cannot interact with them directly or damage them or anything. Uh, you don't move any faster, but when you're in this state, you're stealthy and you can choose one of the scattered TVs around the map to teleport to and come out of, which is really creepy and spooky. And survivors, you know, can be caught off guard a bit because you come out of the TVs a bit faster than usual. And you can also just de-manifest on the spot and then try to attack a survivor. And that's pretty much it. You just uh, become stealthy, go around the map, try to catch them off guard, teleport to TVs, and that's pretty much all there is to it. There are some quirks. When she manifests, um, she becomes invisible for a period, and you can use this invisibility in some creative ways to catch survivors off guard. And also, when you come out of a TV, if survivors are near you, um, they will become condemned. One point. If you get them seven points, you can mori them and kill them very quickly, much like Pyramid Head. But this is very hard to happen. Survivors have to be extremely careless for this to happen. And they also can get rid of the Condemn by picking up TVs and delivering them to other tapes. And, uh, picking up tapes and delivering them to certain TVs very quickly. They also can do this to mess with your TVs so that you can teleport to them preemptively. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, her own perks are all really good, so we could honestly use all of them. Um, hmm, yeah. Yeah, we can use all of them. Maybe slab on Sloppy Butcher, which is a decently strong um, basic perk, and we're ready to go. As for add-ons, uh, honestly, you cannot go wrong with the shorter cooldown, I guess. When you teleport to a TV, it takes a hundred seconds for it to turn back on. That's pretty significant, so minus 12 for a brown add-on. Not terrible. And the newspaper is actually a really decent add-on for a brown. You could even pair with the Mother's Mirror to increase its effectiveness. It makes it so that your invisibility, when you're coming out of the manifestation, is significantly longer. Not a lot, but significantly longer. And that little bit of difference is what allows this killer to sometimes actually make a survivor lose the sense of which direction you're coming from. So we're gonna use it and see if it helps us out. Uh, but that being said, Tadako definitely does better with some stronger info perks and whatnot. So yeah, we're, we're gonna have... Uh, save expectations <laughs> as to what we're gonna do. Yeah. Her Mori scale should not be removed. <laughs> it's alright, yeah. Okay. Green Pantry. Mm -hmm 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 -hmm. Alright. Uh, you notice that your power starts with a bit of a cooldown, much like Freddy. Uh, you don't 
you don't get the ability to teleport right away, but don't worry, as soon as the, those first seconds are out and the TVs all turn on, we can teleport. We don't need to do it right away, though. We can just... We started the manifest, so we're gonna try to creep up on someone. Unfortunately, survivors have a black bar on their HUD that pretty much tells them that they're playing against an owner, so... It's really hard to catch them off guard despite being a stealth killer. All right, looks like luck is on our side. We get a free hit here. But I could teleport to this TV and try to use the speed boost in this loop, but I'm not sure that's gonna work out. <laughs> I think he might get him himself. He really thought I was going to. He thought I was going to teleport. Oh my God, I've never seen a survivor do that. So cautious. All right, did we get a white hook? Very critical. We do, kinda, yeah. Stretch it a bit. Uh, this is a, a Scorch Hook named Floods of Rage. When this bad boy gets unhooked, I will see the arrows of everyone else in the map, which is a pretty big deal. This Shen doesn't have too much progress. No one else came by. Oh, that Shen got blocked. You know what that means. Uh, that was my Merciless Stone perk. Someone's here. They're going to finish this. Oh, can I say something about it? Or do I have no say in this? Oh, I saw a drop. Hey, Lucky. Hey, yo, Q, what's up? Oh, yeah, yeah. Damn it. I didn't hear a step of that. Finally enough. Oh, well, that's lots of rage, I guess. Where's everyone? The hell? Uh, there's one survivor I don't... Okay, they're going back to the pier. Holy, I can come out of that locker right now. I want to get this pilot out. Yeah, okay, fair enough. That was the... Craziest flashlight I've ever seen in my life, and I've seen a few. Or not seen a few. <laughs> but Hi Turbo, yeah, we'll explain that. It's a it's a very minor thing, don't worry guys. We'll try to start with the most important things. So in the HUD, if I teleport next to survivors, uh next to the TVs that they're in. Um, this will actually bring up their Condemned, and I can try to do it now, just to show what it looks like. You don't need to do it immediately, by the way, you can do it at any time you're Condemned. Oh, this guy is in a bad spot. No, he's got the stairs here. He's fine. Oh, he made a mistake. That hard. No. Oh, yeah, there was. Yeah, you see how he has a bit of a ring around him? That means that he is somewhat Condemned, but we don't know exactly how much. So, yeah, well, we know exactly how much, it's exactly one point. But you can't tell just by the visuals, unfortunately. I would have reckoned they would be here. Well, it's, we're doing kind of good by hooking this guy twice, but I feel a bit sorry. I don't know if I should have bothered to the manifest here. You see how I go invisible on and off? Uh, what I see on my screen is exactly the same thing as what I see on theirs, by the way. Damn, played safe. Well, you've also you've also seen me pretend to break a pallet, which actually kind of worked, by using my power. If you use your power in front of a pallet, it almost looks and sounds the same as the actual animation of breaking it. Oh, <laughs> we're so clumsy. Whoa, what? That was so fast. But you can go to a pallet and press M2 and do like, uh, and it looks super similar. It makes a survivor that's not a genius probably begin to run away a bit sooner. All right, with Call of uh, Brian, we're going to make that gender guess a bit more. And we're going to hook this lady next to this other gen and kick it as well, maybe. But uh, it also lets us know if someone's there, so we can use that with our power to come back if we... Or teleport to a TV nearby. If we're keen. All this Shen, dude. Ah, ah, they missed the skill check! Okay, if I really, 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 really wanted to get Ace... I'm gonna wait right fucking here, he's gonna come by. Watch him. Right? No? Yeah, right. If I really wanted to get Ace, one thing I could do is de-manifest and then go through the David. Because you don't have collision when you're the manifested, so you can use it in a pinch as a bit of um, anti-body block too. Uh, I don't notice any of the survivors getting condemned, so I guess no one's near me. On their hut anyway. But maybe they wanted to, you know. They really want to finish this, yeah. I would too. 
killing the ace right now would be our way out of this game. And I think we're gonna have to. Hello. Alright, let's manifest. Um, alright. I think this time he learned his lesson. He won't take the window. Mark Boyo. Is there a TV we can use to cut him off? Not exact. Oh, actually. Yeah, kind of. I got a bit of a speed boost. I feel like it could have been cleaner there. Good vault by him. Great window. They missed another skill check by Merciless Ball. Oh! My boy. I'll come through the middle. Oh, that was a bit strange. Maybe he runs into me? Are they healing? They're all injured and they have a gem block here. Surely they must be healing. No, apparently not. Mm, not sure how useful this is. We are literally a one gen in one second, my guys. <laughs> Sorry, they sounded right here. This is Wuhari? Two of them, aren't they? Yeah, two of them. I can't tell. Okay, that's Hari and that's David. Did she make that? And that's... That's also... Dude, the whole family's here. Okay, uh, put her in the white hook. Uh, notice that the mech has static around her portrait. That means that she picked up a TV. To remove some of the condemned and block and or block my TV stuff. So. Smart? Not smart? Uh, time will tell. If she's too careless while holding a TB, her condemn goes up and up, and then I can just straight up more her if it goes to seven, which would be horrible. So yeah, where's that boy? Okay, oh I see, I see. Um, Ace and Meg both here. Probably far enough that I don't build that condemn on them. There's a shame there's no TBs in this building, man. Okay, that girl is still injured. They they chose right. They chose right. I'm gonna do a little mini game here, see if it works. Oh, I did, kind of. Okay, this is where we're gonna use the invisibility chat. Hold on. What? What? This, like, I don't understand this lady at all. Um, the Onryo's pickup animation is very unique, and it's actually really hard to get flashlight saves and pilot saves. Don't be afraid to pick up a Suwara right away when you drop down on a pilot. Have the Suwara still, don't know how to do it. I don't think I do. Uh, you would be here, right? You too? Of course you would. Notice that Hari is a bit uh, is a bit condemned now. Wait, I'm going to the same mind game. <laughs> I got you, son. I got you. Pressy, do it. Ah, she doesn't have it. Cool. Uh, we have two gems, but uh, we need someone. We haven't hooked the David at all. Everyone else is three hooks. Ah, sorry, three hooks. Yeah, what am I talking about? Uh, Two hooks. Not a terrible place to be, but this is easily lost. Can I teleport to one of the TVs randomly and see if I can catch the Meg trying to place a tape in my mouth? I'm gonna try. I'm literally gonna go for it. She's been holding that for so long. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, dude. Dude, 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 dude. dude. By the way, the tape is not an item that they actually carry. It's like an invisible item, so don't don't lose your mind. Oh wait! Uh, don't make a noise, chat. Aha! Gotcha. Meg. Uh -huh. uh, I mean, she's dead too. So I don't think it really matters that we ignore her. She's probably close to condemned. But I don't think it matters because we're just gonna kill her. Right? Uh, can we get a little hook? Do, do we have, bro? The basement must be here, right? Yeah, it is. That's why there's literally nothing. Okay. Well, I made a blind act of faith. Going into the basement, perfectly fine, because I'm gonna teleport out. Much like Freddy, you don't really care about going to an edge of the map or somewhere horrible. As long as you can teleport out. Boop. That David we're going to ignore. He's our favorite boy. They finished that gen, they're one, but then we kill Hattie, and now there are two survivors left. Shame about the main building not having anything, though. Dude, dude, this. This man is about to get outplayed extremely hard. How? I don't know yet. But he's about to get outplayed. I know which side of the gen he was on. I'm gonna take my time to really make this hurt. Three, two, one. 
Now. Now he doesn't get a window. Is he at that hard though? Possibly. <laughs> Dead. Alright. Sometimes with Wraith or with any other stealth killer, it takes. Like if I approach this guy like a bull from the front, he takes a good window vault and I'm still after him. Uh talking about being after him. Um, this is bad. Sometimes it really pays off to just take uh, an extra second. Ooh, they got this shot. They got this. Or maybe not. Yeah. Takes a bit of uh, extra time to go around, but it, it can be worth it. It saves it saves you a lot more time. That TV just came back, did it? Oh man, they are so thirsty for it. Notice that I get a speed boost when I come out of a TV. And it wasn't enough to not get spawned. <laughs> Hold on, Hattie's dead. Ah, yeah. Is there an add-on that lets hunters hit through walls? Yes, called bad Wi-Fi. But no, otherwise not. All right. And near the end of the match, you can teleport around to see if the condemned climbs up or something. I guess. When the hatch spawns, we can just stay. Not much else to it. Unfortunately, it's really, really rare for us to fully condemn someone and let alone condemn them and then kill them. So I'm sorry that couldn't happen this match, but it's not gonna happen in a lot of years either until she gets buffed or something. No, I think this is a pretty normal match if you're if you're a bit lucky like we are. We were. Mm. Execute the last one? Nah, the David played really well, and I think we did well too by just straight up ignoring him. You know. Uh, well done. Uh, sorry about your dev, Hattie. <laughs> Oops. Chat, please remind me. I'm sure there's something important I didn't mention. The TVs, by the way, uh, we found out recently. If a survivor is near them, if, if, if within 60 meters of a TV, a survivor is currently present, they play a tape. And if no survivor is nearby, they play static. So you can look at a TV and immediately know if someone's nearby or not. Could be useful. Um, what else? Mm -hmm. Uh, something that's not add-on specific. That one is pretty fun, yeah, she's fun. She's just a bit frustrating in the harder maps against the better survivors, but... If survivors DC next to a TV, the TV will non-stop play the tape. Ah, well, I guess DCs don't really fix it. Uh, would Tinker be good on Onryo? For the info, yes. For the stealth, not so much. You could use something else, but yeah, Tinker is okay. Something with her height? Yeah, we did mention that she's very tall, so don't forget. You don't see as well, but neither do the ki the, the n n n n neither do the survivors. So yeah, in many short loops, you can just hide behind them and they'll just mind game themselves many times. Carrying a tape builds out condemn. Yes, if you pick up a tape to pay to place it elsewhere, that reduces condemn. But while you're doing it, it also builds it up. So it's a bit risky. Uh, that's why I was like, mm, that Meg, that Meg, she must have been pretty close because she held the tape for a long time, and we could tell that she had a tape because she had the static on her face in the HUD. Hmm. Okay. I think that's mostly it for Sarako Chai. Okay, friends, we are at the end of our journey and we've reached the dredge, which, as of the time of the recording, is the final killer released for Dead by Daylight. Uh, the dredge is a fun killer. Uh, despite his very unusual looks, he's actually fairly straightforward. Uh, normal turret radios, pretty tall and kind of noisy. Hard to sneak up on people, uh, despite being a somewhat stealthy killer sometimes. And normal speed. So, normal killer, you play trapper, you switch to this, it will feel pretty natural. There is definitely a skill cap and things that you can learn, but he's a perfectly fine killer to learn the game with and learn the maps along with. So I definitely recommend him if you're, if you're looking to spice up your gameplay in your first few matches. Um, on top of being a normal killer with the normal killer stuff, he has the ability to go into lockers while holding his power. He can teleport to lockers and then come out of them or switch to other lockers and then come out of those up to a limited amount. This is great for mobility uh, already. This is already pretty decent power. But while he holds his power, he leaves a little shadow behind and then he moves slowly and he can teleport back to the shadow. Kind of like a tracer in Overwatch kind of deal. And you can actually use this in loops. So in loops, he can teleport shortly distances to try to zone survivors. And he can also teleport from mobility. That's mostly his power. 
On top of that, on the background, there's a timer going on for all survivors that advances every time survivors are injured, and they stay injured, every time survivors are hooked, and every time you use your power. And when this timer fully completes, then nighttime begins. And during nighttime, uh, the map becomes really dark, survivors cannot see past a few feet far away from them, and your teleport is much, much, much faster, to the point where you can actually kind of use it in chase effectively. Uh, you teleport to lockers, that is. And yeah, you also become undetectable and can see them glow white, which can help you find them from afar while they don't see you. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, quite a bloated kit, but it's not that difficult, really. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a lot of great perks on him, so forgive me, I'm still leveling him up. His own perks are not the greatest, because you'll notice that Septic Touch works inside your turret radius. You don't have a turret radius during Nightfall. And Dissolution, which is otherwise a decent perk, works only inside the turret radius. And again, you don't have a turret radius in Nightfall. So both of these perks don't work out amazingly well during half the game for him. But other than that, uh, Darkness Revealed is okay. And we're gonna try to use it on some other funny perks, see what we can do. If you're a beginner, uh, what are some easy add-ons to learn the game with? I mean, you can go wrong with the add-ons that increase the the time it takes for, like, increase the, the speed at which survivors make Nightfall happen. And I think this yellow add-on is also pretty good. Survivors can actually lock the lockers by pressing a, a button in front of them, and this slows you down coming out of them. With this add-on, you are one second faster. Uh, on your first games, I think it will help. We have a lot of flams, so let's go and use it. Okay, this map is a little bit unique. Oh. But I think there's something on the map. But I think it might be a decent um, introduction to the killer. Mm. I wanted to open locker to find people, but it looks like we're already onto someone. Oh, yeah. Okay, so someone has already locked this locker, and I can tell because he's out of the yellow. I press control and I can teleport right away. Hello. I don't have my power back yet. Can I get a... Oh, balance? No balance. That's a hit. Okay, notice the nightfall timer. Uh, it's now like 25%. Slowly builds up as you injure survivors and whatnot. This lady is in a bad spot, I think. Unless she has a really good pallet here. Does she have a really good pallet here? Okay, I use my power. I cancel. What I could do right there, chat, if I press the attack button, is teleport back to the place where I'm leaving my shadow. I'll show you what that looks like in a second. While we're not in chase. Right. Have they locked this locker? They have. I can come and just break it. Boop. Now next time I come out of that, I'll be faster. Oh, there's someone here. You cannot teleport to lockers that are close to um, a survivor. And also... Right, so you press control and you leave a little shadow behind. But if you do attack button, boop, you appear on the shadow. So you can use this to zone survivors and to try to get hits and moves. And apparently you can also... Chat, you told me I could use my power to teleport. Uh, I need to get it back. Yeah, you can press control to enter a locker. Directly. Oh wow, I actually had never done that. Not super, super necessary, I guess, but... Hello, are you guys stuck in here? Nah, you're smart, you got out. I'll break this. You don't need to break them, I'll just teleport to the ones that are not locked, I guess. Unfortunately, if two lockers are close together in a in a in close proximity, you'll always teleport to the one that's locked. That sucks a little. Wow. Oh dude, you got me there. You really got me there. Alright, can we spook her? Oh, she actually ran into my shadow uh, remnant, and that broke it. Very smart, Elodie. Hold on, she understands I got to play. Right, can we teleport somewhere to spook the life out of her? Notice that they locked it, so I come out slower. Not much slower with this, I don't think, goodness. But once you broke break the lock, that's it. That one locker will never be locked again. Hello. Whoa, this room was smart. That's not a very good room, though. I'll we'll catch you here. Nightfall? Soon. Damn. Okay, if she stays here, I reckon we can get a hit. Oh, but she's gonna go places, isn't she? You 
you see the problem that she's in, right? She's allowed herself to be in a situation where if she comes to my remnant, I'll teleport to it and hit her. Yikes. And if she doesn't, I'll just cancel my power and be close enough to just whack her normal. You move slower while you do this. So survivors actually have a pretty viable third option, which is to get the hell away. But if they don't identify that right away, or if they're not smart, or if they're just gonna give up, yeah, then that will happen. Notice how fast I came out of that locker? That is because Nightfall has already happened, and my power is much quicker now. Alright. <laughs> uh, she was in a similar bind. Pallets like these are great for dredge. And survivors cannot just break your remnant with a flashlight or anything like that, like artists. They really have to uh, think twice or, or really out outfox you and outsmart you if they want to get rid of a situation like that. But yeah, that girl, you know, ideally the moment that she sees me do this, she understands that at least for a second, I'm kind of slower. And that might just be the moment that she needed to just get the hell out of there and hold forward to the next loop. Honestly, I don't understand why they quit. They were putting up a really good fight. I think they could have won this. Okay, night time over. In a second, anyway. Wow, they've all really spread out quite a bit, huh? Oh, that bird got disturbed. Hello. Grimbers as well. Oh, very nice. Is that a dead end? No, it's not. Oh, I think you'll get hit here, though. Here's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> when I see the medkit disappear, chat, I immediately teleport. I missed though. That was kind of eager of me, uh, a little bit too uh, aggressive of me. But luckily, she didn't make much systems. But yeah, I, there I was just looking at the medkit, waiting for it to disappear. And when it disappears, you know, you're in a good spot. Wait, this is much easier. I think she's out of in a bad spot. Yeah, all I need to do is just close it right here. There you go, she's dead. Maybe that hard aside. I could have also cancelled and just hit her normally. You understand the basic idea, right? Of using the, the remnant. Uh, the smarter the survivors, the more they'll use that hard, springbirds, whatever, into just getting out of there. Uh, also, body blocks and teamwork can get in your way at times. But in pallets that are not extremely strong and are not interconnected with each other and with windows and so on, you can see it's pretty oppressive. Or at least it's, it, it, it immediately tests the survivor's uh, quick thinking. A test with uh, some, you know, some survivors. <coughs> that had it, uh, don't pass, I guess. See, this would be a lot harder to play. Play. And these pilots are really safe as well. Well, not anymore because they finished this. Yeah, I think we got her. Ooh, good dead heart. Uh, yeah, teleporting to lockers if they're close, it's pretty effective sometimes. In Nightfall, even more so because it's so much faster. And they have so little time to react. Can I get a hook here? Barely. Uh, if you have strong information perks about gems, through them tremors, tinker, whatever, it is so much easier to know where to go after a hook. Right now I'm a bit lost. That's a bit of a warning, indicating that Nightfall is happening soon. Oh, we need to get out, she's in here. Nightfall, no! Ah! Never! <laughs> Sorry. I know exactly what she's gonna do. Well, I know almost exactly what she's going to do. I don't know. <laughs> These guys played really well. I think they deserve this, dude. What do we do, chat? What do we do now? Mm. Your orientation when trying to the moment is always a month. Yeah. Okay, so if I use the dredge looking at a wall, and then I look away from the wall and I teleport to the dredge. Ta-da, I'm looking to the wall. So when you use the dredge, uh, sorry, the remnant, 
try to place it that looking at the place where you need to react to whatever window pallet, whatever that might be. There's an atom that makes it so that your orientation is whichever one you're looking at, which is a bit more dynamic. So you can use that brown atom if you if you don't like that, I suppose. It's the cowl of whatever. It's one of the brown ones. Okay, I think this girl's kind of baiting us to get out. Go our teammate has a chance, which is very sweet. Is she above us? I think she is. Oh man, that was bad. I'm a nice guy, I don't want to kill her, but I, I think she's gonna get out now. Oh, wait, maybe not. Oh, hold up. Wait, you're healthy? No, you're not. Oh, no hooks on the second floor. Feels bad, man. This goes out. This gets 99. She's completely out. Yeah, but but. Wow. <laughs> and the time it took me to... Oh, ha! She 99 herself with a medkit so that we would bite the bait and chase her. Man, dude. Way to play into the fact that I'm the nicest dude on earth right now. Because you guys had a DC. And of course the DC was from the guy with the most busted thing. They don't deserve us, Chad. They don't deserve us. We trade them right. And they do this to us. <laughs> GG stuff. Hopefully. <laughs> they actually earn that. Iron Maiden comes out. No. Uh, perks, for the most part, don't affect your powers. And that's no exception. Don't use Iron Maiden. It doesn't make you come out of your power faster. You never used the logger perk. Yeah, I'm very sorry. This is not a guide about perks. So I don't feel too bad. This solution also, I don't think, ever worked. So, yeah, you can open loggers to find people. Uh, I don't think that was our issue now. We, we found people just fine. We knew where they were. But it's very useful, uh, especially on Huntress, uh, Trickster. Killers have to check lockers anyway to reload. So, that's all good. This is just me getting your steamed potatoes to hours at 4 or 5 a.m. Hi, Goldman. Yeah, matchmaking is weird, depending on the time of the day. About to face you. Thanks, bud. Okay. You didn't BC you all. But yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of more things that I am yet to learn with Dredge and that I'm yet to teach you with him. Just remember to look up some videos or play against a Dredge yourself. Because if you understand what survivors see during Nightfall, you're going to play in Nightfall much better yourself. Because you'll, you'll understand what works and what doesn't. You can get on top of a building and see people glow white from afar and they don't know where you are. Once you get close, they start to hear the whooshing sound. It This is really, really, really one of those killers that it really benefits you to know what it's like from the other side. Both for positives and for negatives. What are some of the positives? If you go to a locker for about eight, for about eight seconds, you don't make any noise. You go like... Bruh, bruh, and then you can actually set up ambushes. Uh, if you stay... When you teleport to a locker the first time and switch lockers, you make a little... Bruh. And if you stay there a long time, you start to emit, like, smog and noise. So, you cannot do that forever, but, yeah. Uh, what do you think is the best build? I'll cover that in a future video, especially when the perk reworks happen. But, thanks so much, Brett. I think I'm gonna call it a day as far as tips for every killer is concerned. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope uh, you found at least some of these useful. Bye-bye.